and now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's, it's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to- or Lawn Mower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawn Mower Man, if you've seen the film, you know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on- on happiness and stuff and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've- you've come up with something, haven't right, you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day, they're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, yeah. the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um- Imagine <laughs> if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel <laughs> 4, you just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, Carl. come in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up, right? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. You'll write down yours, yeah. A, B or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it is. Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm l I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know. Don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, we're no, we know, we know, we can't see. Yeah, yeah. Like call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on. Okay. In. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Fair good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, hang on. Yeah. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, go on. It stinks of it, but if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Imagine this in faking it. Imagine their faces when he says that and they're going, "Oh my god!" Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> Well, that, that's just amazing, Carl. Just read them again. Two, two were real, one was fake. Go on then. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is, nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know. That's where um, I saw it. Carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so. Yeah. Make the most of everything and, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, no, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. No, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow, but what, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, e well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, a, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought- Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> right. you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, bigger. Well, no, the way I- I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So like, um, my girlfriend, yeah? Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it. 
But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! 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 Can we- can we go back? You know, stroke its head and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Sorry, it was a bit of a slip, was it? <laughs> squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yeah. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but that's Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> No, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> and he, he came up with the life as a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you'd say, oh, yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes Which... I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Cos I think we could publish that. Yeah. Talking of, uh... Eating knobs. Yeah. Jilly Golden. Now she- What's she been up to? Well, you saw it in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I haven't been watching it. She popped a little kangaroo knob in the mouth. Chewed it up. What, she just found it? Did she lie around? No, 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 it was one of the things that she had to oh, eat- one of the, the, the yeah, challenges. Carol Thatcher, you know, a daughter of, uh, one of our leaders. Sure. She popped a couple of bollocks in the mouth, oh. chewed them up, swallowed them. Oh. Uh, and Jilly Goulden, there was a kangaroo, uh, penis there, dried. She couldn't even get- it was so tough, she couldn't even get through it. And then she- <laughs> eventually she <laughs> eats it. What, was it, it like a pepperoni? Yeah. And she- what do you think of that, Carl? What, eating that sort of stuff? Yeah. I just- I mean, I- I, I watch it, I like those little trial bits, right? Yeah. But, what- what I don't think people realise is, right, it is hard eating a little kangaroo knob. Right? Really? How do you know? No, it's just, you know, you think about it and you go, oh, I couldn't do that, right? But what they never mention on the TV programme, which I think takes it to the next level, right? They're eating that at like half past seven in the morning. Sure. <laughs> right. Which For is breakfast. worse, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if I was there and Ant and Dec said, right, Carl, eat the knob, I'd go, hang on a minute, <laughs> give us a few hours, let me get some rice and that on my belly and just sort of fill me up a little bit more, I'll pop back at about half six this evening. Right. Have it ready. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be happier then. It's just, it's just that thing of, you know, you, you just, you, you, you don't want to eat, you don't eat animal genitals on an empty stomach. So what are you saying? You could... I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, I, I could eat, I could eat a knob at night, but... Just cut that there, we'll loop that. If any, if any, uh, DJs are listening, no. um, just take that quote, I could eat a knob at night, uh, by Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Maybe do a, a, a dance remix? Yeah, just I think maybe you're sort of a house producer and you could maybe get some kind of high energy beat going and then we could oh, just send that out to some of the gay clubs. I'm yeah. sure it would be really popular. Please, please anyone, send us, you know, uh, that, that loop with a nice little, you know, uh, funky house beat. Carl Pilkington saying, I could eat a knob at night. No, but That's do, you, the, go do on. you know what I mean, though? We'll buy that. Not really. Well, I, 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 d I, okay then, right, okay. Now, you, do you, I, I couldn't do it. I could, I could not do it. I couldn't pop a kangaroo testicle in my mouth and chew it. It was dis, it was disgusting to watch. She was eating witchy grubs. That, I mean, good on them, because they were doing it. But then again, I think, well, they, they wanted to go in there. They knew what it, they were up for it. So, on the one hand, I think, is that admirable? And is that showing, sort of, like, good British metal? Mm -hmm. Or is it, you know, I'll do anything to get on telly for a week? I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't, where, where does it stop? You know, I thought Rebecca Luz went too far when she gave the little pig tug, but at least she knew where to stop. Yeah. She didn't, you know, mm. uh, uh, Well, it's Gordon... obvious when you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you the know, The pig to, tells you that. To, 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 you know, to pop the can- Also, again, where's the kangaroo hopping around without a cock? I'll tell you, here's another question, right? Bit of a spin-off with animals and that. Mm. Have you ever, right, Steve, killed a fly? Probably, yes. Right. Well, I was watching David Attenborough, mm. right? He makes his money out of flies and that, doesn't he? Do you think he's ever <laughs> killed one, or does he go, well, I can't kill that fly or that spider, because that's how I make me money? <laughs> I don't know what the question is! I don't know what this question is. <laughs> <laughs> like, my mum, right, she said, if if a fly is knocking about the house, she never kills it, she always catches it and puts it out and that, and she said she'd never Who kill one. Who is she? Mr Miyagi? <laughs> Which means she catches it. How yeah. does she catch it? With a it? pair of chopsticks. <laughs> no, she... <laughs> Well, obviously, Carl was out with me last night, and he saw that I'm, you know, he knows I'm a ladies' man, and that was obvious. Carl, you could see the vibe around me, couldn't you? Mm. When the, you know, when the chicks were talking to me, and uh, just re remembered recently, actually, I was on a train coming back from uh, hometown Bristol, 
and I was on the train, and uh, this girl walks on, good looking girl, I thought, hey, uh, it, largely empty carriage, I'm thinking, my luck's in. You know, because I, I take every opportunity, Carl, that's the thing about me, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't choose. She was a good looking girl, she sat down, I thought, she sat down right near me, I thought, brilliant. As, uh, the guy, this guy comes up behind her, and she's, I think, oh, it's probably a boyfriend or something, he sits down next to her. And I listened in on the conversation, you know, obviously, because I'm pretending to read. It was very clever. I read the same page for hours, so I was pretending to listen. I was listening, but pretending to read. And, um, I realised that it's not her boyfriend or anything, it's just some guy she's met on the platform. And I'm thinking, brilliant, if she's the kind of girl who's just going to start talking to someone, you know, on a platform, on a train, brilliant, I'm going to be in here. Because he was only going one stop. So I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? He'll nick off, you know, I'll get chatting to her, you know, and, uh, who knows, I could join the... What's the, is there a train equivalent of the foot high club? <laughs> the foot high club, brilliant. And, uh, so I'm excited, you know, I'm listening in. And, uh, it turns out that they're both kind of, uh, graduates who just finished university or they're just they're coming to the finals or something. And they're chatting away, you know, and he's making a couple of witticisms, you know. And she's kind of tittering at his jokes. I'm thinking, well, I'll tell you this, if she's laughing at this kind of material, I am gonna blow her away, you know, with my kind of anecdotes and wry observations, you know. Yeah. It was weak stuff, I've got to be honest. <laughs> really? He was coming out with nothing. He, yeah. he was running on empty, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And she was loving it. So I'm thinking, brilliant, I'm gonna be right in here. And then they get moving on to higher break things, you know, and um, I think she was going to study kind of uh, Marxism or, so, or something like that, uh, or communism, something. And uh, she was asking him, you know, by way of conversation, she was asking him what he knew about Marxism, you know. Mm. And he was fumbling for some, his vague knowledge of it that he had in his yeah. life. And I'm just that, sat there thinking, yeah, come on, love, in any given capitalist environment, the proletariat will revolt against their oppression wow. by the bourgeoisie, and after a brief <laughs> period of socialist rule, emerges as a classist society governed by community corporations. Well, if that know. sort of talk wouldn't get a woman hot, I don't, come know, on, I don't know what, what you'd use If then Marx to... and Engels is not going to get a woman sweaty down below, I know. nothing is. No. My name is You're not just biding your time. Yeah? Exactly. I yeah, thought, yeah, I'm, yeah, wait, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to go in for the kill any yeah, minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so anyway, uh, anyway, he, he, it's, it comes to his stop, right? He gets off. I'm thinking, this is this is a piece of cake. And he gets off, and off he goes. He walks off, and I'm thinking, brilliant. And I thought, I'll wait. You know, I'll wait till the train's pulled. I'm not going to leap in straight away. No. And uh, he comes back on the carriage, and I'm thinking, hang on a minute. He goes, uh, listen, uh, do you mind if I give you my email address, Aww. right? And uh, if you want to get in touch, email me. I'm thinking, come on, you loser, get off now, save your face, please, <laughs> yeah. before. It's too much. And she accepts the email address because she obviously doesn't want to hurt his feelings, whatever. I'm thinking, fair enough, she's a good woman. I'm liking her. I'm, yeah. her. I'm thinking, that's my kind of girl. So, anyway, um, he gets off. I'm sat there, the train pulls away. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll wait a few minutes, you know, I'll just you know, give it some time. Her phone rings. It's her friend on the phone. And uh, she starts to say, and I was listening in, and she was going, uh, yeah, I just met a guy on the train. I'm thinking, yeah, that's true enough. She goes, yeah, he was a uh, good looking guy. I thought, you're having a laugh, love. <laughs> 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 to be honest. Because. <laughs> I was looking at him, and she said, she said to her friend, he looks a bit like tennis player Boris Becker. I thought, well, you, you, you should be so lucky, frankly, because I saw him, he had awful facial hair, if that's what makes him look like Boris Becker. A terrible little goatee beard, it was laughable. <laughs> I thought, you, I don't know, and then she uh, goes, she goes to think, and she's like, yeah, I met him, we got chatting and stuff, and, you know, and, I was, and she was going, it's not often that, um, it's not often that you meet someone, you know, generally in life, who's, you know, kind of thoughtful and intelligent and funny. I thought to myself, I'm not even going to waste my time with you, love, <laughs> frankly, if that's what you thought of him. You just walked yeah. away. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even bother talking to her. No, you were I just didn't even waste it. my if, time with if her. If she it. thinks that bloke is not if only she great looking, was funny, but great funny looking. and intelligent, and she got on well, and he was polite, and it was a chance meeting, and he thought, and she, and she thought that you were like a freaky looking dork who didn't exactly. even have the nerve to if speak. If that is what, if that's she, what she thinks, thinking, then um, she's I not, don't want to know her. I, I couldn't, uh, you walked away, and good luck to you. And I have my dignity in Yes, and she's nothing. <laughs> There was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> Not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? <laughs> oh, fuck. He wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. <laughs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Right. It may be the greatest poem now, ever written. Just, just you know, dissecting it briefly, you attempt to rhyme in the first four lines, but abandon the rhyming system 
in the last three. Is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry, means, yeah. just, uh, no, just, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right? Okay. This is going out all over the world, this, this podcast. And now, um, Carl Pilgrim, a new poet from Manchester, now living in, uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be up here? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the air on their head. <sighs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. No, I think, amazing, I think, I, but I think he feels, I think he feels as though the final line, I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great, you know, those, it, a summation, that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor, I'd the caveman. Be a blind moth. No, but There's no I'm metaphor doing, in that, he really does mean, he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well I'm just, because I've looked at the day's news. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts, a poem? A poem. Just like that. I love that structure. I, I love that structure. I was talking to Carl in the week. We were talking about new settlers and everything, and I was thinking, imagine if you, uh, had to, um, start a new settlement now, okay? There's something wrong with the world, okay? The world was kaput, mm -hmm. okay? And we found another planet. So, Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that adore that, but you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, okay? So you need, you know, as I say, you don't need to So worry what's about, happening here? Is this, is this... It's going to be wiped out, okay? It's going to be wiped out, but there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people, okay? And they've got them there, they've got these, they've got these sort of breeder clones there, so it's going to be populated, you're going to have the workers, the drones, everything like that, but you want to take six, I suppose, sort of, um, uh, world lords to teach to lay down the politics the 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 teachings the laws the government I'd hate okay this. I'd hate it. um and how long have i got to make a decision on it uh to the end of this podcast right go who do you take who's the first person you take and why uh and where where are we going with mars <sighs> okay, so a, a planet where there's a, a, a an atmosphere. I've got to know where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go. Okay, it's, 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 going? I don't know. It's <laughs> just like this world. There's there's oxygen. There's seas. There's rivers. There's forests. There's animals. Okay, but we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job. Yeah. So who, who's the first person? Probably, um, Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why? Why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he he knows knows his way about up there, don't he? He'll know the way. So just just have him. I think that will whoever I pick next, if they see that he's going, they'll go right. You know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey. On board. It is. You don't want someone who's going to be going. Is it left here? Is it right? Do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But, but, is a, Carl, right. is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six? Because he may be very useful getting to the planet, no, but, but I've once you've got there- No, but i always to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it, when I'm in a rocket? How long's it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean, No, it's so. not Mars, it's somewhere else, okay, so it's a year to get there and then- Yeah, well, that's what I mean, so it's a good chance to have a chat with him, uh, okay. about stuff. Um, so and more. I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, you know- well, his, why do you, why do you think that? Just because he spent his whole life- talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been, and I feel sorry for him. You know, most people, when, they, when they're when they into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? Sure. Uh, people uh, who don't know Patrick Moore is, he's um, an 80-year-old uh, <laughs> astronomer. astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean, so let him have, well, a, have a bit of a good life. So Moore's on board? Yeah, Patrick Moore, he's, he's on. Right, uh, five others. Four others now. Uh, Jamie Oliver? <laughs> why, why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone, because they say that, like, you're, uh, you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um, he couldn't convince eight-year-olds to eat a carrot. 
What's he going to do with this brave new world? They're all going to be on turkey twizzlers. I think he's he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, <laughs> we've we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who listen, made I love go. Jamie Oliver. I think he's great. Yeah. But he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore, because <laughs> he knew the way. <laughs> well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't <laughs> pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to, like I say, food's important. When you're low, there's nothing better. If you are a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good- But Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah. Keep and before you do all that, you need a good meal. So, Jamie Oliver, he'll be- that's his job. It's like, when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one, really, who gets going. Can I just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need- Oh, it's, it's gonna take a fucking gardener. It's- yeah. it's like the- it's- uh, It's the world, but new. It's the- it's that- exactly. It's the world, but new, untouched by humans. There's there have been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars. Just this Garden of Eden. And you, Patrick Moore <laughs> and Jamie Oliver pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else can't go now? First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> Again, he's a genius, and he's a, you know he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough. Just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same, but they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there, just to sort of when we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around, then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men so far who've got a combined age of about <laughs> 150. I mean, <laughs> if you're starting a brave new world, dare I say it, not going to be around very long. <laughs> Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived. Haven't they? These have lived and they'll, they, they can so and they're useful, like I say. Patrick Moore's done his bit, he's got us there. Uh, Oliver, he's cooked us a dinner. Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there. We'd have a dinner, we'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think like you're thinking of the exactly, I think you're thinking of the journey and then the first night. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. So, so you've day, got day David two, Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Moore, you've got Jamie Oliver, <laughs> you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> As a dinner party with <laughs> yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. <laughs> oh, come uh, on in two more. I text someone who's a bit daft. Just so. No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered. Believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean. Though I don't want them having a go at me, going, "Why are you here?" I'd put point the attention somewhere else <laughs> to text someone else who'd sort of wind them up. So who's I'm, that then? Paul Denan or someone <laughs> like that. <laughs> It really is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver, and Paul Denham. <laughs> <laughs> they're, starting, new world. they're starting life again. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Oh god. Right, one more. This is an amazing. This is a, this going to be. I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years. What teachings they laid down. Oh god. Don't know. It have to be uh, a woman. I think you got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Is could have another another woman chef or. <laughs> <laughs> it's, another it's, chef. it's mainly eating. It's it's another mainly. Chef. Oh, he's God. got that covered with Oliver, but no, no, I he's got to take Nigella in case he's in a <laughs> cream cake kind of mood. Oh God! Oh God! Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags <laughs> and everything. Or a nurse. Now you're thinking. Abby Titmus. <laughs> Tell the story about the manhole cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on his yeah. face is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it right. was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. And, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> Blew it up. Yeah. Never saw the manhole cover again. 
<laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> What's going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> Oh. oh! If anyone has ever seen that Manol cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would you do to Manol cover? <laughs> Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, have control yeah. Of a nuclear Do you reckon it can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? What, of what value is that? <laughs> I'm like, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out! <laughs> fire it! See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. I'll have a, tie bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. I'll tell you what, right, I'll tell you how focused I am. What? Got some new ideas for you. Go on, oh, they've all been blinders in the past. Go right. on. Did you do any competitions when I was away? Uh, did we, I think we did, didn't we? Didn't we give away a DVD? Did we? Yeah, we did, we did. Well, yeah, go on, yeah, right. go on, anyway. Well, I've thought of some, uh... This isn't like radio, is it, as we know it? This is just people talking. Mm. If the mic's on, it's luck. <laughs> yeah. If anyone's listening, I'd, I've, you know, I've no idea what they think mm -hmm. of this show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not a show. Not in the, the traditional sense. No. Okay, no. then, you're gonna change with that card. Because a show to... suggests a certain form of presentation. Yeah. A certain pride. And when we do present and it... And dare I say it, some planning. Yeah, and when we do, it's ruined by impressing the wrong button. Yeah, yeah but I've got some planning here. Go on, mm -hmm. then. Uh... Course course is, what I did was, when I was on holiday, yeah. right, I, I, you, you said, you know, come up with a new idea, right? Mm. So the best way of coming up with ideas is sort of, um... <laughs> Thinking. Sort of nicking a, a TV show name and then twisting it a bit. Yeah. So... Or just rip off Simon, Ma Simon Mayo's idea completely. That's right. good advice did, for anyone out there. I didn't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you're interested in, in ideas. See, uh, Carl is presently, uh, um, running a course right in for TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that, that's the lesson one, isn't it? Just that's rip lesson something one. else off. <laughs> just just, just do it. And change the title slightly. Yeah, well, go this, on. This one I haven't really got, I, I don't know what to do on the game, but I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> strike it Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, all you've got? That's, oh, that's that, what you've come up I with. How long did that, that take? What is that? I just thought it sounded a bit like lucky. <laughs> forget that one then. <laughs> yeah, forget that one, okay, yeah, well, no, right. no, no, good, no, no, we all have, we all have hits of this, don't we? even Spielberg's, not all his films, you know, can hit the, uh, go on. Right. No, okay, no, it's a good, it's a, go on. Yeah. Do you remember Big Brother? Yeah. Do I remember Big Brother? No, go on. <laughs> Big Mother, right, you call in, <laughs> if your mum's ever, you win a CD. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? How can you, how can you prove that? <laughs> all right, forget that. <laughs> Right, ER. Here's one. Right, ER. Good one. No, ER. no, no, no. Yeah, no. The price is right, remember that? Yeah. yeah. Right. The price is Ricky? No. The rice is right. <laughs> and what I do, I read from an Indian menu and a Chinese menu, you tell me whether you have pilau or egg fried. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius, isn't he? He really is a no, modern... I that one. Let go on, no, no, then. Let's, let's, let's go into this one. Let, let's not cross this off right away. Go on, then. What do, you read from what? Well, I've got, I, I get a couple of menus from like an Indian or a, and a Chinese takeaway. Yeah. yeah. And I'll go like, uh, right, um, oh, chicken korma. Well, could I just suggest that as it's an Indian, it'll be pilau and anything you read out that is- Yeah, but you don't know which one I'm reading from. What the chicken korma's Indian, isn't it? Yeah, so you go pilau. <laughs> but then, but then- Well, you, then you might as well say Indian or Chinese. <laughs> no, because then the, the name wouldn't work. The rice is right. <laughs> okay, yeah, I forgot you were working for the title backwards, aren't you? Okay, yeah. I'm okay. so confused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. know where I am or what, what I, day I, it is. I, pro I program that they've been in on Channel 4, right? Can it's, you cross that out? We're not doing the rice is right either. I don't understand no. the rice is right. No, go I'll on. I'll tell you that later. We'll have a game in the office, right? <laughs> um, a, a game that they've been in on Channel 4, but has got really big viewing figures. Well, obviously not. Right. Or they wouldn't be binning it. Go on. Do you know 15 to 1? Yeah. They're getting rid of that, right? Are they? I'm thinking, 15 Taiwan. <laughs> get some items that are made in Taiwan, right? Get 15 items and y and I say what they are, and then you go, oh, I bet it's the vase. Or something. That's the one that's made in Taiwan? Yeah. <laughs> Just explain that again very quickly. <laughs> no, don't go. Oh, right, cross it out. out. Forget that. Cross it out. 15 Taiwan. <laughs> right. Go on. This is the one that I've prepared for, because I think this is- This, this is isn't daft, this is good. Let's go play on. a tune in this here after that. <laughs> I'm very sure? excited. When I got back off holiday, my dad was was in hospital. 
a shot back to see him, see how he's getting on, and hospitals are depressing places, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Really, like, phew, God, you know, they, 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 you know, if, even if you're not that ill, it makes you feel worse. Yeah. Because it's really, like, drags you down, there's people walking around moaning, you know. You, uh, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nurses. And, uh, yeah. my dad was Political. like. Political. Yeah. <laughs> It's a uh, high five. Satire. satire. Yeah. yeah. I would like to be the they don't get paid enough and all that, and I oh. do, like... No, well, that's... Tony Blair, I mean. are you listening? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to look like I'm moaning about the people working, because they all work really hard. Yeah, of course they do, yeah. But it's just God the hard, hard depressing places. High five. Nice one, Go nice on. one. Yeah. Right, so, um, so I'm sat there, and my dad's, uh, getting fed up, and, uh... <laughs> Is that because you're visiting? <laughs> Just, just, he's quite an active bloke, yeah. and all of a sudden he's got to stay in bed and, yeah. you know, it's like sit down, stop moving about and all this. Yeah. So, um, so he's sat there, and there's an old woman in the bed next door, right? And, uh, she's, I mean, she's in, she's in a bad way anyway. Yeah. Right? She must have been, she looked about, I'd say she looked about 98 or something like that. Okay, good. Right? Now, I don't know what was wrong with her, but she was always constantly moaning, and you could see that the nurses were trying their best to keep her happy, and she wasn't having any of it. And, uh, you know, she was moaning because her hands had gone blue. <laughs> well, that is a worry, to be honest. Well, it's not, because she's 98. Is that what happens? But why, why doesn't the doctor, if I was a doctor, and I'm not one, but, no, uh, no, Carl, don't be modest. Are you a doctor? Yes but, or no? But if I, I think there, he's let it slip. Are you, Carl? Are you a doctor? No, listen. Look me in the eye. Right. Yeah. right so Carl. this woman had blue hands. Had she, she had, seen um, she, a spacecraft? She, <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> God. she had blue hands. Now she's ninety-eight. If I was a doctor, I'd no, be she's not ninety-eight. You said you said earlier on she looked about ninety-eight. So you're making that up. <laughs> it's just shifted from speculation to fact. <laughs> it has blue fact now. Yeah. Yeah. Right, she's 98. <laughs> <laughs> it is fact now! <laughs> There's a hundred year old woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. If I was a doctor, I'd be thinking... You're not, are you? <laughs> you <laughs> you'd honestly, you'd think, how did I con them? How did I get away with this? <laughs> I'd be thinking... <laughs> right. She's 98. Um, she hasn't got long left. Why not just let her be at home and be happy in With her own in her own yeah. space? Yeah. Um, you know, and let her let her have a, a nice life, whatever's left. Because she may hurt herself. She may have falls. Some people have to go in there for their own protection. She might not have immediate but more family. Than that, she may not have been dragged in against her will. No, she no. may have come to hospital because she was worried yeah. about her blue hands. Yeah. Yeah, but I, when I was talking to Ricky, he said, "Oh, what it would have been is." Uh, Probably a bit of. Did you say it's rheumatism or something? No, I said it might. I mean, a, a blueness can be through uh, lack of circulation. Right. So just. And so, I'm right, definitely you've got, not a doctor. You've got, you've got blue hands, bad circulation. We're going to send you home. We'll give you a Rubik's cube. Um, play around with that with your hands. Get get the blood. <laughs> 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 Rubik's cube. Sure. Get, get the blood pumping. Yeah. Um, and don't worry. I don't say. Oh, it's really bad. Just think she's 98. Yeah. Let her have a nice rest of the life. Yeah. But instead, she was there. And the annoying thing was, and they do this with a lot of people in hospital, they pump you with drugs uh -huh. and try to sort it out. They don't, you know, there's probably a bit of guesswork going on. Maybe. A little not, bit. Not as much as <laughs> you, but go on. Right? And because of that, they sort of break wind a lot. So I'm sat there with my dad talking. Whoa, 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 Drugs do whoa. that, Steve. <laughs> I'm sure if there's a doctor listening or a nurse, they will clarify <laughs> right. that if they pump you with all sorts of stuff, um, it wants to come out. <laughs> right. So you're sat there having a serious chat. It's a quiet hospital. <laughs> the woman next door with the blue hands suddenly starts seeping gas. Right. W I start laughing because <laughs> if there's one thing that makes you laugh, it's that. It's <laughs> a, a ninety-eight year old woman with blue hands. Fine. <laughs> so you try to hold it in because it's a really quiet hospital, and it's, it'd be obvious that we were, uh, that I was laughing at, her and I, I didn't want to be mean, but yeah. it was funny. And then it got me t talking about my auntie because my auntie Nora. Um, she, uh, she, same thing. Pumped her with loads of drugs. She used to, a, a, a cabinet next to the bed is like boots. She's got <laughs> loads of stuff, right? For all sorts of stuff. And, I mean, she's not that old, but she's on loads of stuff, right? She's and a bit coked up if she's she, smoked. Uh, she called up my mum once. And, <laughs> yeah, how uh, you told us this? Go on, tell it again. And, uh, she said, oh, how are you doing and that? She said, all right. Uh, bit worried though. My mum said, wow, what's up? She said, I've, uh, been breaking wind. So she goes, well, you know. She says, no, but this one is going on and on and on. And she was like, <laughs> she was, she was like, what, 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 what do you say? What's, like, passing wind, farting, for five minutes. <laughs> one, one thing. Not like, 
you know, trumping and the nothing. Yeah. Continuous. Continuous drone of a fart. Yeah. I don't think she had- how big was she? She must be the size of a barn. No, she's not that big. She's, you know, she's good for her age. No, quite but I mean- that. Quite slim. No, it's but buying for five minutes. Uh, where's all the guy? Was she circular breathing? Was she sucking it in with her mouth? It was just- <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that much about it. But she called up my mum. About two and a half minutes in- Could you hear <laughs> it in the background? <laughs> Two and a half minutes in, she called me mum up, <laughs> and it went, it went on for a further two and a half minutes. Oh. And she just stayed on the phone, did you? Where was- phone? Going, well, can you hear that? Well, <laughs> yeah, did she <laughs> hold the phone next to her ass? <laughs> Listen to she, that. She was off the ground. I'm trying to work a tune down. <laughs> yeah, she was- she was actually hovering. She was four yeah. foot off the ground yeah. when they found her, the ambulance yeah. man. The cat's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't light a match! <laughs> Don't light that cigarette! <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, that advert. The kids come home from school, switch on the lights. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> there they see Granny yeah. hovering, <laughs> turn the light on. <laughs> Be careful if you have an elderly woman at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drugs so, make you fart. So that's- that's what I'm saying, you know, just let these people- What? What are you saying? No, wait a minute, what are you saying? I'm saying let people enjoy the life they've got left. No, you're not. You're saying don't put them in hospital, leave them at home to die. No, I'm not. Give them a Rubik's Cube right. and let them die. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I'll tell you something now, right? <laughs> Steve, right. I'll tell you something. I didn't want to do it because it bring the show down. But she did die. Who? The blue-handed lady? Yeah. How do you know? Because I said to me dad, how's the, uh, Woman next door. She, said, oh, she went. She went last night. They've got an old fella in there now. God. So, there you go. So, wouldn't it have been better to leave her at home, where her friends and family can call and speak to her, even nip that round if they want, you know, with a cat? I think I imagine. <laughs> no, it's definitely a cat now. What was uh, that cat's called? Do you imagine? Probably. I'm seeing like a big ginger one. So I don't know. Something <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe ginger or whatever. <laughs> Um, maybe I'd a budgie. But that's what I'm saying, just let him enjoy his life, because dying in hospital, I wouldn't like to do it. If- if I went to the doctors and they said you haven't got long life left, I'd say, well, I'll- I'll stay at home. Yeah. And that's- that's the point I'm getting at. Yeah. Right? If you can't do anything for them, let them enjoy their life. Right, one more chance. What- what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to- what have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh. Well, like I say, I don't- I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't, uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing- I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So, I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, don't you know, no. But, uh, I'll tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, it's mm. pretty extensive. What uh, about the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, so what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh, this, this is- This no, is, better, better this is a broadcasting now, is it? This is nothing. Come up with something, well, the talk! Fat, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what- it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It was what? on the telly, it was on the telly and But what was on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just they've found some, uh, there's, there's this illness called Momo, right? And, uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid. It's really sad, it was on Channel 4 and that, right? And, uh, Kids born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right? Momo. It's called Momo. Isn't that a yeah. black music award? No, 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 right. Little little fat baby and that, and uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies, right? And uh, one so they're, of them. They're how fat? Are you not telling me what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone. It was. It was only two. And uh, th there's there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they like and, endangered? Uh, is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried. This is like a conservation campaign. <laughs> and <did> for their face. <laughs> no, it's just sad. If you see, I know it's easy to show that, but, you, but you, if you've you seen it, you just go, oh, it's a bit, bit sad and that. See, there's always other things going on in my mind when I'm in that pub quiz. For me, it's just a little bit of fun. Sure. It's a night out. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like Suzanne it. enjoys it. Yeah. It's a bit of a get together. We have a chat beforehand. Yeah. We have a bit of fun. Yeah. But there was other things on my mind. Well, Carl, thinking? I could do that here, I don't no, have to lose a tenner. Wait, what were you thinking during the quiz then, when the questions were coming out? What were you thinking of? Well, what it was, right, just before the quiz started, 
I had to go to the toilet, right? Because the rule is, right, people who don't go to it, once it starts, phone's off, oh, yeah, no more toilet. The room, we yeah. take it dead serious, don't yeah, we, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I went to the toilet. Now, I'm not being out of order here, it just got me thinking, right? I went to the toilet, the gay fella in there, right? There was a gay fella in there? Gay fella in the toilet. Now, well, how, how could you, you tell? How did you know? Just typical, you know, everything about it, right? It! Everything about it, right, yeah. Oh. What, large like hand by moustache, what, leather what, what, cap. But, but plugs, I'm all night Could I just say that these views do not reflect the views of the management of XFM or me and Steve. Or most Carl. of the people in this country. On go, on, go on, Carl, what's your problem? Yeah, but this is what I'm worried about, really. But this is why I only got Danny Minogue right. <laughs> right? Because this was floating around my mind. <laughs> Went She's to a toilet. big guy, I can't now, she? Going to the toilet, they have, they have like men's cubicle and they have women's cubicle. Yeah. Now, without sounding out of order, is it wrong for me to think <laughs> gay men should have their own little cubicle? Go <laughs> in! They should <laughs> have their own- well, not cubicle, you mean an actual toilet, yeah. I suppose. When I was at the urinal, yeah. normally, you know, there's a fella there and then you go, alright, and there's no pressure. But I couldn't- I couldn't go. I was thinking, should I wait? If I go into the toilet, it'll look obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I had loads of pressure and but this was going on. But what were you worried on. about? I'm so sorry. What I'm were you so concerned sorry, about? Viewers. I'm so well, sorry. Well, it's like, right, listen, when I was a kid, right, <laughs> and it's alright for you to go into women's toilets when you're a kid, it's like, oh, it's a bit cute, yeah. right? As long as you're not, like, over fifteen or something, right? Right. But when I was a kid, I went into a toilet and women, when they use their little cubicles, they don't shut the door. Some of them just sit down on the- on the toilet. Yeah. Right? And you see everything. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> No, seriously, that's probably one of the <laughs> first times I saw, like, a woman. Yeah. That, right, I mean, Auntie Nora when she was staying over. <laughs> what happened with your Auntie Nora? She was, um, she's into wearing caftans. Into wearing what? You know, caftans. Oh, what, yeah. What caftans? Big, bellowy sort of dresses. Right, so. right. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to sit on the floor at home, in front of the telly. Sure. She was on the chair behind. Yeah. She did a bit of a, sort of a Sharon Stone scene. Oh, God. Yeah. Did you see it? Mm. There was no underwear? No. <laughs> what what age were you? What was it like? What age were you? It was like a ripped tennis ball. So. <laughs> what? Right, we're off air. We're off air. Either that will put us in for the Sonics. Tell us about this monkey, Carl. You're gonna love this one, Steve, Go right? On. Uh, yeah, so last week we were talking about how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood, he got airy. Right? Yes. No, leave it there, oh, we haven't got time to go into right, it. So, that's what happened. And that's what happened, he lived with the monkeys, he went airy. That's, anyway, what, no, that's what happened. Looked into, uh, some other stuff about, like, airy kids and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Came across this story about a bloke, right, who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right? So, uh, Trouble's brewing. Loving his job and that, but... It's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people, you're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, right. he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to to a human. Well, that he is. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. Well, it's dangerous. What, what do you mean, what type was it? Do you just mean it let him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp, yeah. yeah it was I a don't chimp. even know, so it was that's a chimp. It was okay. a chimp. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, does so it? So he it's gets pally with him. Right, so he gets pally with well, him. Well, have they gone all the way together? Well, no, I mean, it starts off, it starts off just checking each other out and, uh, you know, probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right? Anyway, this goes on for a while. Is uh, you know, they, they're getting on well and that. And then after a while, right, the monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Right? So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks he could he could live at home with me, this, because yeah. we're getting on the storm, yeah. right? So he takes him home and before you know Is this the beginning of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried, because he's already <laughs> imitating you and they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> So it's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. It's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> PG tips. As a <laughs> as a uh it finishes the day off with oh, a with a dear. 
finishes, finishes day off with what? He with does, a, it a doesn't have to move a piano at one point, does <laughs> he? He finishes the day off with a little brandy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pours himself up. Is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl. You, you're listen, a maniac, Listen, mate. no, this is, this is why it attracted me. It's amazing, right? <laughs> so, he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of, um, I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body is hairless. hairless. Right? Apart from his head. Right, so he's right. got a nice... So it's head. the opposite of the kid. Well, no. Yeah. This is what but I'm that, saying. that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if you he's shaved know. or if it's How right. did it say, uh, then the, the I'll hairless, I'll what, what? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep so going. anyway, so, well, um, so this is going on and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because He's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the zoo. This is such <laughs> so, rubbish. So the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying, well, he's got to his other Well, it gets to a point when he rain. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo, because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back, so he said, you stay at home. So you are just- you're talking such Just a let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me- oh, I'm fascinated. It's, it's, it's nearly over amazing. anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary. Carl. So, <laughs> it, he's walking up, right? He's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy. Um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Make him go away, Steve. How does he do that? <laughs> well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, what, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? He didn't say. He's built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he was well known. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. It's obviously not true. This, this wasn't on the internet. This was in a book. So it's not a quick joke and just uh, put it on a website. This is in a book. I don't understand how. I love can... that he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he ah, oh, that what is. What was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know. I th maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing? I Carl? Love the fact that he's not going to be talking with her. They're not going to be playing like, trivia pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. <laughs> I don't, I, it didn't go into that, it just said it, that's when the trouble started. Carl, pay a record. Right. <laughs> Is that what Suzanne did when she brought you in? <laughs> when you were talking just now about, like, like the gay stuff. Yeah. Right, I don't know if you saw, uh, the thing the other week about the fella who's on that quiz show. Who? Sort of- Oh, right, okay. Gay Who? fella. Straight, sort of man, man, woman. Don't what are you me? talking about? What? Well, tell me the. What, what? What? What did you see? Tell me what you saw. It's such. This is like a kid Steve. come running in, and he's, <laughs> he's seeing something frightening. It might yeah. could be an alien, could be a ghost, could be a paedophile, <laughs> and you've got to get exactly what actually saw out of him. <laughs> right? What did you actually see? It's just this this fella who's a who's a woman. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Try and talk like a human being. Right. It's, it's a quiz show that's coming on the telly. And, um, it's this, this woman. Uh, right, is it a fella who's a woman, or is it a woman? It's a bit of both, that's why I'm talking about it. But what do you mean? Is it a pre-op, is it a transsexual, a transvestite, is, is, is it a lady boy, it. is it an hermaphrodite, what is it? I'll tell you about it. Well, tell, tell me. You. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's a woman, N well, it's a man. <laughs> oh, for, oh, no, forget listen, it. Listen. Play a record. No, no, listen. Come on. What? It's, 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 it's it, it is a man. <laughs> he is a man. Well. <laughs> oh Christ's sake! It's a TV program where they've got this transvestite or a, television. It is a transvestite, yeah. So, but, but the problem is, uh, I'll tell you just because you don't know about it. The program is. I don't know. I still don't know about <laughs> it. I don't know anything about it. Still, I don't know. It's a woman, man, man, woman, man, man, woman, TV, TV program, the TV. No, it's a, it's a man who is now sort of half a woman. <laughs> and <laughs> He's now half a woman! No, well, this is what's weird about it. <laughs> he's, he's got the top half, but not the bottom half. <laughs> what do you mean? Out. He's got breasts and a wig, but he's still got his, his boys downstairs. He's what got, do you do that? He's, his captain and the boys what are still there for? in his wife fronts. Why but that? upstairs, he's got a lovely pair of dumplings. Why do that? Well, he's halfway through! But why not get it all done in one, one go? Maybe he couldn't afford it. Well, wait until you've got all the money. That just looks a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and who's he pleasing there? Uh, <laughs> when he wakes well, up in the morning and pleases himself, he can't believe his luck, he doesn't yeah. know where to start. 
<laughs> no, but what I don't understand, I mean, do, you know, I don't want to see him- Well, can I just finish anything? that sentence? What you don't understand is just about everything. <laughs> yeah. Right, what- no, what? I find it weird, right? I sort of get- I, I understand the, the gay thing, right? <laughs> but- Do you? What do you mean? Well, you know, I, I know- Well, I tell know, me the gay thing. Explain well, the gay I thing. I just know if you, you're a fella, you like- you like men. I don't know much more than that. What do you mean you don't know? But what I mean is, with a transvestite, what's going on there? What- what do they want? A transvestite is- is, is a- a, a cross-dresser. See, I don't- I don't get that either. <laughs> because- You mean a transsexual? That's somebody- that's a man who likes to dress in women's clothing. It's not necessarily- they're not necessarily gay They're not gay. They're often anything. not gay. They just happen to like wearing women's Those clothes. Those clothes, aren't yeah. But, but- then why not wear women's clothes that could be seen as a bloke's- like Suzanne wears jeans? No, but they- yeah, just but that's the thing. Just buy women's jeans. But that's- that's- that's their problem, is it? They- they- they like being seen as a- as a- as a- as a woman. They like being seen as a woman. It's not just that it's more comfortable or they wear a kilt. They like being seen as a woman. They feel more comfortable. Alright, and what's the deal with this fella who's got- We both? don't know who this fella is. No. We don't know this man who's half a woman. He's called Miriam. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I love this scientific basis. No, I So think... all he's done is- he's had the tits done, he's probably had the hormones, probably lived as a woman for a while. The last step, because you can probably reverse the breasts anyway, because they're they're probably implants and hormonal things. And whereas you you chop your knob and um, boys off, that's you know you come back the next day and go sorry I didn't mean that I, I wanted my ears pierced. It's a bit more of a bigger operation to put them back. So doctors are probably making sure that he's just I'm up sure to. Sure, if you've had the top half done, you're not going to go back on what you've said. But no, what's the top half being done? You, 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 I could have, I could get you breast implants, give you a bit of hormonal treatment. No, that and you would could be a great idea for next week. <laughs> and, and you could reverse it. What you can't do is grow a knob back. Well, you can. Last week you were talking about growing one on your arm. Yeah. We've done that. We can't do that. <laughs> so that is possible. <laughs> but the thing is, I, the truth of it is, I think I do know about this story. I think it was a television program called There's Something About Miriam. The oh. conceit of which was that this pre-op transsexual. So I guessed that right, yeah. Um, was masquerading as a woman. Right. And various blokes, un who didn't realise that this was a man, had to uh, oh, I've heard try and this. seduce him, her. And when they found out that it was actually a bloke, and they a lot of them had kissed uh, him, agree. her, they uh, they refused to let it be shown. I, I, agree, I agree, though. I, 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 that's just terrible. Yeah, that's oh, deceit. But I mean, you know, that's awful. I, I, I yeah, I hate I hated that. Yeah. Um. Right. There you go. Let's do rockbusters. Right, email then. only, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, email in ricky.gvaceatxfm.co.uk if you know the answer. Right, first one. A uh, bit of a cryptic clue, if you haven't heard it before. Well, not cryptic, we've gone. <laughs> um, what, what is Carl thinking? If you go into France by boat, I'd get your fags on there, because it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Bob Holness. <laughs> sorry, you, we're out of time. I, uh, sorry, your minute's up. You've won nothing. I was reading that question out. <laughs> so, right. so what's the right, do it again. I want it to be exactly the same, word perfect. I bet you it will change uh, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost it. Go into France, buy yourself a boat yeah. and the fags are okay. cheaper. Okay, okay, fingers on the buzzers. Um, you've only got ten seconds to win the, uh, the gold run. Okay, first up. Here, I'll tell you what, no, seriously, if you're thinking of going to France, well don't, you know, because go on the ferry, get the fags there, because it's cheaper. Go on. <laughs> right, so that one again. Uh, if you want to buy some fags, you're going over to France on the boat, get them on there, because you'll save a few quid. B.F. B F. B F. Okay. Okay. Right, the second one. Um, mm. This little uh, <laughs> foreign cafe is growing its own steak. <laughs> <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Yeah. <laughs> this little foreign cafe is growing its own steak. Go on. D. All right. Right. Okay. And the last one. Uh, uh, <laughs> is uh, that part of it? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. The Jamaican fella might have screamed oh, this on the uh, on the Titanic. What? <laughs> the Jamaican fella might have scre might have screamed this on the Titanic. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's it start with? It's uh, C D. That one. <laughs> Jamaican fella might have screamed this on the Titanic. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Please don't phone in. Um, if you can get those, we just don't want to talk to you. We'll get Rockbusters out of the way, have we got a winner? Uh, yeah, well, come on in. Mm, See, it worries really. me that there's, we've had very few entries. I think that even your 
mental fans aren't getting these, which is really worrying. They must be terrible clues this week. All right, well, uh, has anyone got on right, Steve? I think there's just one guy, yeah, who I suspect has won in the past. Well, there that's you are. so what? Right, the first one. Uh, if you go out of France by boat, uh, you might as well buy your fa fags when you're on that because you'll get them a lot cheaper. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. Um, BF. Yeah. Buy it ferry. Right. That's like what? <laughs> buy on ferry. What? Buy on. F what's buy on, buy on ferry? Who's what? What's that? Is that a band? What is it? I don't no, know what it is. Brian Ferry. Brian Ferry? What's that got to do with buying on a ferry, though? Just because it's quite close to it. Buy on. <laughs> buy on ferry. Buy what? On, buy on. Buy on ferry. Sorry, uh, t t what? That's the what's first your first one. language? Uh, the second one. That's rubbish. That doesn't count. No, Brian, not. buy on ferry. <laughs> Brian Ferry, buy on ferry. Um, <laughs> there's this little foreign cafe. Um, yeah. it's growing its own steak. Um, that's, that's Delamitri. Uh, the third one. What? What? <laughs> Sorry, what? What? What is that? What is that? Delamitri. Deli is a yeah. little foreign cafe. Yeah. A meat tree and that. <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> a meat tree? <laughs> what were the initials for that? Just, just D for that. Just D for that? Yeah. So not D-A? So that... you didn't even give them a chance to get the group? Oh, they, they got it. Well, no, 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 they, they, they didn't. Right, it's the end. Right, go on, right, go on. Deli meat tree. Deli meat tree. <laughs> One word. D. 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 Or any letter. They grind their own M. Meat. M's in it. Go on. Okay, so Bayern, Bayern, I love Bayern Ferry. <laughs> and Ox, Ox Music, Ox Music was brilliant. <laughs> can I, just... I love Ox Music. Go on. Can I just point out, Rick, that, um, we've David, had... David Bowie? Delhi Meat Tree. Yeah. I don't see why necessarily uh, Aiden, who uh, emailed in, why he doesn't get to win because he emailed in dire stakes. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me just as valid as far as I can tell. But <laughs> yeah. Delhi Meat Tree right. it is. Um, and the last one, uh, if there was a Jamaican fella on the Titanic, I'm looking forward to this it, it, with a little bit of fear. Jamaican fella, if he was on the Titanic, he probably would have screamed this. Yeah. Uh, that's Christ de Berg. <laughs> oh! I don't know what to do. Stunning. So who's, who's the winner? I'm not gonna give it to anyone. I just what's don't- the, I So think... what, what's the Jamaican bit got to do with it? It's the D. Just Christ de Berg. <laughs> say it again? No, I think they, they've worked it out now. What's- what do <laughs> I say it again? Christ de Berg. And who's that? What? Who's that? Who's what? Who's Christ de Berg? Chris de Berg. Who's the winner, Steve? I'm, do you know what? I'm gonna give it to so, Aiden. Because he just, he just treated you with nothing but contempt. Steve Martin, uh, uh, emailed in again. He got the first two and then the last one he just emailed, I neither know nor care about this answer. I'm tempted to give him- you, Do you know what you've done there, don't you? Go on. You've put the nail in the coffin of, uh, Rockbusters. I warned you, I warned you for three weeks, and you sort of bucked your ideas up for a little while, but Christ de Those Berg, are the worst you've ever done. Uh, the worst I've ever done. Dimitri, so, uh, and didn't, it just put D, and then Bayern, Bayern Ferry. Bayern, Bayern Ferry. Bayern, uh, uh, Bayern Ferry. So, is that it then? Aren't we doing it anymore? Play record. Aren't we doing it anymore? I'm ashamed. You're an idiot. Are we doing it anymore? I'm just gonna keep saying you're an idiot. Play it a record, Carl. Have anyway? you learnt nothing from Dr. Fox? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not oh, a Sony yeah. out the window. Huh? Aren't we doing it anymore? What, you need to start working on it now, because they're so good, you need to start working now, for next Saturday. Aren't we doing it anymore? Just, I, I don't know. Aren't we doing it? What's weird about it? What's strange about an octopus with all the things that could- Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. <laughs> a dog has got human eyes. <laughs> If, if a jelly, honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. Mm. But like I said to you, it's that way <laughs> that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish, they look, they look like because they've got eyes, you can make eye to eye contact with them. <laughs> what do you a jellyfish, what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see, see a lot in eyes, do you know what I mean? They say, don't trust him, why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any and I don't trust them. <laughs>
<laughs> Whereas if Adam, maybe there'd be the odd one that I'd go, oh, that one's all right. Okay, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you'd change it, okay? A crab. How would I change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would I, would I change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. But so why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. And so they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yet yeah, they're still here. They're still doing that. They're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on earth? Yeah. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row, and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And they go, this is man. Here's a woman. Here's a dog. Here's a cat. Mm. Here's an octopus, here's a- I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> is this gonna be your Auntie Nora? No, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the- the last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road and I could see, uh, it was the hairy, hairy- There was the hairy Chinese well, not kid. not yeah. Chinese kid, he, he was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Running Cause that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids are very yeah. rare, isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? <laughs> in one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. Uh, yeah, he was running around in his underpants. Did you- me. sorry, you just swore ironically, I mean, I imagine if there's any newspapers listening, you did that. Cause he's sort of jokey and- Yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, on, yeah. that's not swear. And there was the old woman who didn't move, she was just sat there reading the book all the who time. Who we think possibly died and no one came round for weeks, yeah. But, and now I've moved, right, mm. and it was quiet for a bit, I always look at what view I'm getting, sure. right, uh, looks across and it was just sort of empty, sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right. Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right, um, and they've put all the furniture in, but I haven't put any curtains up, oh. right. So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window, yeah. right. Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on. Right. With no knickers on. You mean naked? No well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, she was no probably looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne. So, wait, is this some sort of Peeping Tom confession while the telegraph are <laughs> listening? I've no idea. Well, it's, it's not, that's the thing, though. Peepington. I, if, if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, because she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no, And your hands are moving as you were washing up. And some white looking substance <laughs> rotting up. A stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if she looked across. I'm assuming the sink is lower but, than the window. But, but did, didn't she just, like... Just cover up or something. Or she looked back and go, "Oh, you're looking at you're looking at my funny." Well, <laughs> the thing I did. What? I thought, oh, just sort of drop me boxer shorts. Because I what? thought, well, Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just 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 so they can see me cheeks of me. What are you ass. talking about? No, this because I thought if she thinks I am walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. This is- Or the plot of a film on Channel 4. I mean, this, this is like the doctor who got done, right, for exposing himself to a patient, and said, and brought, and then, then painted that little thing, um, that you look down their throat pink. Yeah. And going and going, this is what they saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your boxer shorts. No, no, she wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So this she is wouldn't genius. Have, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So more. you then <laughs> made <laughs> <laughs> you actually <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front of the window? Uh, 
To oh, show off no, your, your, it wasn't your naked obvious. lower half. Su- Suzanne said, what are you doing? And I, I said, bet she did! <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? So I sent you in here to clean what up. What are you doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down, standing out of the window. Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. What do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? I'm exposing myself. I'm looking at some free leave funny. It, leave it, leave What's it. up with you, Suzanne? Leave it, leave it then, leave it. Christ. Are we, are we doing Rockbusters or what? Yeah. Oh, she sent you in there to read up on Einstein. <laughs> 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 A final question. What did the woman yeah. across the way? What yeah. happened? What, what was her reaction? I didn't look again. I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers around your ankles? Yeah. I just was walking about, and Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window <laughs> because then it's excellent." Obvious. Then yeah. her, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked. He goes, "Oh, she's got a quick, Suzanne, get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with England. Get some more friends. <laughs> They've got one more." Anyway, brilliant. Right. Well, I play a record so, and come back to Rockbusters and Monkey News. We haven't got enough time. Do rock busted. Oh God Almighty! I tell, you, I tell you something. I do know. Go on. Right. But I, I can't really get a question out of it. Go on. Just tell us. There's a shadow somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good, isn't it? I'm loving it no, already. No, no, right. There's a shadow. I think it was in America. Yeah. And uh, it's on a quiet road. I, I'm guessing somewhere like Boston. That's what I, I well, imagine. <laughs> okay. Right? No, no, no. Somewhere yeah. like Boston and. People at night used to see this shadow moving about, and they'd go, "What's that?" Right? And, and it got known that the town, the little local town, got known for this shadow, but it didn't cause any problems. People what are you to... talking about? <laughs> <It was laughs> like... You've lost me. What are you talking no, about? Do you know, like some places get famous, like uh, Scotland's got the Loch Ness monster and that, but nah, it doesn't no, cause any. Yeah. But it doesn't cause any problems. It does exist. Right? So there's this shadow walking about on the road. And, what? Uh... what do you mean? No, what, see again? <laughs> Rubbish. Right. So it's nonsense. Out... Where did you read this? Where did it's you see this? Out... This was on the internet. And I'm oh, sure... sorry, <laughs> sorry. Right. I thought it was shite. <laughs> I didn't know it was on the internet. Right. So this shadow is moving about and God. uh independently of and, an object. Yeah. And the and the local mayor and that is like, yeah, it's a bit weird, but it's not harming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor involved He was mayor. elected to that post. Hey hey, Mayor, we got a problem down here. Seems like a shadow. <laughs> uh, well, it's not causing any problems. No, it's <laughs> it just causing any problems. Yeah, go but on. That's, but that's the thing. It was left for years, and then it did start causing problems. <laughs> <laughs> I see. That's it. If you leave these shadows to go unchecked, Rick, they go crazy. Yeah. You let them run amok in the yeah. city. Yeah. You've got to stand what around did on, do? on what did it do? What did the shadow do? It was pushing people off the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> it was what? It was pushing people off the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, fi- I'll find out more for that next week. <laughs> right, that'll tease Oh, them. you're a maniac! We'll do more on that. <laughs> we haven't had time for education. Please never have children. Right, listen. <laughs> you are Just a promise maniac. me now you'll never have kids. <laughs> right, come on in, Carl. Right, so the film is Kez. You gotta listen to it properly. At the end, there'll be a question about what's happened in there, yeah. so you gotta listen to it all. I in. love the fact that in um, pole position in. In positions one and two of his favourite films of all time, it's The Elephant Man and Cares. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. All right. Am I leaving the mics open a bit when this is going out? Yeah, or yeah, let's have a listen. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. So don't talk then, right? Just put that hot dog down, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the bit in Kez where yeah. it's the teacher and, and, and he gets up and he has to Glover. Talk. What's his name? Is it Brian Glover? No, no. No. No, it's What's the other teacher. The other one. Anyway. Right. Go on. All right. So, there we go. Things that have actually happened. Oh, yeah. What about you, Casper? Casper! Alright. Alright? Alright. You haven't been listening to a word I've said, have you? Mm, yeah, I heard, uh, I heard some of it. Yeah, you've Some of it? Just... Stand up! Oh. Always somebody, isn't they? <coughs> right, now you're gonna tell us a story about yourself. What sort of story? I want you to think of an incident that's happened to you sometime in the past that is true and that you think will interest the rest of the class. All right? All right. Uh, uh, what about, uh, I work, I work on a, um, on a radio show at the weekend. Well, are you going to tell us about it? I'll just, um, just do, it's two hours and it's, it's with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant and, uh, just sort of play music and, you know, tell stories and stuff. What kind of stories? Well, whatever. Like last week it was science. We were talking about uh, this lad who 
was growing uh, a, a knob on his arm, so <laughs> it's weird. It's tricky, sir, because like with Ricky, he, he gets bored quick and he won't listen to the stories and he'll start squeezing me head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'm not interested in what he does. That isn't, that isn't normal, is it, sir, that? I mean, it sure is a bit gay. Is he? <laughs> Just messes about though, do you know what I mean? I try and like come up with good stuff, like monkey news and like quizzes and stuff, but then he'll just, you know, Ricky will just mess about. I mean, on, on Saturday he did it again, he, he, he squoze me head. How did you spell that? Squoze. S Q. I was going to show the new word to me. Squoze is S Q U O Z E. I shall tell us what it is. It's when, um, it's when he, he gets me head and he puts one hand on the back of it, right? And he puts the other hand on the front of it and he just sort of swivels it. Swivel, right down the front. Oh, swivel's not a, it's spelled S-W-I-D, like that. How many times a day? How many times a day does, does he swivels it? It depends what time he, you know, what time he gets in. If he gets in about half past twelve, he could get a good three in. But, but I think, you know, I don't, don't really want to talk about it. Well done, don't you? Well done, Billy. Three hundred applause. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Uh, the effort. Yeah. Uh, wow. That, that's, uh, that's the best thing you've ever done, Carl. So that's, that's Kez, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Got some good prizes there. Not bad, yeah, good stuff. Question is, how many times did I say Ricky can get... How many, how many head squeezes <laughs> can he get in before the start of the show? Right? So if you were listening properly... <laughs> The answer's in there, right? right? And win some, got some good stuff there. Some DVDs, DVDs. in there, uh, some uh, CDs, including some Jimi Hendrix stuff and uh, other odds and ends. Good stuff. Brilliant. All right. And just text in, uh, 83 XFM. All right? All right. All right. What profession, Carl, would you not like to do? Um, you see, in a way, some bad jobs are good jobs in a way. Because, one, it means that when you have holiday, you really appreciate it. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, you see, I always thought, like, when um, when I had a job where I, I used to have to do, like, four hours a night when I worked through the night, I only had four hours to do from two in the morning till six, right? But it meant that when I was on holiday, I never really appreciated it, because between two and six, I'd be asleep anyway. So, unless I got up at two in the morning and went, ah, I'm relaxing now, instead of working... You don't get the full... I don't know what you're talking about. I <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. The rules that you live by about uh, what you can enjoy no, and what you can't. What's good with a holiday, right? If you work, say if you work in a factory from eight in the morning till eight at night, yeah. packing socks into a, a rubber bag, right? Between eight and... What time did I say me? Eight. Shift <laughs> eight, eight. <laughs> It's a 12 hour, it's a 12 hour <laughs> sock packing job. It is murder. <laughs> I am so like, it socks into a rubber bag. <laughs> yeah. I love to get my socks in a rubber bag. <laughs> I know, and also he forgot, he forgot the timings immediately. He said the sentence, then it went out of his head. It's like, it's like if you're packing, you from, eight, what time did I say it was? What are they packing? So, alright, so you're a sock stuffer, you do a 12 hour shift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. So, you go, oh, come on, Rita, no more socks for me. I don't want to see another sock for a week. Have you got the rubber bag? Don't bring the rubber bag. That's the last thing I want to see. So what I mean is, when you're on the beach, right, by the sea, mm. between eight and eight, you're thinking, oh, this time yesterday I was packing socks in a rubber bag. And you can really enjoy it. You can keep going... Oh, an hour late you can go, oh, I was packing yeah. socks yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can I'm keep glad you enjoyed love. Will you stop going about the fucking socks? <laughs> We're on holiday. <laughs> I don't think this marriage is gonna last. <laughs> oh, look, Rita, I was- I know, you were packing fucking socks yesterday. <laughs> Let's not fucking talk about it for a week, you boring bastard. <laughs> oh, Rita, what? <laughs> this time is- I know, you were packing fucking socks in a rubber hunting bag. No, I was having lunch at this time, you fucking slut. Oh, Christ almighty! Finally, white van man, what do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> <laughs> Is, Is that, that true? a concern for you? Is that true? Apparently so. Why? Don't know. Like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting for- <laughs> 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 That should be- <laughs> 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 
his comment on Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins is, no, is, that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. <laughs> Have I told on the radio before about that time when I when I just passed my test and I was driving my parents' Volvo estate and we yeah. went off driving down some country lanes? Have Is I mentioned this the one with the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told you, have I? Yeah. Have I told oh, you, Carl? No, no, or well, maybe I'll tell you a bit oh, later let's on. Oh, just play a record. Yeah, play a record. No, I'll tell you that. There's a great anecdote about yeah. a Volvo estate coming up. <laughs> exactly. That's the kind of stuff you're getting on XFM this Saturday afternoon. Do you want some Coldplay or what? Oh, I'd love to. Coldplay. Don't panic. Oh. <laughs> That's the title of the song as well as what I was saying. <laughs> In fact, I was just saying the title of the song, yeah. if I'm being honest, making it sound like it was Conversation that, yeah. XFM 104.9. Uh, Sir Ricky Gervais Show, with Steve Merchant. Thanks. Um, you were going to tell us a little story about just a Volvo Just passed estate. my test. Yeah. My parents had a big, big Volvo estate, and there's quite a big oh, car to drive. Off. My parents didn't have a car. <laughs> but if you, I know you don't drive cars, Rick, but no. it's quite a big car to drive if you've just passed your test. It's safe though, isn't it? It Apparently. is very safe, that was the thing. Yeah. And, uh, I live, c come from, uh, the West Country, obviously, there's quite a lot of windy yeah, lanes. No, there. you're joking, <laughs> do you? <laughs> we have cars there. <laughs> well, here he comes. <laughs> Blimey, Carl. Learned on a tractor, automatic it was. Do you want me to tell it or not? Oh! Oh, no, I've got a whistle. Go on. Oh. Go on. So I went to this party. You have a guy in, but being from the north. Not when he's telling an anecdote. He's never telling an anecdote. Oh, yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, so I went to a party, and I was quite excited because I had the car, I had the motor, and there was a chick heading down to the party that I was like, you know, I had my eye on. And yeah. I thought, you know, now I've got a car, and uh, going to the party, it's going to be amazing, right? <laughs> and various, like various friends had said, like, can we get a lift? I thought, yeah, groovy. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the chick as well, who's yeah, a friend yeah, of a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cruising down to the party in the motor, you know, the Volvo estate, and there's nothing sexier than that. You know, slipping a little bit of uh, Billy Joel on the uh, stereo or whatever. Oh, you know, something classic. Oh, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and, um... And maybe it was uh, Billy Ocean. Oh. I, maybe I, it, I was quite a Billy. Maybe it Billy was face. get out of my dreams, get into my car. Ideally. Yeah. So I get to the party, and uh, inevitably it was one of those house parties where the, the chick that I had my eye on, uh, she kind of was chatting to other guys, and she wasn't really paying attention to me, and I, and yeah. I, was, I was sort of... Found out to get, was she again? <laughs> oh, oh, same old story. Oh, they, they make me They laugh. know how to tease, don't they, they, the ladies? They make me laugh. Who are they kidding? <laughs> So uh, I'd follow her like a dog, you know, from room to room, yeah. and uh, watch Quite her Quite literally, sometimes he was barking. Yeah. <laughs> and while, uh, you know, just watch her while she talked to other blokes. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously I wasn't, because I, I was driving, I wasn't drinking, so I was not really enjoying myself. And then somebody said, should we go and pick up Vera? And I thought, right, okay, and they went, Steve's got a car, let's all leap in there, we'll go pick up Vera. Mm. And this girl was like up for it as well, so I thought, brilliant, you know, I'll be back in the car with her, you know, away yeah, from yeah, all these, uh, these lads. Yeah, yeah. One guy she had her eye on, he came as well, I was a little bit annoyed. Yeah. But anyway, he was in the car, so I'm driving down these country lanes, just driving along, and they're directing me, they're saying, go left here, go right. And then suddenly, we stop, and, um, he goes, one of them goes, uh, just drive into that field, this pitch black field, right? And I'm sort of, well, it is my parents' car. Just yes. drive in the field, Steve. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to, like, not seem like I'm a hard, cool, crazy kind of guy, because the chick's in the car. So I drove the car into the field, they all let out, started running off into the darkness, shouting, Vera, 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 where are you? So I'm just sort of sat there in the car, waiting. Well, wasn't Vera Lynn, was it? Because she likes to hide in fields. <laughs> Bizarrely, it wasn't. Right. It was just, I was just left in the car uh, on my own with uh, Billy Ocean, and uh, suddenly, at the darkness, they come back holding a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig that they had stole from a, no, uh, a nearby farm, stole and they knew, that, they knew that the pig uh, was called Vera, because someone knew the farm or something. Anyway, so they got this pig, so now they're going, I'll oh, put the pig in the back of the car, we'll take it back to the party, it'll be hilarious. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not sure I want a pig and all its, you know, piggy crap in the car, right, crammed in there, but they say, yeah, so obviously I'm thinking again, I don't want to look like I'm, you know, a nerd. You know, I'm terrified of that, Rick, ever happened. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. So, uh... So you go, hey, bring the pig into the car. <laughs> exactly. I'm exactly. no nerd. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, go on. Um, so now we drive off again. I've got this pig kind of squeaking in the back of the car. And, uh, they say, stop again, stop again, let's do some cow tipping. And they do that old thing, you know, about the fact, because cows sleep standing up, don't they? So you, you can push a cow over and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a wild time, hilarious. So this time, uh, now we get to a sort of dead end in the, in the road. And, uh, they say, well, turn around, let's go back to the party. And I'm thinking, fine. Try and do a three-point turn in this very narrow country lane, right? Get the Volvo estate wedged horizontally across the road. Can't get it out, just can't seem to sort it out. I don't know what, I'm just, I'm now I'm panicking because there's a pig in the car. Right, and uh, local disgruntled farmers, right, 
people drunk, partying, probably off their head on some kind of weed, really. Well, there, was it loads of blokes with, like, pitchforks and flaming torches <laughs> exactly. going, burn him. He's playing with our pig. Exactly that. And, uh, and so that, do you know, I was so terrified that my, well, all I could think was they're going to have to send a helicopter yeah. to lower a magnet onto the top of the car to lift the car up and put it r the right way around. You used to w w read a lot of comics, didn't you? Yeah. 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 So, uh, do you know what I started doing? What? Crying. Did you really? Yeah. Why? So started crying, just very slightly, started getting upset, and the the other guy that the girl fancied, he had to get into the driving seat and sort it out for me by oh slowly no. edging forward so and backwards. that's the worst bit of the whole story. Yeah, edging slowly back and forwards. He just sorted it out, just slowly, 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 slowly worked the car back round, and then we were off. You're just gently weeping. Just gently weeping in the, the back. the bloke had just taken the bird that you saw from a distance. <laughs> exactly. That was basically your wife in your head by then. <laughs> oh, yes. Was it? I can't We were happily it. married with a pig for a child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. joke, that could happen. I know. <laughs> um, Do, um, the pigs come, if you like. Sorry? <laughs> what? what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> when you do what, Carl? What? What? <laughs> what? What did you say? <laughs> No, what did you say? Because I don't want to have to go to the radio authority again. You're what did you say then? <laughs> just remember, just remember, just We remember, are going out live, Carl. Yeah, remember Tom Bins, right? What did you say? <laughs> what I'm saying is, why were they shouting Vera? Because pigs don't come to the name, <laughs> do they? Hey? You I know, don't know the ins and outs of a pi of pig, you know, have how to lure a pig into your trap. Can I just tell you some very, very interesting things about pigs? Please do. Right. One, they have, a, everyone knows they have a corkscrew so like penis. Right? Yeah, a corkscrew shaped yeah. penis. That's yeah. the tail, isn't it? Two, yeah. they can't look up. They can't put their head back and look up. Right? Three, they can have a 30 minute orgasm. Yeah. Rick, is it only pigs that have got a corkscrew shaped penis? <laughs> no, and landlords. <laughs> okay. Very <laughs> handy. Right. Here's, um, one, here's one for you. Go on. Like insect facts and stuff. Go on. Um, if mm. a man was a flea... He could jump over St Paul's Cathedral? No. What? Wrong. It's gone up now. It's... <laughs> The big wheel. <laughs> the big wheel. It's the millennium gone up wheel. Now. It's gone up now. Play a record. You're the best. <laughs> I've got some new comedy characters. I can't believe we're up. You know I love uh, the work of um, comedy greats like Chris Moyles and Noel Edmonds. I've got some really funny comic characters that'll be popping in and out of the studio. <laughs> Save them. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. All possibilities on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Hilton, and a few a few new characters. Oh, Steve, I can't really as you said, you know, you, you, I mean, you, I know you love Moyles and his his sort of wacky stuff and Chris Moore, Edmonds one of the greats, one of the and greats. Edmonds and just all oh, the. No, um, well, I'm going to go along the same sort of vein. I've got a couple of. Can I do a little? Can I show you one? I'm excited. Okay, well, it always starts with a sort of doorbell. Okay. So. Goes uh, ding dong. I go, oh no, hold on, Steve, hold on, Carl. Who's that at the door? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, look. It's Camp David, the right queer gay. Oh, hello. Hello. You you look all gay today. Is that because it's nice weather? Oh, no, that's not what it means. Oh, um, have you got a girlfriend, C Camp David, the right queer gay? No, but I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bye. <laughs> right. Oh, Ding yeah. dong. Oh, it's another one. On. Another comic. Hello. Oh, look. It's... Holy fuck, the little funny right. Chinese fella. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's his name, Carl. That's his name, Carl. Carl. Hello, holy fuck. Hello. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fine. So, that's fine. Um, Mr. Fuck, you can call me holy right. if you want. No, I prefer to call you fuck. Yeah. Right? You're right. Nothing You're wrong right. with this so far. I'm no, right. no, no. Um, um, have, have you got a girlfriend, Mr. Fuck? Achoo. Oh, okay. oh, you haven't got that SARS, have you? Yeah, yeah. Top no, of that's my right. girlfriend's name. Oh, See? Oh, yeah. Clever. Oh, uh, just before you go, Mr. Fuck, <laughs> I've got, um, I've got two, <laughs> I've got two things here. I've got a nice trilby hat that you could wear. Yeah. Or I've got a little lampshade. Right. Right? Which one do you want to put on your head yes. and walk around? I presume the trilby. No, but it's not. No. Yeah. yeah. Lampshade. Lampshade, of course. Bye. Yeah. See, ya. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were a genius. <laughs> can I be honest? I mean, I'll be honest. I thought they Go were on. brilliant. I thought they were. Mm. You didn't. I mean, you didn't steal them off Chris. No, 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 no. They're original. They're original. Sometimes characters. Chris Moyles has done stuff as good as that. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But no, these these are all mine. So, so uh, there you go. We'll be we'll be um we'll be hearing more from um Camp David, the right queer gay. And oh, how the, the fuck one. the funny oh, little one. Chinaman? What? <laughs> All right, Carl. Mm. Yeah. Is that your sort of humour? It might not be your sort of humour. 
You just should have run it past me before you did it. Yeah. What one were you worried about in particular? The uh, the uh, the uh, <laughs> not Camp David. Oh, no. Say his name. No. Say his name. Which one? Well, I don't know which one, one you mean. The Chinese fella. <laughs> but I, I forget who that was. What was his name? I can't remember. <laughs> well, if you can't remember, it can't be that good, so we'll leave it. We won't do it again. Right? I'll tell oh. you what I've got, Steve. Oh, what? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Go yeah. on. Right? Um, do you know, like, TV programs sort of get rested in the winter? Ding dong! Oh, no! Hang on, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. Hello, Hello go again. On. Not, not now, Mr. Fook. We're talking. <laughs> Bye! Is that Holy Fook again? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, that's it now. I'm not answering the door anymore. Right, okay, go on. Right, um, yes. Ding dong, ding dong, ding no. dong, ding dong. He's trying to get in. You've got to, don't be impolite, Rick. Come on, Rick, he wants to come in. <laughs> no, it's too late. It's too late. He's, he's, he's gone away now. Time for monkey news. Can we have the jingle? Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news. <laughs> I love the jingle. Right, well, well uh, Can we play that jingle once more? Yeah. Let me cue it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, chimpanzee, that monkey news. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Got a lot to live up to now. I'll yeah. be honest with you, often that jingle is more fun than the monkey news. Well, yeah. So, you've got to excel yourself this week. Well, it's, uh, there's been a lot going on. Um, <laughs> in the monkey world. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at the Guinness Book of Records that we bought last week. Mm -hmm. What you bought? What that I bought. Yeah. Is uh, it still wet? I was just cleaning the tea off it. I was having <laughs> a, having a little read through. And uh, there was some monkey stuff in there. There was um, this isn't the actual story. I'm just telling you yeah, what, what it's like. What it's like looking up monkey news <laughs> <Yeah>. all week. <laughs> it's like behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. It's like the making of monkey news, which is actually available on DVD. Exactly. It's uh, you know 12 minutes unseen footage, just the making of monkey news, <laughs> which is my favourite bit in a way. If, if you if you enjoy monkey news, see how it happens. See yeah. you know from conception right. to uh, <laughs> it's all put together. Yeah, yeah go on. Yeah. What's a typical monkey news day? <laughs> well, there was uh, there was some stuff about a monkey in the Guinness Book of Records. I think it it had the record for asking for a cup of coffee in twenty three different ways. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Oh, oh. Well, that's good. Uh, just to show the monkey news is is getting bigger and people are covering it. Donald McIntyre, he was on on BBC. Yeah. On Monday. No, he was on Channel 5, wasn't he? No, no, he hasn't moved over yet. This oh, is right, something right. that he did for the BBC. Right. So that was, that was pretty good. That was about, uh, well, it wasn't good. It was pretty, pretty sad, really. What? Um, he was doing this thing. Do you know, like, last week we were doing Cheap as Chimps? Yeah. And someone emailed in saying, you know, Donald McIntyre's doing Cheap as Chimps. Really? And it was about, um, I, I bet he wasn't. I bet Donald McIntyre did not do a programme called Cheap as Chimps. They didn't use that title. No. But you could tell where they'd got the format from. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And it sure. was, uh, it was about gorillas and how much you can get one for. But the problem was, because they're that pricey, they were sort of, I mean, I don't even want, it, it is depressing. If it's, if it's cool, then don't, yeah, forget yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit. Okay. Uh, you know I mean, in, to regards to say, uh, in the making of monkey news and cheapest chimps, not, not, and you'll know it's harmed. <laughs> no monkey no, 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 go on. All right. Well, anyway, today's, today's story, uh, is emailed in. Uh. So you didn't even do anything towards it? <laughs> Well, so when you say I've been working on monkey news, what, you, you printed that out? So it's the making of monkey news, you checking your email? Well, Brilliant. no, I'm always looking at different options, at, you know, how much is going on. This yeah. is what makes me laugh, when he says he's, he's really busy. Yeah. I'm doing other stuff and that, I'm doing other yeah. stuff. People are sending in monkey news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get an email. Is it from it Reuters? Out. Well, listen, it's from Steve, Okay. Right? Uh, now what it is, is this monkey, right? Yeah. Don't know where it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a bit before the monkey anyway, right? Jeez. It, this, no, listen. Shoot me. Right? It's a bank. There's this bank, right? Busy bank. Normal yeah. day, everything's going normal, yeah. right? Busy bank, people going in, doing what they do, seeing about mortgages and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Everything's normal, everyone's yeah. happy, right? Yeah. So anyway, it's quite busy one day. Fella comes in with a gun and a balaclava on. Oof. Up to no good. Right, I'll tell you now, Carl. If this fella turns out to be any ape or monkey related species, you're never doing this again. <laughs> you, you are never. Uh, so, so just, if you want to finish it, it's at your own risk. But if this fella who robbed the bank turns out to be a chimpanzee, that's the end of monkey news. Alright. Okay, let's right. hear the end. 
It's a it's a lovely day in a lovely bank. Everyone's happy. Everything's normal. A um, man comes in in the balaclava. Man comes in. Starts, is it a man? Starts waving a gun around. <laughs> is Shut it? up, Let me let me finish the story. Starts waving a gun around. Yeah. Right. Up to no good. So everyone's thinking, oh god, you know, wish you didn't come in here. It's not going to be a good day. I've told you the man. Shut up. Let's hear it. Uh, everything, you know, oh god, and he's telling everyone to get down on the floor. Yep. Everyone's in what, thinking, in English? In English? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So everyone's panicking, everyone's getting on the floor thinking this is it, this is, you know, it's all over. Yeah. Just when you think, you know, it could it's all bad news, yeah. it's all bad news, doors swing open, little monkey wanders oh in. Oh god, it's worse. Shut up, Rick. Little monkey wanders <laughs> in, right? The robber's like, what's going on here? <laughs> He's yeah. telling it to get down on the floor, I don't think it was taking any notice. No, right? it was just busy asking for coffee. It runs in, I don't know if it was gonna withdraw or, or deposit or whatever, <laughs> it wanders in, right? Uh, get, goes up to the robber. Where did it- where did it come from? Shut up! Will you let him finish the story and then ask questions? That's okay. only fair. Okay. Wanders in, uh, runs up to the fellow with the gun, takes the gun and the bag of money off him. Everyone's like, yay, you know, we've been saved. Then the monkey starts backing out with the gun and the money. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so, sit down, sit down no, and finish. I'm not having this. And he does, he, does, he does a runner with the with the money and the gun. No one's seen it since. You are an idiot. I mean, you are. You have said some stupid things in your time. What are you talking about? It's a story that happened. No. What are you talking about? What do you mean it backed out? It came in, whether- was it as an accomplice? Was it an opportunist monkey robbery? What are you talking- think, Carl! Think! I know it's mad, that's- that's the idea of monkey news. We're telling people how- how like- how monkeys are, are pretty, you know, they're mental. Uh, <laughs> they're up to no good. What are you- think? They've never seen the monkey since. What, did he have a get- getaway car waiting? Did he swing his way to freedom? Where was this? There's no details. Don't talk rubbish. Well, Steve, Steve emailed it in, he's got it off the net, and the funny oh, okay. thing is, Can the I funny thing is, the there? yeah, the funny thing is, um, it, it wasn't just him who sent it. I had that a couple of times, so a few people obviously read the story and said, you know, that'll be good for monkey news. It doesn't say anymore, it doesn't say if he went off to Spain, it doesn't <laughs> say, you know, what, you know, if he's on crime watch, yeah. it doesn't say any of that. It's just saying that's what he did, that's the story. And that's what Monkey News is about. I've heard that they're making a movie version with Phil Collins. <laughs> 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 so I look forward to that and Judy Waters. So that's that's this week's Monkey News. If you got any, you know, well, anything. No, don't in, bother. In your that's town. the end. No, that is the end. That's the end of Monkey News. No more Monkey News. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's that thing about animals learn by mistakes by other animals. You know, like the monkeys uh, peeling potatoes. Right. <laughs> that's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that- how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head, they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah! It yeah. doesn't matter what the food is, I'm just saying how they know how to sort of prepare I love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, I'd mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I return you to my question as before. What's your point? What were you- what point were you making? I'm just saying an albatross will find f if you're hungry you find food or you change your diet. If you don't <laughs> eat something else you die out. Simple. Said before. If you want a pie, but they haven't got any pies, you have a pasty. Alter your diet. Mm. And an albatross Drastically. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's pies radical. Are... <laughs> yeah, you said. Completely change my diet. No more pies. <laughs> what are you eating? Pasty. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna eat quiche anymore, I'm gonna have a tartlet. I was talking to someone as well recently who, um, utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you, especially Americans, that, uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think, wasn't there some statistic, like, more people believed Elvis was alive than thought, than believed evolution? Was that right? Yes. Like that? No, 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 no. Um, no, it's something worse than that. It's, 
It could be something. It was something like that. It's something like I don't know. It's something like forty-two percent of Americans believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is still alive, right? Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it because Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. Yeah. And um. And you have to revise yourself. You just learn off Ian Wright. Yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive, um, is that there's a number of uh, sort of pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pyjamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently no one can agree. There were sums of money a lot that of, only... Yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. There's a number of there's sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts. They've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. Mm. And um, a lot of people, and I was talking to this guy, and he was saying, yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him, that he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this, this huge icon, you know, he could live an ordinary life. And my query has always been this, if Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of it? Well, exactly. So, the, what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him, you know what I mean? It's all like, uh, he didn't go to his, his, his secret reason and go, oh, I'm afraid I want to, I want to fake my own death. You know what I mean? And they yeah. go, yeah, that. that. <laughs> yeah, and what, what, what methods have you got? I like to be found, shit myself down the toilet. You like to do what? I want to be that mother, f- I'm yeah. the toilet, just shit myself to death. My right, I just, on my ankles. You know, the, the Elvis is a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous for you to favor. I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. <sighs> what, and shit all over him? Just shit no, 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 there'll be no crap at all. That'd be worse than No, you just, you just take a bullet oh, for him. Or you could... Be, there has you, to be shit involved. What, why has there got to be... There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be crap involved? I want this way. Oh, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a <laughs> car head in hand, look. I've just educated you. Yeah. Right? And I watched... The Office Christmas stuff on uh, last Sunday. Do you like to enjoy it? I think it was good. Good. I think it was good. Thank it's you very much. Though, one of my favourites. The really? second one. The second one's good. Yeah, okay. The second um, one, there's more, more the paybacks in the second one. The first one's more set up. Yeah. So, you know, I'd have thought people would like the second one more. Yeah. So that's nice. That's a nice yeah. critique. Thank you, Carl. Um, but there was something in it you did about cavemen. Cavemen? You said something about, um, it was a fact about caveman and you sort of only half did it. You didn't give the full information like what? Like I do in that. You just you, you just Where was it? What bit was it? Um it was it was the bit when you were talking about getting a woman, I think, or you were talking about breasts or Oh, oh. The one when I said People are, the reason women have cleavage is it reminds men of buttocks because when we were cavemen we used to do you from behind. Yeah. Yeah. At the date, blind date, yeah. Is that a joke or? Well, I was hoping it was funny. We were. Oh, you mean? Um, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did. I think cleavage is meant me- to represent in a sort of Desmond Morris pop sort of anthropology type way. I think I- I've seen that before. That um, cleavage represents um, buttocks, and I imagine, you know, cavemen probably did do it from behind. <laughs> I- <laughs> I don't know what you want to know, Carl, really. It was, it's in a sitcom. It, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> it looked like one. Yeah, 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 it yeah. Wasn't. Brilliantly directed to look like one, I'll yeah. give you that. Mm. <laughs> no, but what you're saying to blokes like... Yeah, I think cleavage is represented like uh, buttocks because obviously buttocks were much more of a sexual organ, evolutionarily speaking. Breasts were to actually bring up uh, um, to suckle young, but, uh, and, and were a sign of sexual maturity, so you're ready to mate, but whereas, uh, Carl, I'm not an anthropologist, mate, I'm struggling here, what do you need no, to know? But, but yeah, I imagine, I imagine, I imagine that the cleavage reminds you of an arse, like... Right, well, if, if it's all about arse, why don't gays like a little bit of tip? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? You've done me! <laughs> ah. So the question put to us today on XFM 104.9, please call me like dollars, is if it's all about us, <laughs> then what why don't gays like a little bit of tit? I was worried. If it's all about us, why don't gays like tit? If it's all about us, why don't gays like tit? Just call in with your. Thanks very much for tuning in. This is Urban Children's TV. If it's all about us, why don't gays like tit?
It's, uh, it's still been an hour and a quarter before we got round to gays, so it's good to see they've made appearance. If it's all about arse, why don't gays like a bit of tit? <laughs> right. Is the question, what a brilliant question. Well, if, if you're an anthropologist or a, 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 a psychologist, a doctor, a gay, <laughs> please call in. If it's all about arse, <laughs> this is the question. I'm not convinced by this whole, um, cleavage looks like an arse, that's No, not a Steve, I nor think, am I. I it's, think it's, a a mock, it's a bit of mock, uh, it's I didn't think it would be under <laughs> scrutiny. I think uh, it's more likely that the reason men find cleavage attractive is because they know there's a lovely pair of bristles down there. Yes, yeah, so they look like, like, we are. If that's, if that's what's on show. <laughs> exactly, imagine what, what's down there. If that's in the front window, right, yeah. what's she I'm got to go in the shop? <laughs> right, Scrooge, right, is the film that I'm in. Thought I'd do a Christmassy one. Okay. Right? Yeah. So get people in the Christmas mood and that. Yeah, yeah, you have, yeah, you have got people in the Christmas mood. You're uh, like Santa visiting them. Right. <laughs> so... It's listen. you in the film Scrooge. Yeah. Which yeah. version of Scrooge? The old one. Is it ju if it's just you moaning with bells, I'll be annoyed. Right, right. That on. is essentially Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, Scrooge, listen to this and then there's some question at the end. All right. And you can win some stuff and that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Late. Only, only 20 minutes. What do you mean by coming in here this time of day? Hmm? I've just, I've just been doing some Christmas shopping, haven't I? Probably do some more shopping on Monday because it's my day off, isn't it? Yes, I know it is. You don't have to tell me. Got to see what I've bought, Suzanne? No, thank you. I don't mind showing you. It's only, only a Christmas present, isn't it? Bought some more, uh, bought some more condoms. Why? Well, I bought some last year. Got two boxes. Uh, they all got used, so... I'm very glad to hear it. How much do I pay you? Why are you asking? That the presents I buy has got nothing to do with what I earn. Like I say, if I, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't go mental on her. Do you know what I mean? I probably wouldn't even tell her because... I think she'd want to travel around the world and all that, and I'm not into that, to be honest, so I'll probably keep it quiet. Why? Well, once you've been around the world, where do you go next year? <laughs> Each to their own, though, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, what do you want? What? Well, for Christmas. Not that fussed, really. And you, it's, it's just as well I'm not that fussed, because do, do you know I do some work at, um, at XFM? Do you know what they're giving me for, for Christmas present? Nothing. No, might, might as well have been nothing. Um, two CDs. That's it. I was well fed up. I'm sure you were. They give you a list of about 30 albums and you get to pick two off the list. So I've gone for um, Kings of Leon album and uh, the best of Bob Marley. Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. In fact, he died seven years ago this very day. Did I? Do you know, uh, do you know what sort of donuts Bob Marley likes? It's not my business. No, it's, it's not a proper question. It's an old Peter Kay joke. He likes the ones with jamming. Do you get it? <laughs> 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 Garlic bread? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Carl, oh man. Carl in Scrooge there. Um, <laughs> the only man more mean and depressed generally than Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh dear. Oh. What's the well, question, Carl? Uh, well, if people have been listening from the start, right? Uh, what albums am I getting? Yeah. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. What albums am I getting from uh, for working for this place for six years? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ricky Dr. Yeah. Bates at xfm.co.uk. Hippopotamus. Hey, news. Yeah. Yeah. news. Right. Well, this one it's. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to take the credit here. I heard Christian talking about this on breakfast, right? Because it's a good, good, uh, good story that happened. Um, basically, I don't know if I told you about it last week when we we're having our spaghetti, but. Um, no, I think you did. Right, I know what it is. I know what this is. Okay, I've not heard this. <laughs> right, there's a little midget. Right, there's a circus. I'm loving it already. Circus going on somewhere. I think it was in America. Yeah. 
And, um, <laughs> is that present day or old times? I'm talking like in the last three weeks. Okay. Right? Uh, little midget, uh, <laughs> circus, really <laughs> packed out show, people are loving it. Um. <laughs> Steve, you'll ask the same question I did, I know. <laughs> so, um, so there's a little, little midget jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> That's not a circus, it's not this. Right. <laughs> good money to see it. So, everyone, everyone's clapping and he's getting carried away. Um, <laughs> cause he can't believe he's like, he can't believe they're loving it. I didn't know they'd like a little person on a trampoline, but they love me. But you know what it's like when, uh, if there's a crowd of people sort of encouraging you to sort of go higher and stuff. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew he was, it was getting out of hand. <laughs> but he was jumping and he was coming down there all going higher and he's going really high in the air, right? So he's, he's doing this, crowd are clapping. There's a hippo, right? Just sat next to the trampoline getting ready to come on and do his act. Oh right, I thought he was in the audience. That's it, though. Getting ready to do his act, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, 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 he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he's sitting by the trampoline waiting to do his act? Because it's Why do he sit in the dressing room and they go, five minutes, <laughs> Mr. Moss, five minutes, Mr. Moss. So anyway, right, so the hippo's there, uh, <laughs> He's getting annoyed, is he, cause this, cause the midget's- He's going, how can I follow well, this? How yeah. can I, this thinking, is really yeah. annoying, they're gonna be, yeah. oh yeah. no. So, <laughs> he's thinking, he's already done the trampoline, my pogo stick out, he's never gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, so there's a hippo waiting. Uh, this, this, see, it's a great story and I just know he embellishes it or it gets slightly wrong. Go on. So, so there's a midget jumping up and down, the hippo's yeah. getting annoyed. He the wants crowd to are going the mad, the midget's loving it, can't believe his luck. Although we think, you think, he probably knows he's dicing with danger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, next thing you know, they're all saying higher, higher. He gives it one big, like, heavy sort of landing on the trampoline, goes really high. But goes off at a funny angle. Oh, hypotenuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and sort of flies out. <laughs> hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Flies off at a funny angle. Oh dear. Hippo's there. Swallows him whole. <laughs> Crowd are clapping, thinking that's why the hippo was waiting there. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> It's not rubbish though. I but mean, no, maybe the, uh, there was an accident in a, uh, a circus with a midget and a hippo, eh? But at no point was this hippo waiting to go on going, come on, the midget flew off at a hypotenuse and landed in the hippo's mouth and was swallowed whole. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is this is what you embellish it. That is great. And what is I that? have to say though, Rick, when I heard midget trampoline hippopotamus, I was thinking actually what didn't happen. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, it is it that 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 you should never put those three together. <laughs> never. It's it's a recipe for disaster. It's Everyone textbook. knows that midget trampoline hippopotamus. <laughs> are you mental? I'm well, asking well, for trouble. Well, you know when he told me it. He said, and the midget. He didn't. He didn't mention the hippopotamus. <laughs> and he said, and the midget went on like, and soon he fell off. And the hippo at him. <laughs> and I said, sorry, what was the hippo doing there? He went, it's a circus. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of a circus having a hippo. No, what do hippos do? What can they do? You can't train them, can you? <laughs> what do you, what do you, aren't they like very deadly? They're yeah, huge, aren't you they? You can't have a hippo in a circus. Are you sure? You're not thinking of Zippo. <laughs> He's neither claimed. Yeah. <laughs> it, no, 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 and it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't some sort of, where Zippo was, Eating a midget, and it's it's some sort of horrible sexual act. No, it was definitely. I heard it on breakfast, right? Um, oh, okay, sorry. No, it's definitely. Fact, yeah, okay, it's definitely right, true. okay, good. Yeah. We've just had uh, a couple of um, people, Sarah and Claire, call up and wish us luck for the Baftas, but for mm. some reason, they want one of us to do an impression of Leslie Phillips. Can't do I, it. I can't. I. I, I it doesn't. I mean, he say ding dong, and hello, and all that. That's not bad. But, That's but not I want bad. I want Carl to do it though. Yeah, go on, Carl. Go on. Hello. <laughs> well done. Say ding dong. Ding dong. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Do we do any other impressions? Um. No. <laughs> I, I can't Go. Think of Hello. Do that. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look like a ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, but... Brilliant. <laughs> Oh, God. Do, uh, You're... my name is Bond, James Bond, as, uh, as though it were Sean my Connery. My name's Bond. James Bond. Do that. Go on. My name's Bond. No, do it as though you were in doing an impression. Sean. I'm, what, so I'm trying to be Scottish? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, sort of. Perhaps a bit more specific than that. Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Bond. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> My name's Bond, James Bond. <laughs> Look, Jimmy Stewart, it's not like this, this is the best fun. It's like yeah. having your very own Fisher Price toy for yeah, two exactly. hours a week. Exactly. It's great. Um, do, um, uh, uh, Roger Moore. Do that. Uh. Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis Pierce.
Chris, <laughs> Percy Sugden, <laughs> I'm, I'm licensed to kill. <laughs> Uh, that, anyway, she just said- uh, No, this is a great no, game. No, no, yeah, no, we'll, we'll come it, back to this another time. Yeah, maybe. anything- <laughs> anything you want Carl to do. Yeah. The little cheek of the freak that we've gone for anyway. <laughs> the what? The little, uh, freak of the week. Yeah. Cheeky freak of the week. Mm. We've gone for, um, this Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in, uh- You can't have a Siamese lad, can you? Alright, yeah. This Siamese twins. Uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date. Blindness. Yeah. First time ever. Yeah. Um, and all it was, he was he was doing all right for himself. He, he used to go on the like those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right then. All right. They 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 did this circus show, right? Yeah. And uh, everything's going well. They, they you know they they're selling out the tents and stuff. People coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing all right for himself. Yeah. Right. Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think a Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. There is, there is, there There's is two man. people, they're conjoined. No, 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 but it depends, doesn't it? The one that I shown you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was, that was a, 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 a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send good potato chips to restaurants and say, doesn't it look like Norman Cook? Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> We'll bend this feature. No! No, it's, it's just- They're two people. They're two people. Conjoined twins. Yeah. Right, so these- It's just that off, they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's, yeah, they were doing all right and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what?! How is that- how is that Jiggy Freak of the Week? Just because- just because it got my interest and I kind of thought, why didn't he just look both ways? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm intrigued to know why how Why wasn't he looking both ways? I'm oh. intrigued to know how you, uh, how you get run over him. What was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses awesome, and that, like. Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. Well, right. well, when was the last time you went to a live- Experience. Uh, well, I've I've been to gigs, but the one that springs to mind probably is when I first sort of tried a gig out, and it wasn't a music one. It was um, it was bottom. You know, with <laughs> <laughs> bottom, what bottom the live thing with, with Rick Mayer and everything. Yeah, when Manchester. was that? Years ago, because it was it was in in Manchester in about I don't know eighty seven, eighty eight or something, and. Uh, I was set up for a, for like a blind date, right? This, uh, a mate of mine sort of set me up to see this, see this What, girl. so you said, let's go to bottom? Well, I didn't tell her, I just said, meet us at the Apollo. Uh, I bet she was over the moon, wasn't she? Met her there, said, right. Romantic? Go. Going to see some middle-aged men run round in pants. Brilliant. Well, it, it, it's good, it's one of the things that afterwards you've got something to talk about, haven't you, and stuff. Yeah. So it was, like uh, was it a good gig? Yeah, it was all right. Uh, sort of bought some, bought some opal fruits and that at the start of the night. Yeah. Uh, I think she liked that. And then we watched Bottom. Then afterwards had a bit of a chat. And then uh, you didn't see her again, I take it. I would have done right because she was all right looking and everything. Yeah. But when <laughs> we were when we were chatting, she said uh, she had a, a problem with a marrow. marrow what? And that. <laughs> she what? She had a problem with a marrow. She had a problem with her marrow? Yeah. Uh, you mean her bone marrow? Yeah. Oh! I thought you meant she had one stuck of her fanny. No, just- just a- <laughs> Thanks for that, Rick. That's an image I can't get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> no one did what- Oh, I see! A marrow- I think a it's a marrow. Her marrow. And is- is that serious, that? You well, I just was put off it, cos I thought- if you Well, it's, I, I think it's more serious than a problem with a marrow. Yeah, I mean- a With a marrow- with a marrow and that. <laughs> It's an idea if you're bored with butter. I love it! It's- I love it! Everything he says is like someone from Kez. It was just that thing that the, You didn't want to go out with a girl who might be ill in some way. Well, yeah, I thought, what's the point in spending time with her, spending money on her and stuff, and then she's gonna die on me. Oh! No, 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 but seriously. God! No, but I'm just- but, see, this is what annoys me. Oh, you asked me to be honest, but oh. I'm just saying, what's the point in me getting upset and stuff? 
Uh, no, but it's not the... It was the... One thing is then, what's the point in spending money on her if she's going to die anyway? You've got to realise that's no, no. not a normal thing to say. No, but what's the point in getting to really like to know, you know, knowing someone and thinking, oh, that she's really nice, I want to spend my life with her. It's good that she told me when she did. Oh, <laughs> Carl! What, during bottom? <laughs> I can't, This is the most amazing thing you've ever said! Well, what, Steve, <laughs> don't you- don't you understand what I'm saying? But no, because- what- well, firstly, it's the assumption that she's gonna drop dead and you're well, gonna I think, oh, I'm not a doctor, doctor, I'm not a I don't know what- what- what it means when you've got a problem with a marrow and that, but she looked pretty serious when she was talking about it. So I was like, oh. <laughs> Christ almighty! Oh, I don't God. understand what's so bad about that. Is record? I'll tell you. I'll explain to her during the break. Mm -hmm. Now, Carl, the big question, as we know at the moment, is whether we're gonna let you do songs of phrase or not. Rick, I should tell you now, mad. there has been a flood of- Oh, no, there hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was- I was thinking there'd been a flood of emails, but it was people agreeing with you, Rick. I know- I know Tony Blair has been trying to get through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, I'm just checking the emails. No, there's- there's absolutely nothing supporting so you, Carl. no one gives a side either way about No, well, that, no, that's not then. fair. There was- there were a couple of phone calls, weren't there? One was a guy saying you should- I think the other one was you, Carl, was it? Phoning from the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> Can we so, do it? Can we do it? Right. Uh, no. If you don't like it, we won't do it next week, but- But you- but- but- I made it. I don't know what- I don't know why you did that. I- we I thought of uh, lots of stuff you could do. You chose one where you have to have- Ten words and six songs to choose. You haven't got Twix. I don't know what you've substituted Twix for. I okay, I mean, I, I've got to say now, I'm going to sit on the fence, so I, I'm quite intrigued. Okay, right. What, to what, hear it. what have you substituted Twix for? Well, you, I can't well, tell here. you. Because you can. No, I can't because people have to listen to it and work out. All right, let's just hear it. Let's hear it. No, 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 no. They are, they know what they have to know what the word is. They have to tell what the song is or the or the artist. I prefer just to play it. No! You've got to tell them what it is, they might not even know what word they're I looking think you for. Just, let's just- let's hear him out, Rick. Right. Please, right. democracy, that's what we're fighting for. <laughs> Come, Come on. on. Right, you turn them up. Right, okay, I've got the earphones on. Go on then. Right. Okay, so right, hang on, the phrase originally is, <laughs> was- Is, uh, you never see an old man eating a Twix. Right, and we're trying to identify the, well, a number of songs which you've used to make up that phrase. And you email in xfm.co.uk slash ricky. With as many as you can get, and whoever gets the most right can it's win. It's so complicated. This it is, is so not complicated. Right, here we go. Here it's we go. baffled I, by the email address. I couldn't what figure was that out. What's the email address again? xfm.co.uk slash ricky. Right. 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 And there's um, some link on there, is there? That yeah, that right. you just press and it comes through. Oh, isn't that? Right, here we go then, right? A little bit at the end. <laughs> Let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. Mars, ba ba ba. Let's hear it again. Ba ba ba. Oh no. <laughs> oh God. So okay, right, well, so we'd say the prizes, Steve. Right, so how many songs were there? Uh, Do we know? I think there were six. <sighs> you think there were six? Mm -hmm. And you'll never see an old man eat. Um, oh, it might be five. Yeah, five or six. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Why not email in the answers and how many there were, and uh, you might be in with a chance of winning on DVD the original series of Citizen Smith with Robert Lindsay. That was good. Uh, Paul Whitehouse's uh, Happiness, the first series of that on DVD. We've also got a couple of CDs here: The Best of Britpop, Live Forever, Oasis, Blur, Radiohead, and all the rest of them That's on there. Right. Supergrass's uh, current album as well. That's I right. think it's a current album. Yeah, it is. And um, okay, less convinced by this one. If I tell you that some of the artists include a Delamitri <laughs> and uh, Deacon Blue, then I know you'll be rushing out later, Rick, to buy this. Scotland Rocks. <laughs> a compilation <laughs> of- Is wet, wet, wet on there? Uh, let's see. What about this? What happened to this? Let me see, I'm not gonna- I tell you, it doesn't- I mean, we've got Gun on there. Oh, yeah. We've got- Oh, uh, baby, lately. Uh, Aztec Camera. Yeah. Uh, big Country, obviously. Uh, Proclaimer's not on there. 
Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, where's Runrig? There they are. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> and, uh, obviously Rafferty, Baker Street. Do 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 Brilliant. So that's, uh, that's definitely worth, um, entering for, surely. So xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky. It, play it one more time. Yeah. Just, just in, <laughs> class. Pure class. Well done. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Play let's go, Todd. Team. We're running out of time. We've got okay. like five minutes left. Winner for Songs of Phrase. All right, give us the answers. Right. This, we did this at the start. We haven't even got time for the film thing today. Oh. Oh. But, we'll do that next week. Yeah. Uh, Songs of phrase. It was a phrase, uh, you never see an old man eating a Twix. I love the fact that we go, we haven't got time. Like, it's- we've had such important stuff and it's been so jam-packed <laughs> and interesting. We don't, not that it's been drivel with yeah. gaps we could have filled much better. Yeah. Don't mm. look at it like that, like, oh. What, with his film quiz? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. So, songs of phrase, you never see an old man eating a Twix. <laughs> we had to get change it to Mars Bar. <laughs> here's- here's what we had. Jerry and the Pacemakers. Echo and the Bunny Man. <laughs> David Bowie. David Bowie. <laughs> and the Beach Boys finished that. Oh, off. what do you mean I thought that one was? What do you mean? Um, Who's the winner? Oh, it doesn't matter. You've got to give the answer. It was that one you didn't know it was us. Uh, it was Jim, Neil Young, wasn't Jim, it? Jim Crochet, is it? Old oh, Man yeah. River, it's right. called. Jim Crochet. Something. Old Man River? Jim Crochet sang Old Man River. I don't think so. What was it? Who cares? Right. Well, people- oh, I can't believe this. Jim- <laughs> uh, Old Man River, it was. Let's- let's give the prize to- Jim Crochet wouldn't have sung Old Man River. Well, let's give the- uh, Paul Robeson. Let's give the prize to Mitchell Sterling, um, who has got some of the answers right. <laughs> On XFM 104.9. <laughs> and we'll be playing that great quiz again next yeah, week. next week. Uh, right. Mick and Gervais with it on XFM Sports. <laughs> and if you want to send an email, it's rickandgervais.com. <laughs> or check out the website on XFM's All The Comms. Carl, are we doing your, uh, story with a song? Is that what you are doing? Yeah. Well- Excited about it. Right, last- what was it the other week? We did, uh- Babushka. Did Babushka. Yeah. Um Pinball Wizard. You said if he's deaf, dumb and blind, he doesn't even know he's playing pinball, which is <laughs> I just said, don't, don't bother putting money in it. That's all I'm saying. Let him play pinball, but don't waste 20p or whatever. <laughs> good point. <laughs> um this week, right, do you know I was saying- It is a good point, actually. It is a good point. Again, though, it wasn't a documentary. It was what? just- it's, it's not- didn't really happen. Yeah, well, do you know I was saying sometimes I listen to song- I, I like a song to be- Obvious what it's saying. Pinball Wizard was a good song. You need a song to be obvious. Uh, in the ghetto, you know, as a kid growing up, and all that rough yeah. area, gets killed for nicking cars and messing with guns and that. Uh, mm. living in the city, growing up in New York, rough area, how you cope with it and that, right? Mm. But they've got to be as simple as that, otherwise okay. I'm not that I've happy. got a brand <laughs> new combine harvester. <laughs> yeah, it's I'll about like the machine. It's brand new. Yeah. It's brand new. But, even though it's new, he's willing to lend it out to other people. <laughs> <laughs> No, but what I mean is, if you start trying to be clever, yeah. the, the story's lost on you, innit? Yeah. Not, 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 not necessarily me or Rick, but yeah, sure. Go on, on, on. We, we know what you mean. Go on. On primates, yeah. Well, this, <laughs> this song here, right, it's not an XFM song and you'll probably hate the song, to be honest. Go on, what is it? What's the song? Yeah. It's Wonderful Tonight. Right? Eric Clapton. Okay, it's alright. It's, it's a, a, it's a bit it's sort, sort of bluesy here. sort of ballad from the- like seven is yeah, it's all right. But I'm always arguing with Suzanne because every time I hear it, I'm getting different pictures in the head. Yeah. Of like what's going on, right? Okay. And I'm convinced it's about like this little cripple fella in a wheelchair, right? And he's knocking about with his wife. Mm. And we don't say cripple anymore, do we, Steve? Do we say cripple? I, I don't think we said that since um seven is. I think this is seven is when we stopped. All mm -hmm. right, little just a little fella in a wheelchair then. Okay. Um. And the story is all sort of, uh, mm. you know, how he's, how he's being pushed about by his by Again, his wife. No, that's not literally. By his wife? She's wheeling him about? What do you he's mean? He's wheeling him about, they go to a party, everyone sort of looks round and looks at him. What makes you think? What makes you think that he's in a wheelchair? What's the clues? What's the words? There's, there's loads of little things. There's like, uh, that, well, like I say, uh, something about his wife walking around with me. 
and all that. Well, of course she is. She's pushing him about. But whoa, 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 whoa. walking around. If someone said, "Oh, she was walking around with me," I'd think they were both walking around. There's a few. There's a few. But that's not. Well, well, there must be another. There must be a reason why you suddenly thought that fella's in a wheelchair. Right. Is my wife's walking around with me? Put on your makeup. No, 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 no you know, just just everything that's being said. Okay. Understand why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. No, never. Yeah, there's no but, clue. But, but the thing is, that's that's what I'm picturing. But that doesn't mean it happened. You picture people that are half man, half moth. It doesn't mean it's possible. Do you know what I mean, Carl? What you what you think is usually not true. Suzanne is totally right. There is no reason. I have never ever thought that Eric Clapton was singing about a little fella in a wheelchair. And the one clue in that that was two, isn't it? Are you all right? Well, let me say that. Little cripple. Right. And uh, uh, I'll give you the car keys. Oh, why is oh, she driving? You got any legs? Pushing him around in that. So we'll do one more next week then. Now everyone knows over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project hasn't been my own career. It's been get Carl famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, "You bald-headed mank twat." Make his luck. I, I well, want. Well, let me tell you now, Rick. I've been out and about, and a lot of people have said to me, they've come up to me and said. It has Carl Pilkinson got a head like a fucking orange. Well, I've and I've had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. Well, I'm in uh, America quite a bit, and it doesn't matter what I'm talking to David Bowie, The Simpsons, all these people, people on 24, all these people who have got these amazing careers and lives say, is Carl Pilkinson really like that? I say, yes, he's, he's not two short planks, he's three or four. Fucking short thick fucking plank. planks. Thick but short, short but yeah, thick planks. Fucking lumps of thickness. But. He's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, how, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, well, they're turning anyone, to cover, yeah. yeah, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and, um, had a meeting, uh, in a cafe. And uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And uh, sort of said, you know, what what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action, thriller, whatever? Because uh, you can provide any of it. I love yeah. that that he's playing it cool, like yeah. you've come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious. What do you need? Yeah, yeah, I'm Carl Pilkerton. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they they call me the movie doctor. What do you need, <laughs> Papa? So thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always by him. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, yeah. don't they? Just, just so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when if you just Randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's another right. quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with stuff. That, 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 that to me is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? Does your brain rule you or do you rule your brain? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it. Right. It doesn't work the same. Just just keep talking. Just keep your keep your mouth talking, and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. So, uh, so, so anyway. Aristotle. He said, "Sit down. I've got an idea for you." Uh, Aristotle said, "Plato, I'd want to go right. Just keep talking, and eventually your brain will come out with stuff." So what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving giving more. It's building. Right. Okay, so who's so who's who you say? So I said, "Right. I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren." <laughs> who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, alright. Did they look at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? Well, I <laughs> So they, they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? Wait, uh, he, he must be amazing. Yeah, he's like, Clive Warren, get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's get Clive me Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca De Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca De Mornay. <laughs> I love this you bit. Did have. They thought he was a genius. They thought he was an absolute nugget. Like, we've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca De Mornay. But hang on a minute, you could have. You could have <laughs> any film star. This is your fantasy <laughs> casting, yeah. and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for 10 years. <laughs> oh, God. Why didn't oh. you choose a, like, you know, a. Someone who existed. Gino or someone who's a oh. big star? Oh, God. Clive <laughs> De Mornay. Clive Warren. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so God. anyway, so they're going, yeah, and what happens is, 
They're going out. And uh, together and that. Yeah, Clive Warren and Rebecca yeah. Money. I said, it's one of them where it starts off and the people, you know, you, you're seeing into their lives from, yeah. like, the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. Um... You know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? They're planning a big do that night and stuff. And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, She's like, love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's dead, dead right? Yeah. Now, what happens is, she's devastated, Rebecca. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't doesn't... got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't. If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Um, he's going to say, no, hold on, though. There's more, isn't there? I've, I've... Have you jumped the gun there, Rick? Go on, mate. Well, carry, carry on. So he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yeah. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's Warren. fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, doctor says, Clive's dead. Um, and that, who's playing the doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of, uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. <laughs> No, the 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 old the old black fella, um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan a doctor. Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, "Your husband's dead." Right. She's like, "Oh God." What happens then is he says, "But listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out." Right. Right. And 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 a fact that I read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah. Okay. Luckily I read a thing it. about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. Yeah. You've actually got a full brain. Yeah. You can Some run it on half. half. You can yeah. run it on half. Right. Yeah. So, this is, this was in my mind still, so mm. I thought I'll get that in. Well, half your mind, yeah. So, I said, what happens is, Morgan Freeman says, been working on this, you can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you tell me this for now? My, my husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He said, I'll tell you. He says, we can, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you're Oh, he's, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but Wait, he is. he comes alive. What he do you is, mean? he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. no so, no, he's gone. No, no, no. hit by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, no, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma, they're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, no, dead. no, they're in a coma. No, they're, they're in a dead. coma. No, they come out of comas, don't All they? Alright, then he's in a coma, he's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. Right, okay. So, change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on, though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely gonna die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. Right, if anything happens to me... No, no, no. There's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. Right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive, and it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you can link it up to the eyes, and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do. You're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going. Well, we're going to try and do a brain to Carl. Right. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be quick because I've got to get back. Uh, my cousin's fixing my boiler. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. Then what happens is they say, "Do you want half of his brain in your head?" Half she's, of his brain. She in says, her head. "She says definitely not. I'm having you struck off." She starts screaming. She calls the police. He gets arrested. Yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's only in a coma. Yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that co coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. It's right. like, look, you know what? What we're going to do here? We can either turn the switch off, yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would but, you? So, why? so what he does? So what they do then? They're going to take half his brain, half of his brain, take out half of hers. Pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. 
But hold on, well, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, okay, sorry. What happens is, he, he explains all this, so, I mean, this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film, but I'm just rushing I, you, I just rushing it off, up now. but yeah. No, you wouldn't, this, this bit would have you. Mm. So what- Well, what, I'd have actually left when I, I wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is, She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And, uh, he goes, well, what will happen is, he's gone, but you'll- you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning, when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, well, they have cornflakes, his bit of the brain will sort of say- Have a wheat a bit. Have shredded wheat or yeah. whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry, so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought- when What do you mean she... yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh wait a minute, this is only act that's, one. That's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so, has it done. So what is- what- who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone, yeah. but- but now with and again- Cl with- with- with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So- so the idea is it's all going well at the beginning, she's- So she can't decide what so, to so wear, she's got, he, he So she's had half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. okay, and- and Clive Warren's, uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round, okay. So yeah. she's like a- she's schizophrenic. Or- um, Oh no, no, well, it's okay, no, it's okay though, because the bit they put in of Clive Warren's brain is actually- it remembers doing a coma. So oh, there's nothing yeah. happening anyway, don't worry about it. No, no, so no. all she's got is half a brain. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's- she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, right, in his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does he- does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? <laughs> well, I would say it matters, because- yes. Otherwise, yes, it, it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the I mean point is, of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. And Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's," right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me, sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I just thought about, or whatever." I'd still be there. But, but she it's wouldn't physical, ever do that. Isn't it? The rest of the the, the rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But Carl, like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is kind of. If when when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? They're still there physically. Yeah. But you go, you can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've else? got a perfectly good brain. Yeah. So, but but like I said, you're running on half. So have, have who's running on half? So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> I, I, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I can also I, categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you love and that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And, and you I'd go, go, no! It's madness! I don't think you It's wait. madness! Alright, 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 let me just ask this as a question, even if we accept this as a possibility. Does- if- if Clive Warren doesn't know <laughs> that he's in Rebecca's brain, their love and the conversations they used to have and what would- the connection between them is gonna be absent because she's gonna be talking to him and he's just gonna be going, I don't know, shredded wheat. It's all thought. You don't have to so talk. So they're not talking to one another. Well they are, but not out loud. She's not walking down the corridor going, what do you think, Clive? And, right. And he's saying shredded wheat. It's just- it's happening. Right. But so how is this dramatic? So they're on screen. Do we hear those So voices? now that they've yeah, got- you hear the voices. You hear the voices. You hear the voices. So tell so me anyway. a bit. Tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. yeah, that's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, let's do. Can we do lunch? Um, there may be like at the funeral because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave, and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, "Why is she laughing?" Yeah, and she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, "Look at her head." Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's like Stuff a on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> a little cameo for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, oh, it's quite funny, this. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. then you hit them hard. <laughs> the eight people that have gone to see it. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca Re 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 Morning and her family. <laughs> yeah. Clive Warren's three mates. <laughs> Alright, Clive, I didn't know you were a film star. <laughs> no, I was in a garage yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was fixing boilers. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, this is where you get them. <laughs> Oh, it is the most ludicrous idea for film I've ever heard! 
right, it's, right, the, but, it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental case. Though, right, I, I have to say though, I am hooked now. I <laughs> want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Oh Christ! Remember, I was making all this up. <laughs> it's not based on a true story. Then. <laughs> Remember, I'm making all this up, and they go, yeah. "All right, oh, okay." Oh. I thought, I thought, oh. oh, so the meeting's still going on. They haven't left at this point. No, no, they they were sort of going, "All oh, right, yeah." But oh, what annoying! Check, please. Check, the, please. That's the annoying thing. It was like, I just wondered whether this is what they do, just so they can have a cake every day at four o'clock, because <laughs> it was odd. I can't imagine Spielberg sort of nipping down to Costa Coffee to <laughs> discuss ET. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I said, so oh I said, God. right. So this is where you get them. You've got everyone laughing, and that's mm. what it's all about with a film, isn't it? It's emotions yeah. messing with people's emotions, and that. yeah, yeah. So they like that. They were like, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Thought, oh, oh, yeah. That's and there you go new, again. That's oh, new me. outlook to filmmaking. That's mm. me. That's me. Mouth coming out with stuff that even I didn't know I knew. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, so then I said, um, I said, right. Then what happens is, <laughs> she hears the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> he's going, oh. He, she, so he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip I've here. let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. Yeah. So. He's, for, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing. So she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know. Where you, are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got, she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. Right. And um, that that can fill about half an hour again. I'm not I love the sure. fact that you're doing it how far you've got through the film. <laughs> yeah, you've I'm got like, to yeah. fill up tw two hours, right? Do right. one more idea. We call it half hour. That's the end of the film. <laughs> See you later, starring Clive Warren. So, so nice to see Rebecca De Mornay again, wasn't it? Yeah. So Leslie, uh, so Leslie has got to be sought out. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie, or it's is it another a woman? Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone. What would sort of happen is? <laughs> oh yeah, because you don't want to ruin it for them. Because this will yeah. be this will be filling the multiplexes in no yeah, time. Yeah, this film's oh, definitely going to oh, be made. This is definitely going to get made. Well, yeah. seriously, isn't any pick pick a massive Hollywood film and look at it on paper and go, "That's a Barmy idea." Casablanca. I haven't seen it. Okay. So what I'm saying is, what that's why they called on him as a movie yeah. expert. This is this is a different sort of love triangle. They've all got their own brains yeah. and legs and stuff, walking around interacting normally. But, but that's just it. It's it's it's. It's the power of love, isn't it, in a way? Yeah. But sorry, I, I mean, I don't want to see. No, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in a head. But listen, let's I just get to hang the on end. a sec, though, Carl. I don't. Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening. On. Come on, what's the on end? Waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right. So what I said was, I said maybe because I wasn't sure about this end bit. I thought they, they might think it's daft or whatever. You put so yourself said, down. I, I imagine it's dynamite gone. I said maybe you could have something like this, and uh, they were there, sort of going, "Oh yeah, what's it going to be?" Transfixed. What's it gonna be? Yeah. Well, he's come up with some great stuff at the moment. What happens is. His brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right. How it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't. Why is there no power involved? It's got a stronger will. What I mean is the brain. Mm. Her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's his taking brain, over. His brain's just sat there, isn't it? Thinking stuff. Right. Brilliant. So that's that gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end, and that that is the worst idea I have ever heard for any piece of art. I mean, it's the wor It would be the worst. It would be the worst TV show, worst book, wor worst everything. It's the worst idea. It's not the worst idea because as long as a film, as long as a film makes you think. But Benicola this doesn't make job. us think about anything. I'm thinking, who the fuck's Clive Warren? <laughs> so hold on. So he overpowers her, so she is now a lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think? Hold on. Why is why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's r relationships. It's the love of two brains. Right. Okay. Again, can That's anyone out there line. can we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But is she, does she know this is Clive Warren? Um. well, maybe, maybe now and again, Rebecca, or Clive, 
says something. Rebecca will say something now and again. Like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me, you know, me food done like this or whatever. And, and it's all about, say, say if like... I'll have a <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, Clive Warren on this group. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm going to turn into a lesbian. People, Shredded wheat. People like what they like. And it's Ooh. the same way, like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman and then is found out that she's got a twin sister and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that... When a cat dies, you buy another one. <laughs> it's the same thing. You want that same. Yeah, but love you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, has there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Go yeah, well. I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs. Now I like cock. <laughs> well, this is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't. <laughs> Can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? Yeah. Um, uh, I called him out, I was what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? So I went, go on. He said, uh, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, blog, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cause your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they kind of said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. Right? And he said, and they saw the cat and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, uh, 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 and, uh, he said, and then he went back it sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went. <laughs> that's the end of the I went, story. What? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was going to say, <laughs> a year later he got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> Right? I thought it was going to be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 or um, someone did report a fire oven and their name was Johnson and they looked up Johnson they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board or <laughs> and they sent one to the wrong person, right? You know, he, he, went, he went, yeah. I said, I explained it to him, he went, yeah. Why did they look at the cat funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man alive, Carl. This is really weird, right? I was, um, <coughs> I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, and there was, right, some, kids and there was some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door and there was a bird goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what did you think that was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you, three different people. Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen, about a wife that didn't exist, <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> The other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. So these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts to walk the st walk the earth <laughs> as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts <laughs> wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh. Maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire, some woman might have died in the house of a fire or something. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, it sort of all happened again. Bit yeah. Of a... Yeah, it's certainly a mystery. It's, well, certainly it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I can't What's this I... book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. There was, um, it was the Fatian, Fatian Times. Oh. Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know. Know. I don't know what to say. I just was reading something about an octopus. That's, that's like a killer octopus. Mm -hmm. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I thought they were quite friendly.
<laughs> whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of, uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, what do you mean? Well, just, just, you know, when, when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> But this one that's on the- it was- it was your fault really, cos you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's, uh, yeah. there's, uh, some octopus that's in the sea. Yeah. Uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water. And if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. So in a way it's good knowledge because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that, but that's just <laughs> reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere, <laughs> uh, you don't even have to be near one, you don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. What is your favourite curse word? Um, I don't. I don't think I, I do anything like that. I just. I think people can tell by my face when I'm like fed up. Uh, well, they know you're fed because you're always whinging. Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's. But it you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Uh, but she doesn't do anything to annoy me that much. But if she did, what would you say? If she really annoyed well, you? Well, knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she, she, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. All right, you're getting into this, aren't you? It's, that sums it up. But I don't, I don't really. Do you need one of them? What's that doing for you? It's better to think, in it. Like, okay, I've just slagged off that octopus, but at no point was a, a effing and jeffing about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've t you, you know how annoyed I am with it. I don't have to start swearing about it, and th that's that's. What would you do though if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You're on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you see it starts spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say? Well, to it? well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it, <laughs> and I'd say, you "Nobed." I, I would, uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its it's done its stuff, hasn't it? Yeah, I don't know why he's kicking and coming in the <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh, God. Oh, I'd go, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'm just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face is Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Not only do you not bother turning up, but you turn off the radio and start watching football. Oh, uh, yeah, I turned it off, but I've, I've recorded it. I'll listen back later and, and sort of... Well, what good is that? Sort of, I, I like to keep, you know, keep it in shape and that. I'll have a word next week. All right. If you receive any phone calls from people you don't know, we don't know anything about that. <laughs> Instantly, we don't know why. Why that is happening? Uh, that is just going to be a weird, spooky uh, thing. So and, and don't bother telling the story about um, Men in Black Two either, because I don't think people will be interested. Um, uh, actually, on the subject of Steve, Men in Black Two, <laughs> what? Have you seen that, Steve? No, I haven't, Carl. Tell oh, me about you it. You should see it. Go on. Why? Because there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing in it. <laughs> Go on. Uh, what a stupid bald Mancunian tosser. No, it's weirder than that. <laughs> There isn't anything weirder than that. Hey guys, it was gangly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. And, uh, you've got to see it because you wouldn't believe out the likeness and that you've got to see it out tonight. Right. It's not as weird, it had a normal voice, right? <laughs> He's not even here! I'll tell you what, mate, it ain't worth coming in next week. <laughs> oh! Oh, stay on the line, Carl. Play a record, Claire. <laughs>
Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers. What do you think of that, Carl? All right. <laughs> There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another I'd say what, remark. Steve is not a, a fan now. Not only does he know you've been slagging him off behind his back. No, I wasn't slagging Steve. If you get it out on the DVD tonight, you'll know I'm not slagging you off. It could be your brother. <laughs> 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 I love the fact that he, it makes it worse, but he's thinking you're gonna go, oh, he wasn't slagging me off. It does look like me. I do think I'm an alien. I love the fact that you hope Steve will go, he's got a point. It's the, it's a, no, it's a spitting image. Yeah. I am, seriously, Carl, I'm really angry. I'm so angry with you at the moment. You haven't seen it yet. No, I know, because I know what it's gonna be and I'm just, I'm Why? What's, I'll what's tell you why I'm angry, because he doesn't do it in jest. No, but what do you think it's gonna look like? What do you think this thing's gonna look like? It's gonna look ludicrous. It's not gonna look anything like me. But no, he's gonna, like, pretend it does. No, go it on, what? Go on! No, it does look like you. Yeah, of course it does. And you looked like the, uh, human Z. <laughs> well... I mean, to be honest, you did a bit, Carl. You walked like him, you bowled like him, you got a sort of gormless face like him. <laughs> Any more? I don't smoke. That does. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you. I'm not well on that. <laughs> oh, you're not well. What exactly is wrong with you? You whinger. Well, uh, it's just, do you know, like a, I always tell you about the, um, restless leg syndrome I've got. <laughs> it's like yeah. that, but all over. <laughs> so you're just shaking around the house? I'm just, yeah. What do you look like? Elvis? What are you doing? You're shaking around the I'll house. I'll tell you, with your bald head, you probably look like an enormous vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's what you probably look like if you shoot <laughs> naked. Oh, you'll have the Scottish widow coming round. Oh, dear. That's, what's the name, by the way? I heard you talking about that. That's, um... Amanda Lamb. Amanda Lamb, who's in the Play From The Sun program. Is she actually a widow? <laughs> Is she a Scottish widow? Uh, just, just, uh... Hoots, man, my husband's <laughs> dead. Do you want any money and a bit of my clam? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right. That's the sort of uh, quality you've missed out on today. Well, anyway, you're going to be back next week. I go. We, we we need you back next week. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you know? That's also, how did you know you were going to be ill today? Because you phoned and arranged this yesterday. Convenient. And I yeah, spoke yeah, to you yesterday, yeah, and you didn't yeah, sound yeah, very I felt, ill. I felt ropey yesterday. Afternoon. You've got a bit of a bunged up nose. Even though <laughs> I have a bit of a bunged up nose. I still sorted it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit sweaty. Paul, oh, sorting it out does not mean out. you phone up Sturgis and send her down. That's not sorting it out, that's making things worse. <laughs> Have you learnt nothing? Thanks, Claire. If you're not part of the solution, you're part Don't of the problem. Hate. Yeah. Ah, oh, my little- my leg's a little bit achy. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing wet jeans. Oh, I put wet jeans on again. I have on me- on me the lasagna wasn't- it was frozen. <laughs> Can you hear the venom and hatred in our- in our voices today? We genuinely are upset and angry with you. Yeah. Can't believe it. I cannot believe that you'd- I mean, oh. Right, well, the thing is, the, it will be back to normal next week, right? We've got Billy Elliot doing the film next week. Right. Uh Any prizes? Got some good stuff. Have you got any films with Burt Reynolds in to give away on VHS? And well, uh, I'll see you then. Great, we're looking forward to it already. I'll see you later. See All you right. later. Right. Go on then, Carl. Second one then. This is a bit easier, but I still think it's a good one. So this is, uh, we should explain what this is if it's you've just a, tuned in. Uh, it's, uh, one of those stupid lateral thinking problems. That Carl himself has created. Yeah. That yeah. was his homework. Right, Off this one. Um, it's a fella. He, <laughs> he has a normal day doing, doing stuff. <laughs> Nothing wrong with him. Right. <laughs> and... It's the twist in the towers. It's just like Towers the Unexpected. Yeah. Just a normal day, nothing wrong with him. Hold on, though, he's got the legs of a fish. <laughs> Go on. So, That's uh, why he's been hiding his legs. So Go on. He, he does his normal... The legs of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> so he can't carry on. He has his, wor his working day and that, yeah. and then he gets a bit tired. Oh. Mm. Um, goes to bed, he puts the light on, mm. leaves it on, goes to bed. Oh. That's crazy. That's mental. I, I can't think what's happened. Anyway, here's Radiohead. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Why, the question is why does he put the light on when so he's So a man, to bed? He's, he's had a normal day, he's coming from work. Is that right, he's coming from work or he's not been working, yeah, he's just been out? No, he's, he's been working and stuff, I think. <laughs> you think? You've made it up, Carl, you can decide. Um, so, is the, yeah. qu the question is why has he put the light on when he's asleep? There's a reason that he's put the light on when he's asleep. Has he gone to sleep? No, no, Carl, don't shrug, you're meant to answer these questions. He, he put the light on before he went to bed. Yeah, and the, and the question and you're asking me sleep. is why? What's and the he, scenario? And the, and the light's on and, and yeah. that, but he's gone to sleep. Yeah. He started reading and then he fell asleep. 
Um, no. Did he inten- so he intentionally, for some reason, put the light on? Every night. It's mad. Sounds mad. <laughs> it's that- that's Carl, doesn't it? Every night he does it. Yeah. He puts the light on- so light on it, it Carl! Carl! Is the point of this, the, 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 he puts the light on for a very good reason. D- not for us, but for some people. He's blind and it's always been on and he thinks he's turning it off, but it was on in the day and he thinks he's turning it off, but he's turning it on because he's no, blind. No, that'd be stupid. That works. No, that works great, Rick. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. So um, you've got to come up with- what? Hang on. If you're blind, why would you put a light on? No, he thinks he's off. Yeah. But why would he turn it on anyway? Just think so he doesn't get burgled so people know he's in because he can't see him. So he just like, he puts the light on when he's there and then he turns the light off when he goes to bed. So people think it's fine. But he's, he's got it out of kilter and actually he's, he's, he's walking around in the dark all day. I don't th- believe that if you're blind you turn your light on. I don't on think you'd be <laughs> living on your own, would you? I'm not having that for a <laughs> second. Do blind people live on their own? <laughs> I'm not having that for a second. Well, some people do. Lonely blind people live on their own. No, if you, if you like, if you got bad eyes. But, and even yeah. women? Any, um, are there any blind women who are living on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you know of some blind women. Oh, wait, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've gone through this. If, if you are a blind, blind woman, woman with, with, with no standards and you don't care annoying voices and smell, yeah. then get in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, Do I you mean, know? you've got to be within the ages of, say, 25 to 65. <laughs> you know, right. well, say, call it 75. You're yes, fussy. You're fussy <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, go on. If you were blind, would you live in London? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, someone said yesterday there was one struggling outside in Leicester Square, and I don't understand if you would. Bl- I mean, you but know, I've been a tourist. But why come to London if you if you're blind? It's the worst place in the world to come if you're blind. To hear the sights. <laughs> <laughs> to hear the sights. It's a bit mad, isn't it? They're, well, they have. So yeah, they, same, they, they do the same job. They have tourist needs like anyone else. Yeah. No, but it, it sort of stinks, and you'd go away going, "Oh, it's not that good." I just thought that, I, I, I thought, thought it was a bit weird. Well, never mind your concern for the, the partially sighted or uh, part, you know, sight impaired people coming to London. Get on with this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there he is. Yeah. It's like, oh, a bit tired. Yeah. Oh, just put the light on and get to bed. <laughs> yeah, so he turns the light on and he goes to bed. Yeah. Oh. Should we, it? should we, um, actually, should we play a track? I don't, it's and not, it, it's not, he's not sleeping on the job, he's a lighthouse keeper. Well done. Is he a lighthouse that, keeper? That's not it, Carl. He's a lighthouse keeper. Right, that's why was the light on all the time? Because it's light in the day. You idiot. Play a record. What? Play a record. You're a buffoon. <sighs> no, actually, the light's- the light isn't on in the day, is it? No, Rick? it's not. I think you're the buffoon. You're, yeah. Carl has won! <laughs> <laughs> Hundred Reasons and Silver. Um, XFM 104.9. I love the fact that Carl went a little bit mental then. So happy that he thinks that a lighthouse keeper popped the light on at the same time every... Are you telling me it was never foggy? Everyone has a routine in the job. <laughs> and why was he going home from work knackered? What had he been doing all day? He never said he went home knackered. He did. He said he went home, he's just done a day's work, he said he went home knackered and puts the light on and goes to sleep. That's what he said. Yeah, but he's maybe a part-time lighthouse keeper. Oh, what does he do? Works in the library, does he, as well? No, listen, Rick, don't, let's t- look, I'm really with Carl here. What? He definitely got you. He anyway, stitched I got you it right. right and proper. Anyway, I got it yeah, right. Yeah, but then you embarrass yourself by he's saying that- He's stupid. But you- <laughs> He's <laughs> stupid. You would never put <laughs> a lighthouse one? light on during the day. What's your, what's your next and one? And he'd been painting it that day. Oh, had he? extra shattered. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I found these, uh, Things, do you oh, know? Yeah, yeah. So, so what's the, explain the thing. Right, so I got back off holiday. The first job I find out I've got to do is work with Ricky for a voiceover. I do right. a regular thing, I do the X-ray magazine, but I'm allowed to make the script up. And they said I could, so I did. Right. So imagine this. Well, I know you, Rick, and I know you like to put a lot of work into these things. Yeah. You want to do a good job. So he rolls up, he says, let's do it then. He said, what's in the magazine? I said, well, there's a selection of stuff, this is what you've got to sell. He said, leave it with me. Um, he goes into the little booth, um, and the first one he comes up with is this little advert for it, right? X Ray magazine. It's out now. It's a three pounds fifty May edition. Uh, uh, music of tomorrow. Dandy Warhol's picture, and there's a free CD <laughs> with it, all the placebo and the donors and uh, smog and nightmares on wax. Alpine All Stars. Only three pounds fifty. It's out now. Buy it. Isn't it? <laughs> Have you got a sore throat there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's alright, isn't it? And he was going, you can't, I said, we are doing that, I've done one, that is it, that's it. So I persuaded him, he went, right, okay, we can possibly put that on XFM, right? I- I'll have to see, right? And so I wouldn't do it again. And he went, but you need one for capital. 
It said right. Capital will know what I went, right, I'll do one more for Capital, won't Cause, cause all the stations advertise the XFM yeah. magazine, right? So this, this is the, uh, the one that you thought would be alright for them. Ooh, hello, you loonies in Radio Land. Dr. Frog here to tell you about the new edition of X-Ray magazine. It's out now and it's only £3.50. If you've not heard of it, it's a great music magazine. And you get a free CD featuring bands like Placebo, they wear makeup, but leave them alone. Gold Chain, Smog, OK Go, The Donners, and all great bands that you'll, you'll love to- Froggy here, hello. Hi! Ribbit, ribbit, Froggy says, buy it. <laughs> oh, well. So then, <laughs> he says that's it. He's got your money's Dr. Frog's still on there. <laughs> he's, he's still passing. I said that isn't gonna go out. They're not gonna be happy with that. He said you've had your money's worth, I'm going. Yeah. So I'm left with that. <laughs> I then have to get the bosses in. And because I've let him go, in a way it's my responsibility. Yeah. So I've, I've obviously thought I've got what I need. <laughs> I had to play them to the MD what did and, he say? and justify, well, I was sort of thinking if I laugh, he might go, well, I don't get it, but he finds it funny. Oh, brilliant. Well done. So I was laughing, he was sort of thinking, you know. Excellent. Is that it? Brilliant. When do they go out then? Uh, I think, I think one of them's going out at the moment. Excellent. I think the first one's going out. Brilliant. Well, let's, uh, let's play a great track then. Is it Dr. Frog? <laughs> well, I'd like to see Dr. Frog feature maybe on our show more often. <laughs> okay. Well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but yeah. I, uh, long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And, uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the, uh, the hottest, uh, you know, events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio, God. you can imagine, did not know oh, what hit it. Oh, God almighty. Imagine, were you like, uh, Paul the Party Animal Parker? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God, what did you do? Oh. What did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time I had diarrhoea. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's the, that was a hell of a, that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did, uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV. Oh, And right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually, I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's flat that they'd let out. <laughs> and, uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And, of course, when they changed the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, so I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but they looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12-hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. Mm. And the worst bit is that, that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And um and so of course then on the whole flight uh, as we're landing, I'm just I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could. I mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my in my bag in my hold all just in case it all went. Oh, and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Of course, you know, you know when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank. Go yeah. away! Yeah. Thinking, you know, just really, you know, with, your, with, your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who kind of even passes, you're, oh, you just, you're, oh. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time got into the t and it all went off. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But th that was, that was not anything compared with the first couple of days, because the first day I was, I went for a walk, and of course Ipanema Beach is famous, I mean obviously The Girl from Ipanema, one of the most famous songs in the world, and it's, Ipanema Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there, and it is extraordinary, I mean the people are remarkable. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry, <laughs> I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm on the beach, because I, I was chopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, are we in the, in the sea? Just think of him on this beach, right, with diarrhea! Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are... And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well, this is the thing, as I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> yeah, well, I was desperate for a toilet, and I, and I was shopping, and I, so I thought, well, I'm never going to make it back to the hotel. 
up. So I'll go in the in the sea and have a little swim and, and just swim. as in straining, just like a cat in well, a litter tray. You see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival! Well, <laughs> and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything you know. So I so no, I no, I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, <laughs> take your trunks down. <laughs> Don't fish well, in the sea. Well, yeah, well, fine, yeah. Fine, okay. Right, so fish, fish do it. So, so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to, trying to urinate, and I, so I kneeled, because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to, to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my, my back was to it, everyone, so no one saw. So, um. So I, so I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is. I've never seen it. Well, for me, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest well, of it. I you know. Wish. Um, this all, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying. I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So one minute they're calm, and the next minute they're crazy like a tsunami. So um, so suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, and flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around, I can't see anything, because of course I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to go in the sea. Because oh I didn't want, I didn't want to lose them. Oh God! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wa genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but what with I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man waving <laughs> with his cock out. And, and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running? Would you have come running in to help me? Not with your knob out. What? So even though I was screaming and shouting? I'd have thrown a rope or something, or, or a dinghy or something. I'd have th I, there's no way I'd have... Uh, I, oh, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. When, <laughs> if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. <laughs> so you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I gonna... can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. I'll tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about... Well, I, I mentioned... Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> ask for them to well, be referred to a as? A mini bus with <laughs> exactly. uh, Life is a box of chocolates yeah, exactly. dot com. Well, oh. Forrest Gump types. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people? It these was, pe yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Difficulties, yeah, 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 and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so, he got five of them in the, uh, in the cab. Yeah. And they had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff, but there was one who was just causing loads of trouble and they couldn't control him. Oh and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's, it's not good for them. It stresses them out and, and you could end up with a bit Thanks, of- Thanks, Dr. Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now, and he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool, and, um, he took the one out that was causing problems and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh, I'm sorry, I apologise. Oh, he did what? God. Oh, God. He did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin, he was having a good time, he thought it was one of the rides. Could you stop saying it? <laughs> Him. Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, was and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked <laughs> him up, and it, he was fine. He had a good. What time. he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. <laughs> one, one what he tied him up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, 
and like he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that so he was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but anyway that's- I didn't really want to talk about it, he just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you- did, do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> because he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away and um, he took him there there was no problem about about ten old women in a in a minibus one of them was causing trouble <laughs> 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 so he pulled over it. <laughs> no right so he took him there uh, everything's fine he dropped him off they had a lovely night yeah. right they had a lovely night won a bit of cash coming back it's a bit of a late night. And they all started moaning at him, going, I want to be dropped off here, take me there, I want to be dropped off first, I've got to get up early, blah, blah, you know, my husband's expecting me, I'm already late, take me here first, take me there. And he just pulled up, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, said, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis, <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking them home in the minibus, and he got the sack. Well, it's a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and like solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, don't you? Yeah, so he acts like a madman. <laughs> <laughs> now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according to yeah. the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He's sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that's- is that- is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Carl, man moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited, that they bred a man moth. What is- what is this? Yeah, it's- it's a human being that- that hides in your wardrobe and eats the entire jacket in a day. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths! Mammoth! The big hairy cow from mammoth? the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that then? <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth. A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we'd if we'd have never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah. You know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we mean. things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head, and his head was in the basket, and he went, count how many times I blink. Is it, I, is, Carl, Carl is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. Don't, should we well, speak slower? When we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No, go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do you think that's good to bring, bring back, back prehistoric animals? These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'd probably be offended, to be honest, Carl. They'd probably be offended. No, but, I'm sa but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, yeah. could it? Well, really? but, but, but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park because they thought it wouldn't go wrong, they thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it, <laughs> but with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna- It's not a concern for you. Would you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love- I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sit in, like, Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um... Yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I want to have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my uh, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so just for a second, what, what, as, the, as the words man-moth, came into your head. How excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what, what was his face? What did it look like? <laughs> just, he just was like a bit like, a bit, bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been, he'd been, he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep. Yeah, yeah, he'd woken up. He just, he just went in for to have a goiter removed yeah. and they said, we've replaced your goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just, Is that alright, Mr Jenkins? So he had the head of a, a little, was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you, if you uh, went into hospital, and they'd done something. What, what's the worst thing they do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. 
right? You wake up and you've got duck's feet, uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff? And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, I the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Got some post delivered to me today. It was... <laughs> oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you are one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about you, this? Do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, ju choosing the, you know, Eye colour. Well, this or, is the, or, this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like in the future if listen. they're being you know genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? Fine, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Yeah. But um. I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when w when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So like a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can tattoos. Clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get a right. horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have Is there using horse in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of le <laughs> Right. I'm, um, oh, that's great. I Big, Big Jake, <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> for it. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or. <laughs> 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 Where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. Alright then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> oh, Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? Mum, open the door! I can't stop! <laughs> I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I'm, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse, No, I exactly. don't think- that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so wise to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not door. buying it; it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah, uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> What? And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? 
Wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this because the story's going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track. Deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. <laughs> right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that line down. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Louis de Velvet Underground and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So, we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and, uh, we got on to, uh, um, We got on to, to genetically, genetically modified babies, but and somehow- And then Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got on to, he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was- Cause you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you- But well, what I'm on. trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand- What, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, I know this respect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them? They kept it in the house. Did they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse no, in No, what there. happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making over weight. So, <laughs> you're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they wouldn't have survived. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, cause I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Cause it's a bit rough. So, as I went The horse went, thank god for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating. Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> <laughs> telly and that No, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London Come the other day. 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know? Daddy, well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. Oh, for a start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family, who's a bit- what were we talking about? It was about cloning- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve- Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So, then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right, this, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. 
And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but he used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, he used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> 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 and chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. What a life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. Ooh. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. Steve, you're out of the room there. Mm -hmm. Carl took a phone call from someone. Okay. He's found a cellmate. Right. Not a soulmate. I think one day they will be cellmates. Yes. Because. He's just like, he loves everything Carl loves, and he was telling Carl stuff, and Carl's face was lighting up. Yeah. He's told him of two Russian kids in the circus. They're covered in air, and their mum tells them off because they're covered in fleas. <laughs> Carl said, see, that annoys me again, innit? They just, they do something else. And the bloke went, yeah, they should just make money out of being hairy. <laughs> and Carl went, exactly. <laughs> and, the, and he said, have you heard of the, the three-legged juggler? And the bloke went, no, what's that? He went, that annoys me as well. Because he thinks they shouldn't have done juggling, they should have done football. <laughs> do you know what I mean, though, Steve? What do you mean something... a three-legged juggler? What are you talking about? He's a about? famous three-legged juggler. Oh, he's mega famous! <laughs> it's like the Beckham of wherever he's from. But the other day I was looking in, I don't know, Bizarre magazine or something, right? And there was this fella who, uh, he had no arms. Uh, so you saw a picture of him, his job was fixing watches, did it with his feet. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's just, why pick the most hardest job to do when you haven't got any hands? Crush, <laughs> crush grapes. <laughs> or... Do you know what I mean? Uh, that, that annoys me. Oh, crush grapes! Imagine him being told that and that he comes into the, uh, the careers advisory where he goes, Now, uh, what do you want to do, Hargreaves? Uh, make watches? Right, take a look at your arms. Crush grapes, mate. <laughs> Sorry, you're a grape crusher. Next. Brilliant. Brilliant. I would love you to be a career advisory in some sort of clinic. It would be brilliant. I love the fact that it annoys you. Here's a man, he's got no arms, he has learned to fix watches with his feet. Yeah. An incredible talent, an incredible skill, he's utilising that brilliantly. That's annoying to you. You are angered by it. I I'm only being honest. Now you be honest, right? Your watch is broke, who would you go to? You're in a rush, you need it fixing in a rush. <laughs> now, you need some fresh wine. <laughs> <laughs> Be oh, honest. Oh, you're but amazing. what's this thing that you've been talking about this video? Freaks. Right. It was a thing that was banned for like 50 years. Uh, I think it's been taken off again, but I don't know why if it's just been deleted. Right? I, I, it's a quest. If anyone out there has got a copy of Freaks on DVD or VHS, can Carl borrow it, please? I just, I, I mean, I almost want to set up a camera to see him watching it. Um, it's absolutely real. They use people in the circus of the time. I think it's the twenties or thirties of the Depression. And there's there's people. There's coneheads. There's a bearded lady. All genuine. There's a bloke they call the human slug who's got no arms and no legs, Carl, and he's just there, and he rolls a cigarette and lights it with his mouth. I think I've seen his brother, <laughs> who isn't called the human slug. Is called. The pillow. <laughs> <laughs> right. How does he make a living? He, um... Does anyone want to meet Carl for money? Do you know what I mean? Like that, the annoying thing was, right, there was a picture of him, I was gonna put it on I our... I think I've seen his brother! I've, uh, on our website we've, we put things up like this, right? If you go to ricky.gervais at xfn.co.uk forward slash... What? You put things like that on my website? It's nothing to do with me. I want people to know that that website is not kept or looked at by me. So, I don't, what have you put on there? There's a fella on there who's known as the Pillow, <laughs> and he's God. um. You see, I, I get a bit worried with things like this because we're not sort of having a, having a go or anything. It's just things that fascinate, fascinate you. Me. Yeah. 
And, um, yeah, it's a guy, I, it might, it might be the same sort of thing. What's your one I called? bet you used to stare at people with goiters, didn't you, when you were little, in Tesco's? Well, just go, go to xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, it is. What's the worst thing you've ever seen on, like, a human face? You know, you know what it is and what I don't want to talk about it. I can't remember. No. Have you told me? Yeah. What is it? But go, it's not go the to, elephant lady. Go to the, to... yeah. Is it the elephant lady? You talked about that, I know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it again. Go to the website and see the human pillow. <laughs> Why is I... he a human pillow? That's what annoyed me. I thought he was more of a draft excluder. <laughs> Things are flying here at XFM. We, we, people have called in. There is a video of freaks on the way. Carl's going to see that within the week. That's exciting. That's exciting for me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> about our education of Carl. We started off trying to teach him about science and history, and now we just find that he likes pictures of every Chinese kids and Who women. Doesn't? Who doesn't? No, true. You've got a theory about pictures of freaks, haven't you? Uh. It... <laughs> You see, you see, you always bring things up that I don't want to talk about, because I'm, I'm really worried that people, if you've just tuned in for the first time, it's the first time you hear it, and we're talking about airy Chinese kids, yeah. talking about the human world. Carl, Carl, listen, people don't think that you're taking the piss out of those people, they lump you in with them. They, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, they think that you're a freak of nature, so you can say anything you want. Do you know what I mean? Because it's honest, it's from the heart, it's genuine, so... Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, but Suzanne was saying last night that I, I've just, I've got a heart of stone, or whatever it is. Why? Because, because I wasn't crying at Comic Relief. And all I, all I was to say to her, get out Elephant Man, let me watch that for 30 minutes, I'll be crying my heart out. Why? Why do you care about that but not Because it's, start? that, that is more real, isn't it, right? Think of John Merrick. Sorry, sorry. What, the film starring John Hurt is more real than footage of starving people in Africa. No, but what I'm saying is, think about... See, this is why I didn't want to bring it up, because people are gonna <laughs> just say... Well, you're allowed to cry at what you like. You can't, people can't have you for not yeah, crying imagine, at someone and crying imagine, at someone else. Imagine that, like, if you've seen the film, you know, his head's all, you know, messed up and that. Yeah. He's getting picked on all the time. Yeah. It's By Michael just, Elphick, I remember. Yeah. yeah. It's just really, really sad. Whereas, you know, we try to help out But yeah, give him a bun people. and he forgets it. Do you know what I mean, though? He never forgets, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway. Oh, God. We're giving away stuff again. Yeah. Um, time Tell me a theory about p p p freaks who have their picture taken. No, I'd, I'd leave it. No, can I tell we'll you? We'll do it next week. Though. Can I tell you what this Go is? Go on quickly. What is it? Right, when he sees a little picture, like in his books, he's got. He carries round those oh, yeah, yeah, things, yeah. right? And there's like a, a fella with a little head with some like uh, uh, able-bodied people. He goes, the only reason he must know the only reason they got to take that picture, right, was so they could show their mates, say, look at me, <laughs> the little fella with a little head. <laughs> that's what. That's his theory. Yeah. So every picture of a of a of a freak, they're right, being exposed. Steve, let me describe the picture to you. <laughs> this this little fellow with a little head, right, playing on the piano. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> All his family stood around and mates and that. When have you ever seen a picture of someone playing the piano and everybody wants to be in on it? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen. Maybe it was one of those kind of Christmas <laughs> cards. They it sent wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. You could see one of them was like in a rush to go away. He was probably uh, planned to go out, and he was like, "But well, they were taking a picture. It's oh, I'll be in it then before I go out." And it was all. He's out of order. Yeah. If you say, if, do you know the one I mean? I do mean? know the one you mean, yeah. Really well, what about the one in the, uh, when you went down to Cornwall, in that little we'll pub? We'll talk about that next week. What, what, do you want to get on, do you? Yeah. Yes, We've Dave. also got a new feature, Cheeky Freak of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done Cheeky Freak of the Week. That's a new feature, <laughs> yeah, isn't no, it? That's a new feature. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Let's do Cheeky Freak of the Week. What is the cheekiest freak of the week? So I, I make, I'm just gonna apologise now, I'll just add, Freaks, sorry to freaks. Okay, yeah, right, go ahead. Well, we've, I mean, we've sort, I say it's a new feature, but we've sort of touched on it in the past with- We always talk about freaks. Hairy Chinese kid. Yeah. Um, we've had, um, the pillow man. Yeah. Are you called um, a draft excluder? Just making up that with you, Rick, on Yeah. This? People yeah. without arms and legs. <laughs> mm. But at least, you see, the pillow man, what do you picture? Because I was saying to Ricky in the week, right, I I'm a great fan of the elephant man. Mm. That's his, you know, that's his favourite 
freak. Oh, the of all man. the freaks, that's Do you know why he said, do you know why he said, he said, he said, cause you, you get what you pay for. When someone says the elephant man, it, you get what it says on the tin. Right. You know you're gonna get it. Yeah. Do you ma do you imagine, Steve, if you had a mate and, and you said, where are you going? He said, I'm gonna go and see me mate. And you go, which mate? And he said, the elephant man. Yeah. Straight away, <laughs> you haven't even met him, but you know what he's gonna look like. Yes. Right? That's what I like about that. Airy Chinese kid. Yeah, you know what you're gonna get. <laughs> Pillow man. Pillow man. Yeah, not so good. What, what does that mean? It yeah. could be one of those big fat things on that show, couldn't it? A big pillow, like a. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had, you know that big thing about the, the fat people in feeders, they were getting up to like 60 stone and that. Big and there's um, there's a thing called um, fat admirers that just fancy fat women, right? And uh. Are you writing that down? Yeah, sorry, fat <laughs> um, And they had blow up versions. It looked like a bouncy castle. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You could blow, you'd be knackered when you blew that up. Yeah, you just wouldn't want to go forget it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, well, I There's people being cruel as well, isn't it? Because after watching the programme on Channel 4 about the, you know, the, um, fat people and fellas who like them and stuff, uh, there was a story on one of the news websites about some fella in Germany, right, who was a big fella, um, must have been about 50 stone, and he fell over, right, and I think he hurt his ankle or something. And Timber. they sent firemen instead of like an ambulance. Yeah. So straight away they're having a bit of a laugh. They're not. No, they've got winching gear. Well, they didn't know. They didn't have winching gear. They had to use the hose pipes what? to carry him out. I think it was Anna Nova, that news website. They had to use the hose pipes. So they made like a bed using the hose pipes. Oh yeah. And had to carry him out on that. And then they had to sort of get him into a special truck. They said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do the same when they got to the hospital. Oof. I mean, that's a bit. That's mad, isn't it? They shouldn't do that. Although, Carl, I'm loving that story. I'm just worried that we're not going to be able to fit in Cheeky Freak of the Week. What's the Cheeky Freak of the Week? week? Alright, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Um, something I found on the net. Yeah. A fella who had 27 toes and fingers. In a jar? <laughs> no, still on him. And proper ones as well, not like little stumps and that. Proper, fully formed. Fingers, he was had he, like. Was he a pianist? <laughs> Close up magician. I don't know what he did, he just said that. that he was Cat's cradle professional. Did he, he ever work on finger bobs? <laughs> 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 he was saying in the week. <laughs> For the crowd scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now gonna do Braveheart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he said about the elephant man. He, went, he said, I wanna do a thing right with freaks, whether it's good and bad. He went, What you said? The, the the pro about him is, what about the fellow with loads of fingers? Or no, the elephant man. Well, he he, he said the bad thing is he stretches his jumpers <laughs> 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 when he puts them on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's the good thing? <gasps> sort of, he never gets up and goes, "Oh, my hair's a bit of a mess today." <laughs> <laughs> no, he's always having another bad face day. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to complain about this head and shoulders. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. So that's freaky. Didn't freaky. you see an elephant woman in uh, Manchester? Yeah, yeah, leave that. What do you mean, leave it? No, because it, it, it is sad. Oh, no, it's sad, but, but I mean, uh, I don't know what yeah. my next sentence is. <laughs> so yeah, people that think. should be the end. <laughs> <laughs> Did I don't it need to say anymore, people will know what she looks like. It's a good name for her. <laughs> Did she like buns? <laughs> oh dear! It, it was when me, uh, it's when my dad was a taxi driver, and he used to sit in the front. Yeah. And she used to get a lot of taxis. Yeah. And uh, and he only charged you half price, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was a good guy. Well, the bad thing is as well with people like that, you don't want to offend them because they never forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh go! Right. But, uh, go Pilkington. I, I was in. I was sat in the front of the cab, and my dad goes, "Right, we're going to go and pick the, uh, you know the." I can't even tell you the name, these guys, it's just evil. Right. What do you mean? No, leave it, so she's got- No, no, no! No, Carl, please. tell me what he said! No. You've already stitched him up with Stephen things from Little Welsh I fellas. Don't care. Right, what did he call her? I, 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 Steve, back no. up on this, I really Carl, don't no, want to be Carl, our opinion of him is already pretty low. Look, tell me what he said. No, it's not, I'm scared of what my dad gets, it's the person who's got- the She's thing not listening, is she? Well, her headphones wouldn't fit on her head. <laughs> tell me what he called her! I don't want to. Tell me what he called her, Carl. I'm getting angry, man. Tell me what he called her. No, I'll leave that. Honestly, tell me what he- It doesn't matter. Tell me what he called her! 
Carl, just I'm gonna Steve, go. Uh, uh, seriously, I want to right, know what he called uh, her. Uh, right, you're not gonna stop this show. We're not doing the next show until you tell me what he called her. What did your father call the elephant head woman? Tell me. Spodad. <laughs> <laughs> how, how old were you? I don't know, about nine. Did you so, laugh? Did, so did you expect to see a potato with a dress? He did sort of, again, it's a good name, do you know what I mean? They had an idea of what it was gonna be about and he said, do you wanna stay in the car, I'll take you on because you can't- You've just heads, you've got lovely eyes. Can't. <laughs> Carl, just remembered, we've got Cheeky Freak of the Week to fit in. Oh, I don't know what to do. Um, what's your Cheeky Freak of the Week, quickly? Just throw that away. Right, well, it's just like, you know, we look at, we look at Cheeky Freaks. Uh, Is this show offensive in any way to some people, do you think? Ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> got any buns? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the elephant man. Go on. Right, well, it's a bit of a problem for you, this one, Steve, right? I'm chucking it forward to you. Remember the, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week that we were talking about? Uh, that- that illness where people age quicker. Mm. The five-year-old girl that was older than her mum, mm. and he said to you, w what, if you ran off like you wouldn't serve her fags and beer, and you went, yeah. no, he went, why not? And you went, cos it's a five-year-old. Yeah. Right? He went, oh, she's got enough problems, give her some fags. <laughs> you remember that, <laughs> don't yeah, you? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, right. So, another dilemma for you, right? Picture this, you're running a restaurant, right? Door goes, right? Uh, few people. Most of them look normal. You notice the woman at the back, <laughs> crawling on all fours. Mm -hmm. Uh, top half is woman, right? This is real. Yes. This isn't like a comic or anything. This is on, yeah, this is on the internet. Yeah, I've seen it. They're called dog people and her legs just come straight down. They're like little, there's been legs at the back and so they walk on all fours because it's easier. Dog people, right? Yeah. You Not dog people. They're human beings right. with yeah. deformed back legs so they walk. It's easier for them to get around like that because they can't. They can't stand up because they can't stabilise and also it comes straight out of their hips. Right. right. So you're running a restaurant, it's a busy night, you haven't really got time for any hassle. She comes in. Uh-huh. Would you serve her? Um, the premise being what? That he doesn't serve dogs? Because the restaurants don't allow animals in. Right! She- Right. Right. So it's a dilemma. It's not a dilemma, right. she's not a dog. She's a human being. Yeah, with I, put the form. Some, I put, you know, a plate of meatballs <laughs> on the floor <laughs> and she tucks in. And a little glass of, you know, a little bowl of wine <laughs> <laughs> next to it. Ah, <laughs> uh, it turns round. There's the woman older than. Uh, Get away from that plan. <laughs> have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Do you want one? Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Let, I think we should have a jingle for this. Okay. I've got. I've. Uh, yeah. I've got a jingle. It's very similar to chimpanzee. Ch chimpanzee. That. Yeah. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. Oh, cheeky freak of the week. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent. So, Chicken okay. Freak of the Week, you've spotted a this freak is this where, week. This is where somewhat, I think, offensively, you pick on someone who's, who's not like other people and say it's your favourite freak of that week. Yeah, I remember we had the woman whose uh, legs look like the hind legs of a dog. Um, we've had the little fella with the aging disease, with the little Ed playing the piano. That's, that was your favourite. I think that's your probably freak of the year, isn't it? It's a pretty so, good one. So, wh wh what, wh what's, what's this? Is it a man um, with a, a horrendous injury, or is it a congenital, um, birth defect, or what? Yeah, but you put it like that, and now it sounds like I'm being tight. It sounds like I'm being out of order. But I'm just giving him a mention. <laughs> <laughs> just giving him a big shout out. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's quite a lot going on in the freak world. <laughs> um, <laughs> Always is. You've, what, you've been visiting hospitals the last week, have you, when we were away? No, there was a, there was a thing on the, on a website. This isn't even the one that I've picked, so. So this is just a bonus. This is a bonus freak. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Uh, this is a free freak. It's a fella called the Lobster Man. <laughs> the Lobster Man, of course. <laughs> Again, good name, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what are you gonna get? Some, some succulent <laughs> meat. I like the idea with... that, I like the idea that the vicar on the christening suggested that. <laughs> I know you want to call him Mark. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Look at his hands. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Mark Michael uh, Webster. Right. Um. Right. Uh, yeah. Have, have you thought about a nickname? Not really. No. Have you? No. Have you looked at his hands? Yeah. It, we, we don't want to talk about that because. Do you know they look a little bit like lobsters? Well, yeah, but it's quite deformed. It's a, like you know we can't suggest lobster man. <laughs> That's terrible, Vicar. <laughs> that is terrible, Vicar. We're- Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Yeah. We're gonna go see.
This is what the sort of feature you come up with, Carl. So, Lobster Man. There's probably people listening now with, you know, lobster feet. Right. Lobster hands. So, um... Squid Boy. <laughs> so, Lobster Man, what does, uh, what does Lobster Man do? Does he uh, fight crime? Not that much. Okay. Apparently he got into a bit of trouble. He was in a restaurant and, uh, this was years ago, by the way. And someone picked him to eat him. No, so <laughs> the, apparently the waiter, uh, said, oh, you shouldn't be sat here, you should be in my, my pan or something. Oh dear. And it, uh, they had a fight, got out of hand. Yeah. Uh, got out of claw. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so that, that was- What do you mean they had a fight? What did, what, what, I mean, what did a, he do? A waiter took the mickey out of someone yeah. with- no, no, can I just make clear, I'm assuming it's his hands look a bit like those of a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, well they're, it's fused, so it's just like two big fingers. They're right. fused, I assume, probably in the womb, and they're just like, instead of like having yeah, five yeah, digits, yeah. they're fused in it. But it, I mean, he can pick stuff up, can't he? Yeah. What does he pick up? He mainly eats crabs and jellyfish, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was having a fight with the waiter, he, he snipped off his nose. <laughs> Right, so anyway, he just he just held on to the waiter's bib. Yeah, and the exactly, waiter was yeah. screaming, "Go and get him off me!" Yeah. So yeah. anyway, does he eat other lobsters? Does he? <laughs> does he think he would eat lobster? <laughs> or is it kind of? <laughs> Dick, uh, would he feel bad about eating lobster? Right. The, the little cheek of the freak that we've gone for, anyway. <laughs> the what? The little uh, freak of the week. Yeah. Cheeky freak of the week. Mm. We've gone for um, this Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in. Uh, you can't have a Siamese lad, can you? All right. Yeah. This Siamese twins, uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date, blimey, first time ever. Yeah. Um, and all it was, he was, he was doing all right for himself, he, he used to go on the, like, those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right then, all right. They? They, they did this circus show, right? Yeah. And, uh, everything's going well. They, they you know, they're, they're selling out the tents and stuff, people coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing all right for himself. Yeah. Right? Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think the Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. Well, there is, there's, there's, there's two people, man. they're conjoined. No, 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 but it depends, doesn't it? The one that I showed you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was, that was a, a, a was a, f uh, a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send potato chips to restaurants and say, doesn't it look like Norman Cook? Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> we'll bend this feature. No! <laughs> No, it's, it's just- They're right. two people. They're two people. Conjoined twins. Yeah. Right, so these- It's just I don't- they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's- yeah, they were doing all right and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what?! How is that- how is that Cheeky Freak of the Week? Just, beca just because it got my interest and I kind of thought, why didn't it just look both ways? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued to know Why you... wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> I'm intrigued oh. to know how you, uh, how you get run over and what was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses and that, aren't it? Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. Um, like I say, it's been a struggle, we'll, we'll... We'll do that. We'll do, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week, do you wanna- Oh, definitely. Should we do Cheeky Freak, we of, the cheeky freak of the Week? I can't wait. I've, I'll always do these. I'd start off with these. Alright, well let's have the jingle for Cheeky Freak of the Week. Oh, no. Do you remember it? No. I remember it. Oh. Uh, oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Brilliant. Something like that? <laughs> I want someone because that was slightly uh, half hour. Oh, Cheeky Freak of the Week. Excellent. Right. This, uh, we're going back again. Yeah, 17th right. century? Uh, well, it was, it was 1829, right? Oh, I'm impressed. Um, yeah. Now, the problem is with Cheeky Freak of the Week. Um, Not so much the week, is it, if you're going back to 1829? Well... Not even of the century. You haven't even done Cheeky Freak of the Century. Mm. There's... What's the problem with Cheeky Freak of the Week? Just because... <laughs> Other than the sort of moral implications. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. Well, last week, it was a fellow with two heads. Yeah. Mm. We've done Siamese Twins, it's Siamese Twins again. Oh, no, Simon it was twins Siamese again. Twins. It wasn't a fellow with two heads last week, it was Siamese Twins, conjoined twins, sorry. They're two different people, mm. this is what I'm telling you. But this is the problem, they're gonna crop up quite a lot just because they've got double a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? 
<laughs> oh, um, please don't write in and complain. He knows not what he does. You understand, don't you? Uh, Carl will actually feature one day in this section. Yeah. So, right, go right, on, well, Carl. We're going back to uh, 1829. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, All the way back there to 1829. The retro conjoined twin link. <laughs> uh, a couple of guys set up a business. Uh, they were called Chang and Ang. Oh, they're the first. That's why they were called Chim Siamese twins, because they were, weren't... weren't wasn't that what it was based on, those two, Chang and Ang? Was it? The original, yeah, that's why they're, they're called Siamese twins, because I think they were Siamese. So these are the first ones? Uh, well, they not the first ones, but they're first the ones one. that got to fame, I think, and why people started calling them, the people started calling them conjoined twins, Siamese twins. I think uh, I'm right there. Anyway. Good. Um, well, the, the sort of, uh, set up business, sort of going around, uh, the US. Well, both of them. And Europe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what they used to do, people were amazed by it anyway. But yeah. People wanted to know how they get through life doing certain things. That that you, that you think about, when you think about Siamese twins, you think about, you know, how do you get through a day like that? Yeah. Right? Um, and the thing that cropped up the most with people was how they take a bath. So they used to go on tour around the US and Europe and uh, sit in a bath. <coughs> Have a have a wash on that. And that. Uh, Did they ever wash each other by mistake? They go oh 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 oh, that ends there, that ends there. Like those things in supermarkets, they put <laughs> yes. one of those down. We go oh 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 oh. You, you put that there. What do you mean? You know the things on the conveyor belt, the little the little dividers. Yeah, they but, wind me up those dividers. I sorry, I was just a complete tangent, but I. For some reason, it's my own psychosis, but I get so annoyed if I'm in a supermarket, I've got my shop and I'm just about to get served, and you can always see there are certain people who stand behind you getting edgy, itchy, worried that I'm not going to put the divider down to separate my shopping from theirs. It's like they're terrified that I'm somehow going to deliberately pay for their Sneaking shopping. Sneaking their onion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't get an onion, I'll have that. Mm. And it's just, but what annoys me is it's not so much that, obviously it's a practical thing, mm. it's the fact that they get a little bit edgy. You can actually see, certainly kind of, um, dare I say it, a certain breed of woman and a certain breed of fella will uh, just get a little bit itchy, a little bit edgy, and they just they just look at you, you can just see them sweating, especially if they can't read. I just lean over and do it myself. Well, I know, but it's the thing is that it's like they almost feel that they uh, they ought to wait for me to do it, as though somehow it's my obligation. And it just annoys, for some reason, it's I know it's ludicrous, but it really annoys me. And I actually deliberately don't put the divider down just to see them sweat. I like the way that they're, they're, they're actually quite well made. There's some that are brass with like a yeah. felt bottom. Yeah. Like you really care. Like a, a twig would do, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? But so uh, I just leave a slight gap. And then yeah. when it gets to the, when the woman's putting it through the, the tail or the guy, I just say, that's my stuff. Do you ever look at the people shopping and go, oh, I should have got that? Often. Oh, yeah. That's annoying. It's, I'll tell you what it is, it's the same thing, and again, it's my psychosis. When people, if you're on a bus or a train, and we're pulling into the stop, but there's a good, you know, kind of 35 seconds before we're actually going to come to a halt, they sure. leap up they get and they're first, straight yeah. by the door. Yeah. Like, but it's this fear that something, they're going to miss out. Oh my god, what if I fell over yeah, now and broke my ankle, I'd never get be, out. To be fair, I've never had that, that, um, commuter's worry, I've never commuted. But every second counts, doesn't it? Because you miss a train, it can make a difference of half an hour. So that's why commuters literally run to but, get their connections. But the thing is that with a bus, yeah. um, you, you know, there's often there'll be people who are sat right next to the exit will get up and stand up for a while, waiting to get out. It just, again, I'll I'm not saying what, it's not, it makes perfect what, sense when to them. You've got a it's my with, psychosis. They're going to be mowed down in the streets. Like, <laughs> they will just gonna, be a few You're going to be in a lovely Chrysler. Exactly. Yeah. Just, well, I will be going straight through a branch of Waitrose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> taking people out in the. In the <laughs> so in the we do not condone going through Waitrose in a Chrysler. In a car. Now, it's Chang and Ang, they're in the bath, they're washing their own bits, they've got one of those dividers, right? They go, well, that's, that's definitely yours. I marked mine. That's definitely mine. What? Don't wash that, Chang. I won't. I wouldn't hang. I wouldn't wash that. Right. So what? What are they doing? They're in the bath. Carry on with the story. Uh, that's about it, really. I mean, Jesus. that's that's the <laughs> the fact that people. So two people, two little Oriental fellas joined in the hip, had a bath. No, no, no. That's no. your story. No, they didn't have a bath. They sort of everybody. They must have done some sort of research, right? Who? Changarang. Right, and they said, well, what do people want to see? Isn't that basically City Roller's song? But it's an idea that people have queued up, they've paid the money, they're in a tent, they're going, well, I hear they're going to have a bath, they're going to have a bath. Mm. Two, two Siamese people are going to have a bath. How would they possibly do it? Well, I've heard they'd get into a bath. But that, uh, that's I what don't know they, what they, they wanted exciting. to see them nude and where, where the join was. No. More than uh, how do you get in the bath. 
I don't know. They just that's that's what they picked. They said, "What what would be good to see? What what, what you know? What do you want to see him do?" Having a bath. How would you get into trousers? Was there was well, this exactly? This is all part of it, isn't it? That's why they picked having a bath. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of it. Well, then, once we get dressed afterwards. Yeah. Who was the best out of Chang and Ang? Who was your favourite? Uh, they both look the same, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> There's a surprise. One was a short ginger woman. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, is there anything you you know what what would be better than having a bath for you and you'd seen them? What what would sort of make you go? Oh, I wonder. I one know. of them pulling and the other one going home alone. Yeah. Again, like look, look oh, she's definitely up for it. I'm taking her home. Go, oh, God, what am I going to do? Can I watch? Definitely not. Definitely not. Look, you go to bed. I want to. <laughs> I want to wine and dine her. But if they if they if he's got back to their place <laughs> and they're going at it hammer and tongs. But are you saying one of them? The Tongs were their cousins. <laughs> right. They lived. They lived miles away. Yeah. Um. <laughs> if one of them gets knackered, can the other one take over? <laughs> God. I think we play the, a record. That annoys me. What? what? That, that sort of being at it all night. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Let's put a song and I'll come back. What to do you it. mean? It's a weird I mean, thing it isn't to do. normal. It's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an example of a dream. <laughs> But I think what you're failing to grasp is not so much the mechanics of whether this is a dream, but that you cannot know the truth of what you're experiencing. You cannot know that this is reality. It's a question about reality. So How let's do we go know on what to that then. What, what reality is and, and what we like about reality. Robert Nozick did this thing that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible. You did exactly what you've always wanted. You became the person you wanted to be. You did the best things you could ever dream of doing, and you literally couldn't tell the difference. So it was your life, okay? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying. So what's happening when when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? In yeah. It, am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary, but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank, uh, and your one proviso was our munchies as good. <laughs> yeah. No, Absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic. You've got to yeah. pre-program your life. That's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah, when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them. You are the. You're the. It's the life you'd ever want to live, and yeah, you're a bit living it. That. A bit Sorry. A bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on. Why? Just. Um, I don't know. Because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best. Right. Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in. Because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day. But how long did that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't- you're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't know- you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. Well, you just have munchies every day and- Well, yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you- if you don't know you've got in this tank, if I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. And right. You're meant to be at work. And she goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Go, All right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any, any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that. 
Well, I was a bit suspicious, of, though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like. But I like the fact now you're even questioning you're not in the tank and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example, you wake up, there's the munch, it's sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you know, why aren't you at work? Oh, she goes to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You're just no, gonna have some munches for oh, breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, <laughs> yeah. let's have a nice roti, yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I gonna give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet, I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Yeah. Right, okay. So you have that scenario. You mm. go, right, where's my shorts? You get them on. You go out and have a wander. Case, you have a wander around <laughs> to know where everything is. The Car shop. Car park you did The once. shop. Uh, <laughs> you know, how close the beach is. Yeah. Is it busy? Yeah. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't, you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it, because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So anticipation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, innit, and looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay. Well, right. Can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea. Okay. You can design your perfect life. But I prefer not to well, know I'm doing it. No, you, you won't, won't know. Won't, but I you want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munches. What else? We've got, got munches, munches and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of, the, your ultimate life? I think I prefer- Hair? No, because then I'd know it's not real. No, you no, would you never know. know. Just, no, no, it just came know. back. Suzanne comes in one day and goes, why aren't you working? She goes, look, I, okay, I've left my job. Can we leave the, why am I at work? I'm always gonna be here, right? I've got a new tonic, right, from Boots. She pops it on your hair. Boop, baby gorilla. Yeah, I, d I, I don't like this idea of suddenly Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, I just think you need, you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right. Right. Uh, in a minute, you're gonna be injected in the head, you're gonna go to sleep, you're gonna be in a flow state, but you are gonna suddenly leave this office and it's gonna be a virtual world. You can do what you want. You can suddenly go, what was I hanging around with that bloke off the office for? I'm a, I'm a spy. You and you go to MI5 and they go, oh, thanks for coming in Pilkerton. Um, listen, uh, uh, Drosky, um, he's, he's coming from Russia and, um, he's got the- Bang! What do you do? What's your scenario? What do you do as a job? We've got munches, Suzanne's I, I never prefer, at work. I prefer what? to leave everything as it is. Brilliant. Go in right. it, go in it, but have everything the same so that I'm going, hang on a minute, has it actually happened? What are you talking about? No, you don't know about this. You don't know anything that's happened. No, because you've just said you're gonna you're gonna put me in the tank and you you asking questions as to what no. I want when I get in it. No, yeah, no, no, but no. you won't know you're in the but tank. Once you're in the once tank, you, you won't know. You'll have a new life, a life that you've designed. Yes, you'd you have different memories if you wanted. You could be five again, or you could be now, but you did, weren't born no, in Manchester. I prefer it to be the same with the same memories, but the difference is when I next get British gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes." <laughs> The so he'd is like fixed. to have a virtual life so his boiler's fixed! No, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no, no. still goes wrong in no, your dream but, but you it gets fixed. But you yes. don't even need a boiler! You could be the perfect temperature but all the time. But this isn't anymore. I don't, I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change But you in won't life. realise, it won't feel like change. Well it's changed already. You're saying the boiler's been fixed like that. <laughs> I prefer to, to still have that problem go, hang on a minute, is this different? Uh, Suzanne's still going to work. Right? That's very important <laughs> but, but then, you, to you don't want her around all day. But then, <laughs> but then, things happen Go that on. wouldn't have happened in this world. So then, right, okay, let's write that. Well, let's see the differences. What do you do? Because I've got to program this. So you, you've got the same job, all that. Are we still around? Uh, yeah, because it's part I'm, of the I'm going to ask you a question now. Do I still squeeze your head every time I see you, rest you to the ground, and wind you up, trying to stress you out, call you all hours? 
uh, do I still do all that? What am I like? You, you, you're still the same and you still mm. do that, but maybe one day I go, don't do that anymore because it does annoy me. And you go, okay. And then well, I've dealt with it. I've sorted that problem as opposed to this machine, this tank deciding. Right. I don't like the idea of this tank <laughs> right. making life good for me. Right. I want a few problems and if there's a problem I want to sort it. Okay. But- Well you've hit the nail on the head there. We're going to go back to this because it's fascinating, but Nozick concluded that no one would get into the tank because we'd rather have a real life with all its problems than a fake life. And I sort of think you've proved that by even getting into the tank with your provisos and scenarios. I mean, you've changed nothing except your boiler being fixed and me stop squeezing your head but now I'm and again. Be Which makes me think that you should have your boiler fixed. Mm. And then you will have the perfect life that you can imagine. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of, like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not- he's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, it's got not- Got a problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I've fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just say- well, No, one, let, let him me, speak let for- Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for- you, No, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole- Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yeah. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on, right. So it's better to have- you've got a problem hole in your head, right? Yeah. So you stuff in a problem problems. into the problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. <laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but good that's not true, is it? The problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right. 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 No, but that's Shut up, Ricky! Let uh, him explain! Now, now, Ricky, I'd say, his problems uh, are not even problems. Well, how big's his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> <laughs> right, but why- Shut what, up! Let what, him speak! But, but he's but just expanding on his idea, why but do you what is his rushing? problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little Skittles? Loads of problems. You- you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. It is! And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a It's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's, ball- No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me <laughs> ask- I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem ball <laughs> <laughs> down the problem tube into and the bounce, problem bounce gene. Into the problem gene. Into, right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got- has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just- Can ladies have a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls is my question to you. But and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's. Or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you could right. have you could you have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you went, it, if you, okay, no, listen, no, so, suppose I came to you and said, "Listen, well, um, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country he might have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it.'" And I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole. And he, and, and, and hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first, is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right, he'd say, right, take your problem genes off. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish, he would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball, would. wouldn't he? Well, well, he'd, well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger into the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay, so. So, Carl, go on then. I'll just get in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in a roundabout way, back to Cogito Ergo Sum, I think therefore I am. Descartes, pondering, how do I know this isn't a dream? Well, he concluded he doesn't. When he took it further to, how do I know I even exist? he quite rightly concluded that, well, if I'm even pondering this question, I must exist. Whatever I am, wherever I am, 
the fact that I'm questioning, introspecting, thinking at all, I think, therefore I am. Because I'm even thinking, at least I know one thing, that I exist. That's all he said, Carl. I don't understand why he had so much time on his hands to be worrying about this. At the what? end of the day, get on with it. You're not doing shit all, Carl! <laughs> so why are you so annoyed at other people who aren't doing anything? I you're just going out in the morning, you're staring at worms, at bugs, you're staring at the sky, you're wondering writing what books has on your head. You're making up, you're making up the books, that isn't researched. What do you mean, making it? What well, is it that you're the, the, doing? One, the, one of the chapters in your book about travel was Australia. I've never been there myself. Forget it then. Throw it away. No, because you can still have You make up on. stuff about a grub eating a biscuit. We're all the same. Well, I mean, what is that? That's not- that's not- but- I laughed. Yeah. So I, it, so I enjoyed that book. Listen, everyone like me who that bought book that book- That book is absolutely pointless. It is in my lavatory, every time I pop in there for a shit, yeah. just take it off the shelf, have a little read. Yeah, Great I'm, fun. I, and I'm down to about four pages, because <laughs> sometimes I forget to get bog well. But listen, that is a fun book to yeah, wipe your ass it's with. It's a great book to wipe me, with. But that book was good for me. I don't yeah. know if, if anyone enjoyed it, but I was emptying my worry hole. Is that another is that different to the problem hole you worry hole? It's next to it. <laughs> it's next Once to a problem ball is being processed <laughs> through the, the, the <laughs> hole, <laughs> it, is it dis, dis, is it deposited through the worry oh, hole? Christ. All I'm saying is you're right, I do watch a lot of insects and stuff. <laughs> and you never see them wasting time. They're always doing something, an ant's carrying something somewhere. Sometimes I watch it and it goes somewhere and comes back again, you think, does it know what it's doing? But at least it's trying. <laughs> what you- Now, if there was a- What big... is it doing, though? What is that ant doing? Work. It's doing- it's building a house, but or- what? what's the point? It's- everything it does is pointless. How can you say that? It's pointless, I'll it's tell just... you what, if- if there was a bigger sort of being looking over the world and they went, right, let's look at the human race, and- well, they'd look at the ants first and they go, right, they've got their hands full, they're carrying big stuff, they try to save time by carrying stuff that's way too big for them, really. <laughs> they could do that w between three of them, but they don't. They're all grafting hard. Then they go, right, hit the human button. They hit the human button, they watch the humans. The amount of people who are just sat about doing now, they read about Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen in London at 2am. So what? <laughs> what are we doing? I agree with you, but what are you doing? You see, the ant analogy, joking aside, I think there, you hit on the fact that Life is about working for what you get, and I'm right behind that. I am right behind that. Mm. I think that's uh, I, I, I think that's absolutely true. That's what I meant. What's dangerous is a, a boiling cap. kettle to an ant. At the end of the day, right? Yeah, but that's that's evil, isn't it? What? You know, I, I don't. I, I, I mean, you, you sometimes make out as if I'm an evil man. We had an ant problem mm. in the garden. Suzanne said we've got to get rid of these. Mm. And I said, well, it's a bit out of order, they are outside. And mm. she said, yeah, but there's, there's getting a lot of them. Mm. She went and popped the kettle on. Mm. I said, I can't handle this. I went in, right? <laughs> what, you didn't want to see the ants, man? That's sweet, you know, they're there. Yeah, they might be causing a problem, but I don't want to see this, this mess. Now, the thing is, she went out, she poured the hot water on it, I left it a few minutes. I went out, I had a cup of tea, I thought, it's a waste of electrical. Ooh, kills me. Yeah. <laughs> so I took my cup of tea out there, and I'm sat there, and then, I just saw one come back from wherever it had been. One ant. He looked devastated. <laughs> because that, that had been away. As far as that was concerned, it had been out to get a leaf or whatever. He came back, devastation. <laughs> and it's, it's that what, oh. that, that's, that's the thing, that he summed up death for me, that. The, the ants that are dead, they didn't know anything. Suddenly they were there, next minute, load of water, dead. It's the people who are still living in life that are the saddest, aren't they, after yeah. death? And that summed it up. What do you think? That you ant would have been better off being there when it happened. How could you tell the ant was- What do you think? So you saw him- I mean, they run around in circles anyway, don't they? But this was just kind of going, what's going on? And what did it- did it slow down when it got nearer the nest? Did it drop the leaf and then you see it run the last few inches? It, it just kind of got close and it was like a double take almost. <laughs> Almost like it got near the hole, and then it was like, hang on a minute, this can't be it because no one's around. And then it walked on, and it went, no, it is the hole. And it went back, and it, it just sort of stopped for a minute. Ah. Oh. And that, that for me, that's the sort of thoughts Descartes should have been having. What? Things that you can look at as a human uh, yeah. and appreciate it and understand it yeah. and go, yeah, that's true, that is like life. Instead of, oh, am I awake? Am I asleep or what? No. Well, you might as well be asleep because you're doing nothing else. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Descartes! Winehouse, Alan. Slammed. What do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it, it's after. It's like that holiday, when I what was on holiday. What do you mean? Holiday. You don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it, it's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like you, the holiday, I've just so been you enjoy away. the holiday. What? Let, I wanna hear it. You, you enjoy the holiday. You didn't enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is there stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone, they're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm gonna have fleas on me again. Yeah. So you remember all the good stuff. It's like an old person when they're dying, and they go, I'm having flashbacks. They don't say, I I'm remembering the time my shoes were too tight. What they do they say, say? They're having nice, they're going, oh, I they, loved the time with that. I was old. wearing flip flops. No, they, they oh. enjoy, they have flashbacks like of the what, nice then, holidays. What, what, what do you think you're going back? Holidays and that, you'll go, oh, the, 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 the lovely hot summer of 79. So you don't enjoy anything you enjoy while you're at doing the moment, it? At the moment, at the moment in time, it's I don't afterwards. understand that. That's, that, I mean, that is the oddest thing I've ever heard I about. I think there's actually a medical term for it. There's someone who's unable well, to, to, to enjoy, to have, to receive pleasure, to take pleasure. It's really weird, that. That is really weird. No, because you're busy doing the thing. So well, you haven't so got time to enjoy so it. So you, you can't enjoy something you're busy doing because you're busy doing it. You can't possibly enjoy it. Or you don't know if you're go going to enjoy it because it hasn't finished yet. Well, Carl, but listen, I know from the, uh, right, the moment. Right, say this. But listen, bungee I, jumping. I'd love right. to be able to do it. I bet you get a, a brilliant feeling as right. you're falling. Yeah. But I wouldn't be enjoying it because I'd be going, "Is the thing going to snap?" Right. Okay. Well, there's, there's, there, 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 that is, there is something about that. Extreme sports. There is a reason uh, why you do them. It, it is the after effect you enjoy because right. it's the fear. And then the, right. the the endorphins that rush to you, and you go, "My oh God, I survived! Isn't it brilliant?" That's right. a feeling of euphoria. So that's no. But, you're but, having a nice dinner, right? Okay. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah, I go, "Right, what am I going to do here?" Yeah. Right. Well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops. Great. I wonder how much they give you because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now I have the lamb chops. It comes with extra veg. <laughs> I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you enjoyed the lamb chops. But you enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed- you can only so- get packed so much enjoy- if you're enjoying all- all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but you- But you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and but, then it's, it's yeah, ruined. But I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour- Because when I read that they had a, a like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought I fancy a couple of them. Yeah, and, and then- And a chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant now. Yeah, but you haven't missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's What's not like you didn't enjoy the lamb and the veg. If you'd not enjoyed that, I can understand your point. But you had a lovely time eating the lamb and the veg. If someone, the if, if the bloke came here and said, you can have the buffet rolls if you eat this lamb you don't like, you go, oh. And you ate the lamb, you didn't like it, but now you're full, then you could whinge. You wish I hadn't have been forced to eat the lamb, I could have the little buffet rolls. That's, you know. I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> <in the garden. laughs> Right. Now, the, th the problem was, <laughs> I was on. enjoying it, but I thought, this is this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day night when I knew that it's the gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So I go, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! <laughs> but then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying but the, the lovely spiciness and the sausageness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you. Go on. Auntie Nora. Yeah. She's- she's guilty of this all the time. She right. loves a, a spicy sausage. Well she- she, yeah. you know, I've told you she prepares all her food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, she's got it all there. Now, she- what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm -hmm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks I got the mix just right there, the spices yeah. are good, 
The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Dunno. Just want the same. Now the weird thing there is it is the same. Mm. And in order that is the same. It's from the same bag, it's from the same pot. But yeah. she was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. he's never gonna live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it, I've experienced it. So you know, never someone says, one. Well, it depends. So do you have anything twice ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl, well, because no, aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or are all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that that shows not you only what, that is on Monday, yeah. what are you going to do on Thursday as well? Make, that, I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> food diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life <laughs> Exactly. Now, to go, right, oh, fucking hell, well, what else you say But then he's people. phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls that week. Well, it's just Just read her journal. No, he makes her happy, doesn't it, a call. She's got nothing else. Yeah, well, the curry doesn't. Did the curry make her happy? No, well, she did the first time. Loved it on Monday. She didn't like it on Thursday. No, the question is: Is it better to enjoy something once and not again than not at all? But you're an because you you're, you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing, I did the boxing, I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm, that yeah. is it, I think that's what but, it is. But, but that's what I'm saying though, I soon get bored. And that's, it's like how you enjoy, you know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than- Well that doesn't make sense, that goes yeah. totally counter to your argument. No, cause it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's so your favourite. No, so hold on, not. so if you had to have one munchie, I'll like, go okay, as a munchie mate. You no. go, I'm not gonna take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um But what is- Well no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all, don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie, have the first munchie, there but you I'm go. I'm gonna have one and I'm, I'm gonna get a taste for them and I'll, I'll probably want another. Well no, that, they're my munchies though, aren't they? No, I'll Do keep you them then, forget it. Well look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I prefer- I prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you enjoy okay, the last- Okay, then Why wait. do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry but not the second curry. But you know curry. it's the last one. Because it's- no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about twelve in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> <bastard. laughs> Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm yeah. getting. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them mm. last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, one. what, every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. It? Yeah. So, hold on though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly then? Not as often as you think. The oh, I don't know. <laughs> when it's time as I think, I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after, sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munches. And the same experience. You, you like the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations, is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr just from my own experience, working for summer does feel better because you've got a you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah, I genuinely believe that, and the older I get, the the, the more sure I am of that. That working hard is itself the reward, and I genuinely believe that. But where does it end? There's, it's no point having the struggle till you die, and never get any happiness. Um, so, w what's your balance? We don't have to go into philosophical terms here. What's your balance? What's your yin and yang of a, of a, of a good life? Uh, and, and by good life, I mean one that you've enjoyed or, or, or been satisfied with, and one that you have no regrets or guilt or shame, and a bit of pride. What are you asking me? I, I, yeah, I've got a bit of all that. Right. But you need you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. 
Yeah, but you can't- you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus. No, but, so. it, but it is, isn't it? There's- there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. With, with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what well, I'm saying metaphorically, is- Metaphorically, what- what's the- like, Yeah, well I'm- Actually I'm named what revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the revel you like is raisins? there. Go on. Well, well maybe, if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, hold on, wait a minute. So, what are you saying? Where's this metaphor? Are you saying suddenly all the bad things in life are pretty good, actually, if you just well, get used to them? Sometimes, sometimes out of bad comes some good. Go on. At the end of the day, the, uh, the revel mm. thing. What happens to the munch here? Oh, uh, well, again, with life, if you have too much munchies, you get sick of the munchies. So, move on, mix it up. What, what mixes it up? Bag of rebels. You've got a bit of everything in there. <laughs> right. So even the ones you don't like, you might like in the end, you'll go, do you know what? I was okay, wrong. lose, I was lose wrong the judging. analogy now. It actually just talking about rebels now <laughs> in life. <laughs> what about, what about, um, oh, what can I, what has he enjoyed before? <laughs> what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? Uh. When I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted, did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most oh of the kids were. Oh God, it's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they look at it. They go, "Can you fix it for me to go into space?" No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah. So that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in because. Whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One so thing, just one thing to choose. One thing, please. That my name was Brett. <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. <laughs> there, is no, there is no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you I mean, right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. No, that doesn't work either, because like then well, I, not, told, because I told okay. me I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot. They that. what? They went along with it. Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on, and they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> oh, it's amazing! So you've had that dream come true? Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you, things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> the controversial Cheeky Freak of the Week, where Carl, um, finds, uh, a, a human being with, um, some sort of, uh, congenital or, or uh, you know, um, imposed deformity, or you know, so uh, and we talk about that in a, in a wry way. Do you think that? Do you think that's big and clever? No, but that's that's just it. It's never about taking the Mickey out of someone, right? It's about it's to make you think. I'll tell you what isn't big and clever. How lucky you are! A dwarf right? with learning difficulties. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll explain it to you. <laughs> Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. He wants you. Brilliant. Yeah. So, Carl, off you go. Well, we, we, we're not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done quite a bit of that in the last 20 minutes, right? You've so we'll on that. Freaks, you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I don't, like I keep saying, don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right? Because we're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with with you, Steve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of, you can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. It, I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right? So, so you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve? No, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, that, think... they, by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. Or me? at least mentally handicapped. Now there's a term you don't hear very often. In, in 2003, there was a mentally handicapped. 
Oh, I don't know where to start. But I, I I'd mean, like to apologise for the Lady Diana stuff. Uh, <laughs> damn, <laughs> mentally handicapped. Um, and any inadvertent racism that we may have done with What's the actual term then? <laughs> <laughs> Is it retarded? <laughs> right, are we uh, having Cheeky Freak of the Week? Do you want to do it? What yeah. time have you got to show off? Could do with shooting off sort of soonish. Okay. To be honest. <laughs> this is not radio. <laughs> Have you ever heard that on a radio <laughs> show? Chris <laughs> Tarrant going, I can't show off a radio. <laughs> no, I, I, really, I, I, didn't, I couldn't get, get a later train. <laughs> I know! Get a, wouldn't you get a later train? There isn't, there isn't, there isn't a later train. So I couldn't get to Cornwall tonight if I had to. If I had to finish this show, I couldn't possibly get to Cornwall. Rubbish. Um, of course there's a later train. Oh. I've, I've, I've booked it now, anyway. Right, well, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. You're not following Whatever, through. whatever. I don't think the show's lost anything. I think we've still had the, you know, Freak of the Week's coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, we've had some, uh, interesting things we've been looking at. Uh, this week, it's, uh, it's about the strangest couple that ever got married. <laughs> 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 And, I, and we've had two sets of chimps, yeah. so it's stranger than that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not Dale Winton and Mel <laughs> McAndrew, is it? It's not your parents, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going back again to about, I think this is about 19, uh... <laughs> Something like that. 1940. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, str important. strangest couple, a fella, right? He had skin of a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> he had the skin of a lizard, okay. <laughs> And the woman which, who he married- Which he married, used as a condom. The yeah. woman who he married. Yeah. Uh, airiest woman ever. <laughs> right. Um, and that was their act. They used to, uh, tour the world, and they'd say, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, couple who've met, they're having a great life. <laughs> uh, let's get them out on stage, here they are. <laughs> and they'd, uh, they'd What do you mean out. he had a skin of a lizard, first of all? That's what, that's what he said, he, he had some sort of, uh, some illness. So he was called Lizard Man, and you like that because it was a good description. I thought uh, that's good. I'm here. I'm here. Hello, uh, did, did we booked a table for two? Who are you meeting? I'm meeting Lizard Man. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. You know who he is, right? Yeah. I'm Look meeting out. the hairiest woman in the world. She's over there. Yeah. Yeah. So what did they do for their act? Um, now, bear in mind that we had some Siamese twins last week, and their act was having a bath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, I hope it's an improvement so on that. Liz, what did Lizard Man? He came out and ate some flies, did he? I don't, I don't really know, I think, I just think they stood there on that. Yeah, what do you, when you read this, and you, it goes, the most interesting fact ever, uh, lizard man, and you go, that's enough, that's yeah, enough, yeah, well, I can that's, extrapolate from yeah, that. but straight away I start thinking, I'm thinking, right, I wonder if they got the wedding photos. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then, like you said that, they had a kid. Oh, what would that be like? Half exactly, lizard, exactly. half a, it'd what be what like an thinking. ostrich, wouldn't it? It that's, would sort of like... That's what I was thinking. What did you think it would come out like, the baby? I didn't think what that looked like, I just was thinking, oh, parents' evening. <laughs> you, know you, you wouldn't want him coming up to the school, would you? <laughs> so, well, that's so little problem. Johnny, who starts off relatively normal, he's quite good at, you know, he's good at nature, yeah. isn't he? And, uh, and, uh, his mum and dad come into the room and they'd be looking around, wouldn't they? Well, it's always like that thing at school when, mm. like, you find out your, your mate's mum and dad are really old. <laughs> Right, have sure. you ever seen that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you go, have you, you know, your grand and granddad bought you? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, no, mum and dad, yeah. and you go, oh. <laughs> It is weird. <laughs> What's that we're talking about? He calls him mum. What was that? I was sorry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and no, like, that's always strange. <laughs> but if you had a, if you had, you know, if you had Godzilla and King Kong as your parents, yeah. and, and, and it was- And they're like always say, fighting. They're always fighting, and, and, you know, like you say, if you're in a school play or something, you, you wouldn't tell them, would you? You wouldn't no. want him coming up with a video he camera. He didn't tell his parents well, he was in the- when we were, Well, exactly. You, you did Little Donkey and you didn't tell your dad, did you? And he yeah. came along and videoed it. Yeah. Was kept that- Kept it quiet, kept it quiet, don't want him to know anything. But you didn't- what was it he was meant to be playing? You had a little drum, didn't you? Yeah, I was doing, uh, I had a little drum. I think it was meant to be playing We Three Kings. Yeah. But, uh, we <laughs> started doing Little Donkey and I thought, I can add a touch to this. Sure, you <laughs> improvised. Started playing along with it. It was like the first it. remix, yeah. wasn't it? It went, went down well. But yeah, that's- that's all I was thinking with, uh, the Freak of the Week this week. That's that's what I'm saying about Freak of the Week. It's to get people thinking, right? <laughs> thinking how lucky they are that you know they they don't have to comb their face. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? What do you mean Freak of the Week is to let people know how lucky they are? Just 
What about the little freak you're talking about? What are they thinking? They're going, oh, he's talking about me. I'm a little airy lizard man. On a stick. Pop in. Give us a call. <laughs> I'd like, you know, that's, that's what I'd like to do on a TV programme. That's what I want to do. I want to go and, like, meet these people and say, right, let's just go shopping. Let's, you know, we'll film what your normal day's like. Yeah. Let's pop out. Gross. Nick into Sainsbury's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, buy a comb. Park, her, park right up close to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, is you just want to get a little message out there, which is that there's always someone worse off than you. Well, there's proof of that in this room. <laughs> you know what I, mean? well, I just think it's a shambles. I've asked for Cheeky Freak of the Week, and it appears that Carl's not ready. He's not prepared. No, I can sort of remember it. It's just that I like to have all the information. Contempt, contempt for but the listener. But you just had about, oh, you just had a whole bunch of adverts and placebo and obviously getting ready. We're chatting, we're having a chat and that. Right, do you want to sort yourself out in the future? Yeah, um, someone e- this is what we were chatting about, someone emailed in about they watched the 200 pound tumour thing and, uh, um, when it was removed, um, it was carried away in a wheelbarrow, right? Carl said, what, even when she had it removed she still carried it round in a wheelbarrow? <laughs> and he went, I thought it's sort of like she'd got become attached to it. <laughs> you, I mean, you are, you definitely are my favourite thing in the world. It's great. Look at the way he's looking back. But I think they're all the same. The people, I mean, I've had more emails about people saying I watched the 200 pound tumour And I shaved me ass. Than anything else. Than anything else. When we ask questions we come about up science, with science we, we, just, we talk, yeah, yeah. Nothing, we talk, nothing. Science. High concept, we talk about political issues. One person emailed in, they said, I tuned into the 200 pound tumour documentary, it looked disgusting, I couldn't watch for long. What were you expecting? Yeah. That it might sing and dance? <laughs> do a little show for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, these, so what's these the are really your listeners, Carl. Now I think we've, do you know what I mean? You, you sort of, you find your niche, you attract your. Uh, I think me and Steve are pretty much just here. I they, think the people that we had in the early days, Rick, they've long since abandoned us. They jumped ship. They've, 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 they've got, got jobs. Yeah. Yeah. they've got jobs. They're out now. They've, they've been released. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 they're getting yeah. their life back together. Um, Carl, Come so on, what's Carl. the situation with Cheeky Freak? I've, I've, I've got like a couple of bits. Like I say, I haven't got the in-depth stuff that I normally- Oh no, cause usually it's, uh, you know, it's Heavily pretty scientific. Research. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, do the jingle. We've got- we've, we've come up with a new one, haven't we? Le Freak! Say chic. Cheeky Freak of the Week. Right, well, uh, couple of- couple of bits. I don't know which one to use as the main feature for this week. <laughs> um, it's that good, is it? Well, there's been another one born. Uh, what? Little kid. You go on. Uh, four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Insult. <laughs> it's just a guy who wears glasses. Come on. Four, uh, four eyes, uh, two noses, two mouths. That's weird. Isn't this it? bloke, did he also have two heads, two bodies? Sort of born, sort of slightly separately? He wasn't no. stood next to a mirror? No, no. It's weird, that, isn't it? That's all you've got. I love that. That's weird. That. Imagine if the doctor said that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Mrs. Um, Parks, um, kid's got four eyes and two noses. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Any clues? <laughs> yeah. Any clues? So well, that's that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. That's all one. the information. Well, I'll tell you what, that, no, but, that again, should be the main one. Okay, no, I'll answer but, but like what? I say, this. What's the idea of this feature? What do I say all the time? Don't know. I always say, think about it. Think about what that would be like. <laughs> okay. What? Giving birth to him? It, no, no, no. Uh, Be, being, uh, I think it's a girl. <laughs> being like her. Two mouths. Four eyes. What would that be like? Mad, innit? I don't know, I don't know what this feature is. I don't know what do I? Is there another one? Is that, you said that I mean, too. I hope everyone took the opportunity <laughs> there during that silence to just think about what it would be like. I know I was. <laughs> what? Could she, could she talk with a mouthful? What? Is that allowed? Cause she's got two mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be alright in her house? She'd be eating Yeah, one, she yeah, could talk it? with one mouth and eat with the other, right, I well, suppose. listen, the main one, right, you've thought about that, that's good. The main yeah. cheeky freak of the week, I haven't got all the details. Smallest person ever. <laughs> right. What, how big would you say that is? Um, Carl is now sort of like holding his hands up like a fisherman, uh, long ways. That's about one foot. Right. Smallest, smallest man in the world. I, I printed the thing off and I can't find it. There's a little picture of him. Right. Uh, the odd thing was. But why, why have you asked me how, did it say or was it a picture of him? I didn't really read it. Of course you didn't. Oh, for of course you didn't. Jesus. I just saw it and thought, oh, that's What, that, you, that, it's that, right, that, 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 assumed it was natural size? No, it was that big. But what do you mean it was that big? Little fella, like that. But why are you doing that? What, what? It was a page with a little fella. How do you know that was natural size? 
No, it was because it said it's world's smallest man. And the funny thing is, I, I've remember I've read the first line. I always read the first line. It said world's well smallest done. man. Well done. Well done. The weird thing is, it got an head like a light bulb. <laughs> The shape of it, apparently. I don't know if that's got anything to do with his shape and size. Uh, oh, but, uh, God. That, that big. His name's Mr. Watts. And, uh, the, the annoying thing is, what got me is, if you're that big, yeah. right, don't have your picture taken next to a fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he having his photo taken next to a fruit bowl? Don't know. <laughs> Whoever the photographer was, obviously having a bit of a laugh. Yeah. At his expense. Cause you, you would just stand in the middle of nowhere, you'd look normal and that, but he was, he was stood there, just <laughs> leaning on an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning on an apple. What is this? In what world do you have? No, this this was this was on on the internet. <laughs> Leaning on, on an apple. Leaning on an apple. <laughs> was it Tom Thumb? <laughs> what is this? Are you sure it wasn't that some sort of sci-fi show they're advertising? No, no, it was it was a uh, <laughs> Leaning on it. Can you uh, sorry? Can you just lean on the apple? <laughs> just lean on the apple, there. Do me a favour. You stand next to my chihuahua. <laughs> You're not taking the piss, are you? No, not at all, no. Could you, would you mind leaning on this matchbox? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leaning on an apple. And that's what, so, so he just said he's the world's smallest man leaning on an apple. Smallest man, said about his head being like a light bulb, I don't know what, what that meant. And, uh, and I just thought, right, that, that'll do, that's that sort of cheeky figure of the week done. I think that was on, like, Monday. Right? <laughs> I found that, I thought that's done. Printed it off, <laughs> forgot to get it off the photocopier. Someone's nicked it. Play record. That you got to- You know, it's just- it's, oh, Steve. No, can I just say no that, Carl, please, no if point. I say, let's have Cheeky Freak of the Week, and you haven't done your research, you haven't got the information, just tell us you can't do it. But don't lead us on. Don't say this not on radio, hold your hand up to me and go, how tall is that? It's nothing, That's this radio. is nothing. It's nothing. Um, I, I think it was that big because he was leaning on an apple. It's not enough information. That, uh, imagine Trevor McDonald coming on, going, some news, some stuff, uh, how big's that? <laughs> How big do you think that is? Yeah. Because there was a fella, yeah, coming up after t Chris, t more Chris Tarrant. It, it, Play record. I, I just, I'm, I'm angry. I'm actually angry. What would you, what could you, if I said, right, quick, you've got to come up with top five things, what would it be? I mean, I'm, in, I'm into weird stuff, but it seems a bit tight to stick them in a list. What, like what? Well, like, fr you know, sort of freaky people and that. I've got that, I've got that <laughs> freak book. But I don't know if they'd be happy if I called one of them and said, good news, <laughs> you're at number one, because you've got four legs or whatever. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Okay, then, this is the exclusive Ricky Gervais Guide to Shortlist Magazine, Carl Pilkington Top 5 Freaks, in at number five. Um, see, so you've got to work backwards, haven't you? I've got mm. to know what's, what my number one is. I think you do work backwards. Five. Probably, uh, something not too good at number five, but it's still interesting. Lighthouse Man. Who's that? Lighthouse what's light Man. What's Lighthouse Man? It's a fella with a hole in his head. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, <laughs> what he does, rather than moan about it, sticks a candle in it. Shut up. What are you talking about? <laughs> sticks a candle what in it. What are you talking about? Where is the I hole? I bet he didn't call himself Lighthouse Man, did he? Well, I don't know, it's just what, what he, 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 he got nicknamed. Cos he had this hole, doctors were like, there's nothing we can do, can't fill it. So what can I do with it? And it was of the days when there was no electric and that. <laughs> you had to walk about with a candle. Right. Just thought, hang on a minute. <laughs> okay, I can have both got hands a candle holder yeah. here. Stuck a candle in it and he just got nicknamed the Lighthouse Man. So again, not, I mean, it's not that amazing, but I like the way he, he was sort of energy efficient. Didn't he have, like, wax dripping on his head? No, cos it all went into the hole. So what? in a way it was filled in. By what do you mean? Day, it wasn't a hole though, it was a dip, surely? No, a big, a big hole. Yeah, but not a hole through the skull with wax dripping on the brain. No, no, just, just a really big hole in his head, but it had skin. Like a golf, like a golf hole? Uh, yeah, I suppose a golf hole's a good, good way of looking Perfect at it. Perfect for a candle, basically. Yeah. And then the drippage went, went into, into the- Went into the hole. Yeah. Candle sort of stood up straight. Yeah. Um, so was it in his forehead? No, on the very top of his head. That's perfect. You don't want it in the forehead, Steve. You'd have to walk back with your neck ridiculous. crick. So he was like a kind of human jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. He's a lighthouse man. What, Steve, what, Sorry, what, what, what yeah, better I description do you that. need than the lighthouse man? So yeah, he's probably at number five. Wow, that's at number five, Steve. Number four. What about... pig face woman of Manchester Square? <laughs> <laughs> Again, you, you're getting what it says in the tin there, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Now, pig faced woman of Manchester Square, is that someone you knew growing up? No, no, it's a, it's a square in London. Yeah, right. And it's just this woman who had a face like a pig. And, uh, the rumour was yeah. that it wasn't a woman. 
Someone said it was a pet bear and they'd shaved it. <laughs> that's what oh, I've, God! That's what was, this someone, <laughs> was this someone you saw? No, you no, just this, read is, about? this is going back. This is, this, is, this is years and years ago. Yeah. Uh, when there was loads of, like, weird-looking people. I mean, the fact that it's pig face woman of Manchester Square <laughs> yeah. says that there might have been one in... <laughs> Piccadilly Lexus, Circus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So there was a lot more of them knocking about back then. Let's assume that, um, it was a woman. And the first one, you know, the lighthouse fellow, he's a, he's a human. Do you think people would object because of their disfigurement, deformity, um, like, like being called freaks? Do you think? Well, it, it gave them a purpose back then. See, if you were a freak years ago, there was work for you. You'd have these circus things. Mm. Now, if you've got a funny head, you're on the dole. They don't do these All working shows. with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on, uh, the world's number one audiobook. Great. Uh, number three? What about Elephant Man? Right. Stick him at number three. He's- oh, he's- number three? He's the, he's surely the most famous freak ever to have lived, isn't he? He's the one who got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, sure, he's sort uh, of entry level freak. Yeah. Uh, the gateway freak. Everyone- everyone is aware of him. Mm. If the Elephant Man still existed, right, and you got the opportunity to meet him, and you walked in, couple of questions. One, what would your first reaction be? And two, what would you say to him? What would your first question be? I would react. Well, I've, I've sort of seen him enough now that it wouldn't shock me. Mm hmm So, I don't even think I'd flinch. Okay. Uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw you, that- <laughs> that was- that was a- a bit weird. Mm. But now, look, I can look at you, I don't double take mm. or anything. Uh, what would I say to him though? What- what, uh... I'd probably say, where do you get that hat to fit you? <laughs> <laughs> he always had that on. Where do you get that from? <laughs> oh. That sort of flat cap that he's got. Yeah. Yeah, that <sighs> on, not he? So, uh... <sighs> very stylish. So, yeah, I'd have him. So he's at number three. Right. Uh... And for man, number three, I can't wait Blimey, for two and yeah. one. Right, okay, number well, two. I know what my number one is. It's just number two now. I don't know his name, but there's a fella knocking about. Well, I, I don't think he's around anymore. But he had like a normal body. Looking at him, you'd go, "What's up with him? He's not a freak." Takes his undies off. He's got two <laughs> knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's nowhere to start. I Do you think he, he uses them alternately? Like, I have a way out of this one. I have a way out of that one. Or does he just like spread the load so he's weeing out of both? I don't think he knows. What I do you mean? He's sort know? of like a lucky dip. When he goes to a urinal, yeah. he sort of- he can have a little bet with himself. He's just like, I don't know what's gonna happen here. So he do you reckon he holds them holds both them out? Belt, definitely. So he takes his trousers down, cos, I mean, you know- he, Yeah, he uh, can't use a Y front. Right. Be, uh, Need more like a W front. Yeah. So, um, he- he pops his kex down there. I don't think it's that much of a problem. It's not like, uh- Well! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd prefer that than Elephant Man's head. Well, of course you would. Well, that's what I'm saying. What if you had Elephant Man's knob? Yeah, but he didn't work like that, did it? That's the thing. They said he had the body of an elephant, but that's the only thing that wasn't of an elephant standard. <laughs> His knob was normal. Whereas with this fella, it's the other way around. Everything normal, took the pants off. Oh well, what's going on here? <laughs> but why would you ever take his pants off? No, well, I wouldn't. I'm just saying if- But why- I don't know- I don't know why you'd be in a situation with this man with two knobs standing there with his pants on and you go pop your pants off. You're not a doctor. No, I say if I'm waiting in a- in a cubicle yeah. and he's there. For what? So you're I'm waiting, waiting in a cubicle have, and I'm waiting, to have, I'm waiting to have a wee at a cubicle. He's oh, taking two urinals up and going, right. hang on, you don't need them both, do you? He goes, well, actually, oh, and have then a you... look at this. Right. He's got two knobs. See, I, I didn't see him at two urinals, I saw him at one, maybe them pointing inwards. If you had that and you- and the- say the first time that you met Suzanne, would you mention that straight up? Would you say, right, before this goes any further, I've got something to show you. Well, let's see, exactly, tell me exactly what you would say. All right, Carl, I can't wait to, uh, to go back to your place. Oh, maybe we should end up sort of like a boyfriend and girlfriend and live together for the rest of our lives. Uh, You had normal head then, didn't you? I had- I had the same head, yeah. Yeah, but it had, like, hair in- coming out of it, didn't it? And sort yeah. of like- Yeah, but she also had a, a smaller arse back then <laughs> as well, so I think we've both been dumb. If you want to hear more of this kind of intellectual <laughs> discussion, then download our audios. Anyway, we need to get to number one. Yeah, number one. Okay, it is. It's, uh, it's Pillow Man. Oh, yeah. Pillow Man. Okay, now explain for those that don't know who he was. He's, uh, he's a fella with, uh, no arms and legs. 
Mm -hmm. Just a head and a little body. Um, <laughs> nickname, Pillar Man. Mm. Um, what else do you need to know? Well, why is he your favourite? Just because he's amazing. Just the way he, uh, he just got on with his life. He used to light a cig, just using his, like, his lips and his, his tongue and that. Oh, I've and seen not, this. Not it's fully a, lit. He'd buy like roll your own. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the film Freaks, isn't it? Yeah, and he, he, he had a shave it. as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, How did he do you think he, he used to do it? He used to get it in his mouth, and I don't know. Jesus, it's amazing. Did he have? Did he have a knob? I think he did because he had some kids. What? He, yeah, he had kids. He was an all right looking fella. He wasn't. He wasn't odd looking. He's just sorry. He no, no, he's he's Ed. He looked like Samuel L. Jackson. Imagine him with no arms and legs. Right, that's odd though, isn't it? Really? Um, it's weird, but you've got to give it to him, you know, I mean, he's, he's there rolling his own, he's pretty cool looking. I just want to say to people, it's not, you say it looks cool to, you know, with no arms and no legs to smoke, but don't forget that smoking can stunt your growth. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, remember, he was on, like, this, this circus freak show thing with, yeah. like, a bearded woman. Yeah. Right? Um, which isn't really a freak, is it? She's gonna have a shave. Have a shave, you're not a freak anymore. Yeah. A bearded woman. Compared to a fellow who's got no arms and legs, a bearded woman, you get out! <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was, there was like a fella with, with, uh, no bottom half to his body, uh, called Johnny Eck, was his name. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. so, you know, when you're knocking about with that crowd, <laughs> you're gonna you get, get a bit. Out. <laughs> you're gonna get a bit. So, yeah, he had kids and they were all normal kids. They had all the limbs. And did his and wife have arms and legs? Never saw his wife. Never saw his wife. I think he's. He was probably ashamed of her. She was a bit of a freak. For someone like him, you'd think he'd just give up, wouldn't you? You think, forget it. What sort of life is it? Yeah. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> worth living. <laughs> but he just got on with it. He, I mean, to have a shave, I, I don't even bother having a shave sometimes. No, no. Nor did the bearded lady. Lazy fucking bitch. So that's why I've put him at my number one position. Uh, it's just amazing, isn't it? The human, you know, how, how you know, whatever you dealt, some people just get on with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the pillow man, or draft excluder, as I prefer to call him. <laughs> there you go. Oh. I never go to the doctors unless it's really. That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No, that's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor, or they're mildly embarrassed, or they don't know um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if if if, you, if you're not sure about something. Like you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it, because now Suzanne will listen to this and she'll go, oh yeah, you haven't been, and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a, a little, uh, a, a qualified I doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What? They what just pop- What are we in? They- <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? They pop their finger up. That's what I mean, though. Why? Why are they still using the index finger? <laughs> what, would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb, would no. you? No, what I mean is, we've got- Or a thumb on a stick, some kind of thumb on a stick. You, yeah, would you prefer it to a be- A mechanical thumb. A robot thumb. Why isn't it just a little camera? Well, well, they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something. But just put the camera up straight away. If no, they, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, up your, uh, 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 up your back passage. They'd, what I are you worried about? I, I don't think they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you age? embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping A his... little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there. You yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh, in less than half an hour I'm gonna have a finger up the arse, <laughs> right? <laughs> And they go there. in, they check your heart, they <laughs> probably check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's yeah, but it's all building and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, go, what are you doing? That? I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they- <laughs> Wow! can they teach- Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be alright. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But- but then- Who knows what trouble you're gonna cause? No, but then at you least- You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> 
Woke up at 9.55 a.m. Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about- <laughs> <laughs> I just think <laughs> he opened his eyes and looked at oh, Okay, all right. Okay, so he's- he's- he- he opens his eyes, he looks at Suzanne, she looks at him. What question, Rick, do you think he immediately asks his girlfriend? Go on! What question do you well, think? I Have can't. a quick guess. Um, uh, um, am I dreaming? I woke up, I said to my girlfriend, did I tell you about- <laughs> <laughs> I woke up, I looked at Suzanne, she looked at me, I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you about the immune system? Suzanne started laughing, I said, it's amazing, she said, not now. <laughs> into action, he zips up his eyes along. <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up. Oh, I'll put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. Um, more, uh, revelation. Um, we were talking about it last week, but Carl brought it up again, just now. Uh, didn't want to go to the doctors, didn't want to have a full sort of body checkup that may save his life, because he saw on the website they do a, a, a test where they have to insert a finger in his ass. Well, don't tell me about it. Why? Don't put it on the website. Just put, we look at your heart. Yeah. And check your blood pressure out. Yeah. And then they, they could just do it quickly. Could just sort of say, right. How um, do they do it quickly? No, but what I'm saying is it's, it's worse than it going in there knowing that, I mean, they've got it on the website. So you, you're on the journey on the bus thinking, in about 20 minutes I'm gonna have a finger up my arm. But, they're doctors. Yeah, but just they're not doing it for a laugh. They're not filming it with a two-way screen. Mm -hmm. They're not putting on boxing gloves so it hurts more. They're <coughs> up. Oh, it's prostate. All right, out the, again. In out the, again. I'm just saying. In the day, the sort of. Do you think they're in the pub going? Here he comes. It's Pilkington. I have my finger. It was Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> do well, they what? allow ladies to do that? Do they allow female doctors to of do it? Of course they do. They're doctors. No, that's, that's worse. Though. You're sound. You're sounding like him. No, I'm just interested. In, cause, you know, do they allow female doctors to do the finger up the arse thing? <laughs> Well, of course they do. They're doctors. Forget the female and male. They are doctors. Right? Do you know any female doctors to do that? <laughs> but what I mean is, I, isn't it a bit like if you're being searched at an airport, you know, and you're a woman, they send in a woman person to search you. They don't. They don't send in a bloke to do it. Is that the same thing? I yeah. Mean? They, they probably trust someone who's gone through uh, six years medical college not to be taking the piss as opposed to a fat security guard who couldn't get anything else. Do you know what I mean? You're talking about there's doctors all the time coming out in the papers. Are they gave them this so they could look at their boobs or whatever? Or, you know, it's all well, like, you're no, always well, hearing stuff about dodgy doctors. But what I'm saying is the reason why they do that security because there's there's lots of security people and they can you know for your own you know for the you know um, your own modesty they. There's a female wanting to search females and a male wanting to search males and that's fine. But th there's not like four or five GPs to choose from and you go in there and you go, is it, is it your ass and testicles? Do you want a bloke or it, you know, it, you, you accept it. they've got it. long fingernails? They don't have long fingernails. What do you think of this, this female GP looks like? She's sitting behind the desk like Cruella de Vil with a, with a, with cleavage and long red false nails going, hello love, bend over, this may hurt a little bit. There, they, there's, there's gloves and Vaseline, you, it, it, I mean, uh, this I'm, I don't believe well, there's two of you now in the room. Carl, they're doctors. They have to, they, uh, what would you rather do than put the hand down your throat and round your elementary canal to feel your ass? It's a quicker way in. You seem to know a lot about these doctors and such fingers off people's asses. You're a very well informed gentleman. What about this sort of thing? <laughs> well, say, say if they did find something. Yeah. Um, would you then have to get like a second opinion so someone else's no. finger? No. Well, no. They, they test it to see if there's anything suspicious. That it's usually uh, a, a, a swollen prostate, which which can be anything. Um, so they, you know, they catch it early, and that's it. They feel they feel up there. But if you want a second opinion, then the same doctor will just stick a thumb up and <laughs> have a feel around them. <laughs> so it always works in the same way. Yeah. Well, yeah. if there's you know, if there's a doctor who can, I don't know, put me at ease. I mean, surely there's another way around it. I don't believe that. I mean, what is this? Sixty million people, or something in the world, isn't it? Sixty billion, or uh, something. Wow. Well, six billion, something. Yes, you got it. Right. You hit it. Well done. That's good work. Right. So yeah, this this six. What oh, six billion did I say? Yeah. What's six billion then? Loads, isn't it? Yeah, but. <laughs> so if you're, you want a doctor to phone up <laughs> to assure you that the finger at the bum thing is not painful and that it's necessary and just that, that it's that not it's just necessary, really. It's just that it's not an easy way round. Or right, what's you know the what I mean? phone number here? It's uh. 
They've changed, haven't they? Oh, for- <laughs> You're the producer! Oh, here it is, here it is. 0871 222 1049 and I think you, you select option one. It tells you anyway what to do. Please, if, if, if you're a GP or, or if, you know, even if you've completed medical, I mean we, we want a qualified doctor really, anything else is not good enough for Carl Pilkington. Um, just to, to uh, we'd love to, you can ask him all the other questions, cause you know Carl, as I said last week, he, he, he doesn't, um, feel his own testicles cause he doesn't like the feel. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like a doctor to explain to him how necessary well, I, that I, is. And this is truthful as well, I've got very slight pain around the genital area at the moment and I'm not- I think it might be some kind of groin strain but I'm a little bit anxious, not entirely sure Yeah, it I is, feel, so. I, I'm- I, I, I- you've been with me twice when I've gone along to get them checked. Yeah. I go, oh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. I mean, but, you know, it's usually- you, you're- you're- I think you're in a pretty low risk area, aren't you? I'd hope so. You're coming out of the twenties, I think it's the- I think testicular sort of- I shouldn't be doing this, I'm not qualified. <laughs> Uh, they, they told what all they said was to me is sort of like it's twenties and fifties. Mine, so like, we're into <laughs> mine sort of felt like they dropped a bit the other week when I was on holiday. I don't know if that's like when you're relaxing or <laughs> I was wearing shorts a lot. How far? If it's two foot, it's too far. I was having problems walking. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Why? Well, it, it was just a bit sort of a bit. I, I had shorts on all day. I'm happy. I'm walking about on the beach. Might have you. Mm. And then at the night when I put some long trousers on. I, I was sort of walking like well, they, probably, they probably like stretch a little bit. Sometimes, uh, I, I told you when I was about 18, I was scared. I, I, I went to, uh, the doctor, I, I felt a pain, right? And, uh, I was, cause I was doing biology, I thought I'd show off this doctor. I said, I've got a pain. I think it feels like it starts in the epididymis and goes up to, through the urethra, either. And, uh, he went, Finger up the he said, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> One of the most striking art exhibitions that I ever attended. Carl was an exhibition of outsider art, I'm something I'm sure you're very familiar with. Outsider art, of course, is work that is made by people who are often institutionalised for mental health problems, um, or they are just incredibly, you know, uh, the people who aren't in any way part of the art establishment. Well, they're all, right up to psychopathic murderers, uh, clinically insane mass murderers would count as outsider art. Um, I, I went to an outsider art exhibition in New York, um, it was incredible, and I bought a, a, a painting of this guy, he's a, a, a chronic schizophrenic, and he paints in tar, like road tar, mm. that he gets from roads, and he paints in that on wood he finds in sort of skips, and it's incredible, because it's sort of like scratched in, and uh, it, it's amazing, and there's this thing of Jesus being helped down off the cross, and you have to study it, but it's there, and it's it's quite incredible that it's just scratched in this wood by tar. And there's loads of things that I was walking around, um, admittedly I was walking around there going, this is fucking mental, and James was going, you've got to stop saying that, because of course some of the people are. Mental. <laughs> um, there was one bloke doing the sculpture of a skull, right? <laughs> and underneath. <laughs> It was like a little head with his teeth. Underneath, he put a sign that said "real teeth." <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get the real teeth from? <laughs> what I think is interesting about that is how much therapy it provides for these often mentally unstable people, which is another important value of art, of course. People's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> you whistle. Uh, yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, uh, I usually do, and I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? So right, freedom. expand on this point if you would. Well, that's that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote. That that's mm. great. That for art is freedom. I yeah. love that because I think I think you've really hit on something there. Would you would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, I know what he meant. I know what you meant there. Would you include I mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, uh, what, uh, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So Got just take us off. through a typical See, uh, day. When would the whistling begin? So so uh, uh, this was that you spent you spent <coughs> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, yeah. Could could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking I'm in my own place now. I'm going to annoy them. Well, it was mainly it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble. 
Mm. And they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> Um, it's sort of you got boiler problems down here. Well. It, wor it works. It just gives something off every time it kicks in. The radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like I, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going from one thing to another. A wedley. And a, a man was impressed. She was like, "Oh, you can whistle, can't you?" I was going, "Yeah." And then she was saying, how loud can you go? I was just doing all different levels. So it, this sounds like a scene from One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. The boiler's setting off the radio. I can whistle. Oh, you're good whistling, aren't you? Oh, yeah, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home it when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you mm. never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up, do you? Whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a well, whistle. Well, the people who aren't whistling are usually pissed off, but yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least, he, he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling. Whistling, there's, th th there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's not. The only, the only good, the, the, uh, the only point to whistling is in a bloke's changing room, everyone's whistling, going, I'm not looking at your cock. If I'm whistling, I can't be looking at your cock. Anything else, there's no other, there's no, calling a dog, maybe. Calling it, a dog. It changes the atmosphere. Yeah, it annoys everyone else. Dunno. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as like, you know, that's how you knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh, retired. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because he couldn't whistle. That was it. It was like well, yeah, he whistles whistle. all the time. Can't whistle. Well, yeah. Can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth. Yeah, I suppose he could have done. He didn't think of that. What about a flute or a recorder? Not London's burning again. Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off. <laughs> he didn't really think of this through, did he? He retired at the age of 28. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family were bankrupt. <laughs> With no teeth. Yeah. And just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why aren't you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No. I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. What, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? Oh, two hours. Fuck two it hours? Out. Put my word down. And then. Th sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it. Can we hear it? So you were, whistling, you were whistling after you had your go as oh, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it now, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. That is Carl's self expression. That is his artistic self expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, because I do alright. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can oh, come up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't- no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that are, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree. Cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth ten, that. It's not bad, is it? Now I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you- I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out. And then, yeah, when it wasn't my go, just- <laughs> Anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed to for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny, I'm being a bit snobby here, but I think there's a difference between Beethoven and <laughs> Squirm. <laughs> there's a cue in that. No, no. Classical music. I wish I was more educated on classical music. That which I've heard, I've adored. Mm. I, I genuinely find it challenging because it is so spectacular. It is so, it is so of another place. Where do you sit with classical music? It's good. It's good for background. I right. Think. 
Um, see, I, I, you know me, I like a song with a story, and there's nothing going on in them. That's, uh... Now the problem with that is, how many times can you hear the same story? Quite a lot. How many times can you watch the same film? Same thing, except it's shorter than watching a film. Yeah, but the film goes into the story with more depth than a three-minute song. Yeah, but there's also, do you know like when you watch, um, what's an example? Say, uh, I can't think of a film. Yeah, there's not many. Uh, no, but a moment in a film that, it doesn't well, matter how many times you watch it, you go, I enjoyed that bit. Um, Godfather swings to well, mind. Well, say, no, over Christmas, on the buses was on the, the movie. <laughs> oh, for f Jesus. When, you when, went with the Godfather, you went with on the buses. I mean, <laughs> oh, God. Brando, Varney, I don't know which is better. <laughs> it was the bit where, like, the toilet blows up after chucking a fag in. That's had paint in it. Right. I've Sorry, that's that. in, that's in all the buses. That's <laughs> not in the Godfather. I can't remember that. Maybe that's Godfather 2. <laughs> the thing is, I enjoyed that bit and I knew it was coming. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll just watch this before I nip out and put the kettle on. Mm. Let's just see this. How bit. many times have you seen the on the buses film? Probably about four or five times. Sure, why not? But all I'm saying is, music is there to sing over. <laughs> no, it's not! Music is there to sing over. That's a ridiculous thing to say. Music does something to me. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know why a chord can say something to you. I don't know, mate. Gives you that feeling. Uh, I, I'm in awe of it. I'm in awe of musicians. Yeah. My favourite piece of music, uh, is a thing by Vaughan Williams, um, it's five variants of Dives and Lazarus, right, and there's a bit there where they, it hits this chord and I, 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 I can't listen to it when I'm away from home, cos I, I, I well up. It reminds me of everything. England, just, uh, it does something to me, and it does it on, on a level that I can't sort of quite understand. It's just uh, immaculate. I just again. don't think you can be, beat a decent vocal on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing! My mum's got a CD of uh, Roger Whittaker, right? Right, whistling again. No. <laughs> he, does, he, he whistles Jealous Guy. Now, the thing is, I can't listen to that and, and whistle along. I end up singing Jealous Guy on top of it. So, singing Trump's whistling? Uh, yeah, when someone else is doing the whistling. Okay. I like whistling, but if someone else has did that first, yeah. So if Roger was singing, singing Jealous Guy, you'd be I'd whistling. I'd whistling it. So, to make the classics live on, I'm surprised someone hasn't gone, I can, I can add to this, and dub on a bit of vocal. So you would have classical music with lyrics? Just for people Beethoven's who Beethoven's Fifth! That. Beethoven's Fifth! You, that would be better to you, that would- <laughs> <laughs> But what are you meant to do with it? How, what do you do when you've got that on then? Do you whistle along or No, do I don't whistle pump, along. Pump? I just, I, I let it, oh, Do you Carl, whistle along? I just don't know what to well, say. Why are you obliged to whistle? That's the only way you can enjoy music, if you can whistle along. Well, that's the same with anything. A good song, you join in, don't you? It's like, oh, I like this one. Yeah. No! So, by that token, YMCA is one of the greatest of all tunes. I mean, it's not one of my favourites, but you can't knock it. It certainly gets the crowd up when, I mean, I did DJing and Why do you care about the crowd? Popular. Who are this crowd? Well, I'm just saying- Who are this crowd that you have to live in your head with? Fuck the crowd. Most of them are idiots. Although, admittedly, if I was doing a wedding DJing set, I probably <laughs> would do YMCA <laughs> over Vaughan Williams. And why is that? Because it's it's happier go lucky. It's done in three minutes. Classical music goes on for ages. Mm. No, it's a good out, point. Who's got fades time? Fades out. It comes back in again. Well, mm. it's a good point. It's all over the shop. Are yeah. you going or are you staying? It's over time, and yeah. I'm not saying we should get rid of it. And I, I might grow into it because I think that's music for older people. Well, I, you're know, I, I think Mozart would disagree, as he, I think he did his first symphony when he was five or six. Probably playing piano and writing music before you could read. When d did the piano come out when he was a kid? What do you mean? If it was trendy to have a piano when he was a kid, it's like how kids now, they're messing about on Google at the age of two, <coughs> because the laptop is new. It's mm. new to us. To them it's like, oh, it's, it's Google, isn't it? What's your point? Because he was born at the right time. Beethoven. Yeah, he was no, born. Mozart. So you're saying Mozart. that all three year olds around the time of Mozart were brilliant? There would have been a, quite a lot of them. Mozart, Beethoven, and all that. They're all, uh, Andal. They're all around the <laughs> same time, aren't they? <laughs> Just guessing. Wild stabs in the dark. Just names he's heard. <laughs> Just names he's heard. <laughs> so when Ricky was young, when no, I presume no, Rolf Harris' stylophone came out, everyone was composing <laughs> on the stylophone, really. Yeah, exactly. It's all, it's all what you brought up with, isn't it? Nothing's hard if, if you're given it when you're a kid. Nothing's difficult. Mm. It can be taught all sorts. I haven't got room for a piano. It's too big for a pastime. A hobby shouldn't take up a whole corner of a room. 
It's so know. limited, isn't it? His scope, his imagination. Yeah. But a piano, the idea that a piano in a house would be a frustration and annoyance. Music. That you could play Harmony. there. But I'd worry about annoying other people with it as No, well. you don't. You whistle. When you're playing Scrabble, you don't <laughs> worry about annoying people at all. I'm sure people would rather have gentle piano music in the background than... <laughs> squirm. <laughs> squirm. So, one of the earliest and most celebrated art forms that's, you know, along with painting and music still going today, is the play. And, of course, the most famous and celebrated exponent of that is our very own William Shakespeare. Some say maybe the greatest literary genius in history. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not a fan. Right. And I'll tell you why I'm not a fan. One reason and one reason only. Sure. Nothing to do with the structure, his themes, uh, uh, fantastic. The pun. Right. Oh, I can't stand the pun. Yeah, but I mean, although Shakespeare did include a few puns in his work, I don't think you could... No, I suppose it's the people it's that have taken on down. the pun. It just reminds me of a bloke in a beard and a, and a, and a pipe at a party doing puns, you know. And it's things like Shakespeare, things like, um, oh, take their maiden heads. And you have to look at your Brody's notes to go, okay, cut off their heads uh, and take their virginity. Oh, brilliant. You know, you can't, it's like, you can't explain a joke in retrospect. You don't laugh if you then explain to you. I'm going to have to take issue with the idea that Shakespeare was not a truly great master of our language. I think he was. If uh, you I, listen, if he you added to the language. He invented uh, words, or at least he stole words and, and, and changed them a bit. He took them from, you know, other languages, which is uh, to totally valid. And um, he made up loads of sayings that are still around today, and there's a poetry in that, inventing new... Um, actually, Carl, you like sayings, don't you? I've um, got a list here Sorry. of some of the, 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 the sayings and phrases that, that Shakespeare made up, really. Um, in a pickle was his. Yeah. Well, well, um, and we know what in a pickle yeah, we means. Yeah, we know what it means. I, 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 it's a saying I, I'd never use. Because when you're in a pickle, it's not something that you would say. No, if you're being sort of, if you're captured and you're being tortured for information, yeah. you wouldn't, and you, and you get access to a phone, you wouldn't call go, MI5, I'm in a pickle. Mm. You'd be screaming, going, he's taking my teeth out. Much as I love Shakespeare, is when that play was first staged and someone said during the play, ooh, I'm in a pickle. Did the audience understand, or were they baffled? Or was it like watching Ken Dodd when he goes, Young Bunctious! <laughs> exactly. Oh, Terry Hilarious! Yeah. So Shakespeare is about as good as Ken Dodd. That's what we appear to have established. While you've been talking about that, I just was looking on the computer at, uh, the Pun of the Day website, because I feel like I take much of what you say about puns and agree with it. Uh, there's a couple that you might, you might like. There was a sign on the lawn at a drug rehab centre that said, keep off the grass. Okay, okay, now if the pun is the lowest form of wit, and uh, let's face it, sarcasm isn't, sarcasm is up there compared to the pun, then the drug pun, I think, is one of the lowest of the low. Oh, people who congratulate themselves on getting drug references, keep off the grass, with <laughs> Grass, get it? Grass, you know, smoking the grass, again. Show me a piano falling down a mine shaft, and I'll show a you flat minor. a flat minor. Oh God! Okay, good. Okay. Do you get that? Well, these these yeah. are. I mean, that sums up puns, isn't it? It's things that kids get in a cracker. I think pun should be short for punch him in the mouth. <laughs> Idioms are better. Go on then. What's an idiom? Uh, Is that a new word you made up? No, I think Carl Pilkington's a complete idiom. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out what it was because I thought, oh, I like them. What are they? Right. And it's like little sayings. Yeah, that's right. That sums stuff up. Go on, give us an example of your favourite. Oh, can I just say one, uh, 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 talking about sayings, Carl was getting fed up with summer. He was, uh, uh, he was fed up with not getting replies from something. He's, you know, he's having a hard time, you know. And, uh, I went, oh, the worm has turned. He went, what? I went, the worm has turned. You know, you've... Stupid oh. saying, isn't it? No, t well, okay, tell him why you think that's a stupid saying. Because how do you know when a worm's turned? <laughs> <laughs> of right. all the creatures that you could flip over and know it's turned, <laughs> why pick a worm? It's a bad- it's a- it's, it's the worst thing they could have picked to express something turning. <laughs> but you're doing turning literally! It means changing, doesn't it? Changing your attitude. A new broom, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, but-, but Things are gonna be different now and I'm pick sick of it. Chameleon. No, but Chameleon is a brilliant thing to use for something to change. <sighs> Chuck that in the sentence. There's- there's- there's nothing that you can link a worm to human life to. You're talking about something that's- it, it's blind, isn't it? It's blind, <laughs> it's deaf. Gay. 
It's got no features. <laughs> Why is he having such a go at a worm? Just because it's it's a weird thing to use. Something that its arse is more it does more than its head. <laughs> <laughs> that could be said of you, Carl, to be fair. We've talked about, about what art is, we've talked about painting, sculpture, we've talked about music briefly. We've talked about whistling over music to make it better. Um, poetry. Uh, a completely different type of art form there. Carl, what's your thoughts on poetry? I've never really been a, a fan of it. It's a surprise. I, I think it's, it's sort of, uh, it's alright for the person who's doing it. You know, you say that whistling is just for the whistler. But I think poetry's more like that because you, sometimes you read it and you're thinking, what's he going on about? It's always a bit, I don't know, it's sold in a bad light. It's a bit sort of, a bit gay, isn't it? Right. Okay. I mean, it depends what sort you're talking about, because maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah. War poetry can't be gay, can it? That was people- I haven't heard. Go on. People fighting in the trenches and that can't be gay. They weren't gay. They were they were writing to their sweetheart. I, I don't know his name. It might might have been a bloke. I don't know, but- So is- was it- was it a sort of a- what sort of poem was it? Was it a sort of a limerick, sort of a- like No, it was- might? it was uh- well there's- there's- there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon, and they're very moving. They're about, uh, you know, the, 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 what usually happens is that they talk about why are we here? This is- you know, we've been- we've been sold a- a lie here. You know, and they really- we started seeing war in a different light from- from- from their point of view in the trenches. Famously, some of them died. So soon after the, you know, but I prefer they'd written a the poem. proper, a proper letter, no sort of crypticness. That's the problem with right. poems. Okay, you so you'd, it, you'd have been disappointed to get Dolce at decorum S through the post, would you? You'd have just said, "What are you trying to say, mate? Is what's the weather like when you're coming home? Did you get my socks?" Well, yeah. Sometimes life is a bit like that, and it? it's like, say what you mean. Right. Well, that's the, well. Then that th you have just wiped all art off the face of the earth, if you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I- say if I was a woman and me fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay, so Harry- oh, wait, 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 right, so when were you married? Uh, about 19, uh, 1935. 1935, so, uh, been married about four years. Yeah. Harry, why don't- you, why don't you go off- oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Yeah. You don't look like- okay. So, what, what- what- what did you see in Harry? What- what, what did you- why did you like Harry? Was he- he just was like funny. Uh, butch. He wasn't that butch, but that no. didn't matter back then, did it in the war? No. And you, and you took everyone. But what did you say when Harry was say, would said to you? Well, I, I I thought it was coming because a lot of uh, a lot of our friends right. ended up. Did you just hug him and say don't go or something? No point, because that would have just made it tough for him. So. I just, <laughs> what's the point? Just go with it. But if he I had cried after he went. You cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got to, he's got to go to battle. Okay, so your man goes off to battle. Right. Then I get a, a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news, Harry's dead." Now I get a letter in the post. <laughs> he said he said what he meant, didn't he? In the well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. funny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud the cloud went dark." I go, well, "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right. Now, the colonel, he, he would just tell me the basics. Now, <laughs> because he sent his by, um Telegram? Telegram. Telegram. They sent a telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, right? okay. So I get a letter from, uh from Harry after he's died. Yeah. Right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead, so I get right. this letter with his handwriting on, I'm yeah. devastated because I was just getting over his death. Yeah. It's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. He's had yeah. his handwriting. Yeah. Oh, God, what's this? What's now, I written? open it. Yeah. And instead of saying, things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, you know, everything's grim, it's cold, I'm sick of it, there's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. Well, what, did it's not in his words. Poems are never in the in the person's words. But did you know how he was a poet when you married him and made love to him no, that I only night? No, I picked it up because all the people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he, he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he? Didn't he say any? Didn't he ever? She, he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical like red hair. No, that's no. straight no. to the point. He was like, "Get your knickers off." <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
That's one of the weirdest fucking scenarios I've ever had. I've ever fucking. Why the fuck was the telegram coming before the letter? So specific. He wasn't like Harry. The fuck's Harry? <laughs> A few things gayer than poetry, though. I want to oh. uh, throw one into the pot. The continental breakfast. Oh. The continental breakfast. Yeah. That annoys me when I see it. Who orders that? If you've got the choice of eggs, beans, burger, Sausage. chips, uh, sausages, Bacon. all that, you've paid for it already. If I was a waiter and someone said, uh, What do you want for breakfast, mate? And the bloke went, Oh, I'd just have a little bit of grapefruit juice and a croissant. I go, Do you? Do you want some cum on that? Yeah. Or you can go back to the hotel and suck a cock. Yeah. So, no, I'm, uh, I'm with you there. What else is, um, what else is gayer than poetry? I remember when I was at school once, right? Uh, the worst thing you could be growing up was gay yeah. in school. It was, the wor it was the worst thing. It was the, you know. And, um, I remember I was about 14, 15, I was talking to this bloke. I talk about him on my stand up. Um, David Beasley is the one that said if you get captured by cannibals, they show you pornographic pictures when you're in the pot. So you get an erection and there's more meat yeah. to go around. So he, he was a, he was an idiot. He made Carl look smart. Wow. Really? Wow. Um, and, uh, he said, you know that thing that uh, kids always do, what would you rather be, blind or deaf? Yeah. We did that, and we discussed that for a while, and he went, what would you rather be, blind or queer? Mm. And I went, well, I'd rather be gay, cos... Still got all your sights, yeah. And he, he went, oh, would ya? I went, well, yeah, well, ra rather than be blind, I said, yeah, well, I said, also, if you were gay, you'd like being gay. He went, I wouldn't. <laughs> I went, <laughs> no you would. I said, if you were gay, you would like being gay. He went, I wouldn't, Gervais. Sounds like you would. I went, well if I was gay, I would like being gay. He went, well I wouldn't. And he looked at me accusingly, and I went, no, nor would I, but gays would. Which made no sense at all. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, the yeah, idea, yeah. but this is just like such such a stonewall uh, 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 that that I'd rather be anything than gay. Yeah. Carl, thoughts? Blind or gay? This is about art, is it? Hello, I'm Ricky Gervais. Philosophy is the science which considers truth. So said Aristotle, one of the great forefathers of Western philosophy. In its attempt to seek out the truths and principles of human existence, philosophy must answer questions of beauty, of justice, of language, indeed, of the mind itself. To help me consider some of the core concepts and presumptions of philosophical inquiry, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick, an award-winning writer. It's a pleasure to be here. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no education, didn't really go to school, no awards, head like a fucking orange, you know the twat. All right. To me, philosophy might be the greatest subject of all academic subjects, the, the mother of science, um, asking the big questions, why are we here, how do we live? But it's been sort of mugged and kidnapped by those people who put rubbish under the umbrella of philosophy. Right. Cod philosophy. I went into a library once, I looked in the uh, philosophy section, and there was a book by Doris Stokes. Doris Stokes being, for those that don't know? A, a, a medium who said she was talking to the dead. There's crystals, feng shui. Feng shui, yeah. Oh, God. The interesting thing about feng shui is how, uh, I remember someone came into an office I was working in once and she said, you're going to need crystal here above the lavatory to get all the negative chi out of the system, and she said, this crystal is £25, and the guy went, we're not going to spend that, and she went, okay, I got one here for five. Brilliant. It was surprisingly convenient that she had a number of different crystals that apparently did the same job. We're also going to need a brush to get the shit out of the toilet, what have you got for that? Yeah, there's a lot of that. Uh, that twaddle. There was a woman I remember once, I used to do a radio show on the BBC World Service, um, and she came in and she could tell from the coloured liquids that you chose, from a big selection of coloured liquids, she could tell a lot about your personality from that. So uh, I picked up uh, about three or four, and she looked at them and I chose like a blue one, just arbitrary, and she looked at me and she said, okay, I get the sense that you like to communicate with people, but on a global level. <laughs> And you were working for the World Service. As, as we spoke, we were broadcasting on the World Service. I don't know where, I mean, she just read it from the, the liquids. Um, 
as a novice, one of the key catchphrases, if you like, of philosophy, and one that's always intrigued and confused me a little, is the famous René Descartes quote, I think, therefore I am. A lot of people think of that as the epitome, in a way, of a philosophical statement. First thing we ever did, I think, mm -hmm. at degree level, and it's the one thing I'd already heard of. It, it's one of those things that, that sort of uh, uh, filters down um, cogito ergo sum, as you say, I think, therefore I am, when um, Descartes was pondering his existence. Um, just before we get to his conclusion, Carl, how do you know this isn't a dream. Uh, just because I haven't been sleeping that well. <laughs> right, no, okay. No, but you could still be dreaming, couldn't you? Because this could be a dream that you haven't been sleeping lately. You could be dreaming the last few nights you haven't been sleeping. Uh. In dreams, they, they're different, like, I mean, I, I, like I say, I don't have that many of them because I don't sleep that well, but when I do have one, there's something different and vivid about it. Now, if I was dreaming all this, I reckon my boiler would have been fixed ages ago. <laughs> 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 I don't think anyone that has a dream that goes on for that amount of time. Well, it could be a nightmare, but the presumption, but the, I think you're also presuming that, that the dream that you could be dreaming needs to be exactly the same as the dreams you think of when you're dreaming. What my point is, there's no way of you knowing that this life you're living now as you talk to us is real, and that it's not actually the imaginings of another Carl somewhere there else. There are actually no clues, Carl. There are actually no clues now that this is the real thing. Well, sometimes, most of the time, it's one minute I'm awake, next minute I'm asleep, then I'm awake again. Yeah. Sleep's just... Do you know the bit between you being awake and awake again, that, that's called asleep. Yeah. Now, do you ever think things while you're asleep? Vivid it's, things. It's that bit between the awake and yeah, awake I wanna I look at. You, I told you about one ages ago where- Go on. Where you burst in and I was on the toilet. <laughs> I never heard this dream. Never yeah, yeah, the this. one that it was all, it was like, like, everyone was German and it was at some gig or something and you opened the door yeah. And everyone was looking and laughing at me, and I'm sat on the toilet, and you sort of said, oh, that's probably because you're uncomfortable with Fame. being put on the limelight. Yeah, like that, that, you, that you might be, uh, yeah, possibly, yeah. But that's one dream See, that I, could or, be true. But did you, yeah, exactly! Well, or there is a likelihood that you think, I bet he's gonna burst in. I uh, am always uh, on edge when you're about, when I use the toilet here. Yeah, I kind yeah. of think, is he busy at the moment? <laughs> you have to wait till he's on the phone to go for a piss. I have to sit there holding the lock. Yeah. Rick, in case there are people who've bought this and they've not really heard Carl before, um, you remember we were talking a while back about the uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actors Studio? Oh, yeah. Where the host, James Lipton, always asks a the same questions to every guest. And it's just supposed to sort of, you know, get their creative, you know, juices flowing, their mind working. We we did ask Carl some of them, we we never completed the questionnaire. Oh, let's go fire that, a few more at him. And that'll also uh, introduce some um, people to the way his mind works mm. a little bit. Okay. Question six. What sound or noise do you love, Carl? Um, there isn't really one that, that I love. Nice noises, yeah. like the ones you get, like I like going in the park, right? And you go, oh, that's nice, isn't it? And you get like yeah. bird noises and stuff. Give me your fucking wallet! But then like- Things like nice yeah. noises like that and uh, uh, but, but, but- You, 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 you fucking, you can't! Yeah, why did you fucking sleep with her? It's lovely in the park, isn't it? But with those bird noises comes a bit of stress, right? Cos I was in there the other day and uh, like, like I say, little bird noises and that and a little robin was there and I thought that's odd, that's out early, right? Cos it's like sort of summer time and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh that's nice and I was watching it and then it got like a little worm, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> <I was> <laughs> Sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? I Why were you interfering in nature with a with a robin taking a worm? Just because it it, it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought, wor you see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down. It's miserable. They come to the top of the soil, then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable, but it was a sunny day. Unless they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they, they hear the water or something falling on the ground and they go, what's going on? And they come up to see what's happening. <laughs> what? No, no way, but why do they come up when they think it's raining? 
because they're, they're hearing like knocking on their their land, and they're going, "Who's that?" And they come <laughs> up. <laughs> Sorry, wait. wait a minute. But why do you think they come up when it's raining? Because they're hearing the the, the noise of the yes, rain. but they know what it is. What am I doing? Why am I talking like him? Of course they don't know what it is. I, look, can worms the, hear stuff? Yeah. Well, they, they got. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything, Carl. But they, I, so, I assume they can sense vibrations and yes. so on, but they yeah. can't yeah. hear in the way we hear. No, they of course they ears, can't. Do they? Of course they can't. Well, whatever, right? So all I'm saying is that. But came what was up... this thing about these worms? They hear the tapping and go, oh, "What's that?" <laughs> right. Tell us. Okay. So, so start. You're a worm. Okay. It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you just kind of you're down there. You can't see anything. It's dark anyway. Yeah. So and you, you, you hear eyes. about this, don't you? You hear about blind people. I've got really good ears. And it's no. the same with a work. No, they do. It's an extra sense. They say. No, it's not. It's, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. They start getting used to to uh, relying on them more, but it doesn't. So you don't turn into a uh, bionic woman because you lose your eyes. No, but you do because you use them more. If you use something a lot, you get better at it. So their ears are good. So all I'm saying is, so this rain's coming down. I don't know who to believe here, Rick. The the rain's coming down on the land. The worm goes, "What's going on?" <laughs> What's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's that's what I'm saying about. The what do you mean? What do you? What is? Sorry. What is this world where he goes? Oh, it's just rain again. Oh, so that's that's the four hundredth time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically. Uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and, and it's and not thinking. It's not choosing its favourite food. But you it's, don't know that. It's the same way you're saying to me. I don't know what a worm's thinking. You don't know what it's thinking. I know it's not thinking. You don't know that though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. No, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What about <laughs> this one then? What about um? What about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again they they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All open. Right, well, Can you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> uh, I was. Do you know I've been to my mum and dad's? Right. I was yeah. talking to my mum about stuff. All right. And she was saying how um, this flower uh, solved a crime. What happened was there was a murder yeah. right, in an office. So they said it's obvious that someone who works in the office did this murder because that person's only a sort of a typist. He has, you know, they've done nothing wrong. So they said that's narrowed it down, right? So this flower man came in and he said, I can sort this out for you. So they said, what do you mean? He said, well, during the murder, the plant was knocked off the cabinet. Yeah. Right. right. Um, and he had some special wires that he can put on, special the wires. Flower, yeah. on the flower, and it's sort of shaking and stuff, because I even though you can't see it, flowers pick up bad vibes and what have you. If you shake a plant, it doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? So what happened was, uh, he said, right, what we'll do We'll put the plant back on the shelf. Yep. We'll water it. We'll calm it down. <laughs> then get <laughs> get a nice cup of tea. Then get every Think, member of staff right to right. come in the room. Yeah. And just go near the flower. Right. So don't tell them. So like a lineup for the flower. Kind yeah. of. Kind of like a lineup. Yeah, but sure. don't tell them what we're doing. Just send them yeah. in and say stand by that cabinet where yeah. the murder happened and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, it was a long day. They were getting through a lot of stuff. It was a big office block. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were going. This isn't working. You know, the flower's not budging. Mm. Suddenly, they get into like the last part of the day when they were almost giving up. They call in a sketch artist. The pla the plant gives them a some some caretaker fella. Uh, um, caretaker, yeah. Said go over there. Was it? You was know, it an so old man? That I mean, because Scooby Doo didn't like him from the beginning. <laughs> no. So uh, you know, uh, is that that why is that janitor so evil? The they send the caretaker over to the plant. He's going. You know, he's thinking I've got away with this. Of course. Yeah. Plant starts shaking. What have you? They did him. Okay, wait a minute then. So, was there any other evidence? Uh, was that the only evidence they used in the trial? Well, no, it's one of them things though. Imagine it, if you're that caretaker and you're thinking, I've got away with this, then suddenly a plant grasses you up. You weren't expecting that. So suddenly you're <laughs> off guard. And you go, you go, okay, 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 can't get that chrysanthemum away from me, I did it. 
You're talking absolute bollocks. That was one of the most <laughs> nonsense pieces of shit I've ever heard but in anyway, my life. Listen, well, it happened, but it didn't happen. You said it. But what I was saying is about the worm, right? The worm that I saw, it, like I say, it was a sunny day. I thought, you know, what's that doing up here and what have you? So anyway, so this robin that I saw that was eating the worm, it had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day and that, give the worm a break, sort of thing. So I went, oh yeah, oh, yeah, like that, and it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything, normally birds are nice noises that I like, and yet there it is going about wrecking lives. What <laughs> Wrecking lives! It was a no, worm! It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly in that, and I thought, that's life, innit? That's, that's what life is like. One minute it's there, then it's, then it's not. I just thought, there's the worm. It, it came out, it was happy, it didn't know what was going on, and the, it had an extra chance, the, the robin dropped it, and then it got it again and ate it, and I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. You People, put it off, but then it won. But that's that's the terrible thing, isn't it? The worm was going, oh God, Carl Pilkington. So that's that's who's been sent to save me, is it God? You've sent Carl Pilkington. Oh, I'm dead. That's it. Okay, eat me. But all I'm saying is our bird noises are normally quite relaxing, but not for the worm. Unbelievable. That was one question. Question seven. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a as a worm. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, the, I, why would be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton. When he says, um, what noise do you hate? What, is me or a worm? No, well, but all I'm saying is because of my last question, that's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, <laughs> that go around that. So now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's, so like, it's like anything, isn't it? Every, every noise can mean a disaster. <laughs> somewhere. Can it? Why? Why? Think of some other noises you like. Okay, what's a, a, a lovely noise? No, hang on, what's it, why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause, why would that also signify disaster? Um. Asylums. Yeah. That's depressing, isn't it? They're always laughing in asylums. But it's a scary laugh, isn't it? What? It's like, oh. If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. <laughs> No, if I, had a ba if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something, <laughs> yeah. and I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep, yeah. and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> How is this I just think the baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky, going, <laughs> well, no, the <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary, <laughs> thinking, oh Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. <laughs> oh God, a baby laughing. Oh God, come on. No, no, I'm not getting off this subject, right? So, what other sounds, right? What other sounds, right? right more, more you like. Um, well, come on, there must be sounds you like. No, the sounds, the sounds he hates are even more fascinating. Uh, oh, this terrifying, God. haunting oh. baby laugh. I don't think you can pick any sound and say I like that. I, do, I, I imagine we don't like um, the sound of a tiger. Uh, uh, evolutionary speaking, that's probably not a good sound to hear. But there are obviously some calming noises because, you know, when your mother sings you a nursery rhyme or something when you're a kid, you your know, mother's voice. Calming. Of course, your mother's voice. That that's probably pre programmed for you to to like it. Yeah. So it there's a time and a place. A lion's roar or whatever you just mentioned, a tiger growling. It's alright. If if you're in a zoo you go, Oh, look at that. <laughs> So there's a time and a place for everything, isn't there? Yeah. I don't know what that point is, I don't know how no, that right. relates. Because I mean, I, I live in London, if I woke up and heard the sea, I'd be worried. <laughs> I'd be, what's, what's going on? <laughs> You're like the worm who hears the rain. Question eight. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? And this is you as you, not as you as a worm. <sighs> but have I had the training? Oh, for fuck. Oh. No, well I've said before, haven't I, about maybe having a go at an operation. 
I don't know why it leaps from where it leaps from no ambition. Where if he could have a job, it would uh, his best job he's ever had is a paper round. And if he could have a job, he'd like go to the cobbler once a week and then walk a dog. To I'd like to have a go at thoracic surgery. No, I'm just saying. I bet it's uh, like we do this, and you know, some people like listening to it and what have you. And you go fair enough, but I never feel like I'm doing anything of any worth. No, you're absolutely right there. But if you're going into uh, a, like an hospital, which are places that are pretty miserable anyway, as a, as an office space, do you know what I mean? When you're in waiting rooms and that, I'd, l- I'd hate to have my office in uh, you know A and E. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's loads of ill people coming in. They're normally upset. Do you know what I mean? It's depre- even if the sun's out, it's a depressing building, isn't it? There's so people not, handcuffed to policemen. Not only have you got to go in that building and work in it, but you've then got the pressure of changing a lung or whatever I've said before. Right? Changing a lung, yeah. But I'd like to have a go at it so I can say- You've done it. I've done that. So uh, uh, under what circumstances, in, in what world, do you think anyone's gonna let you have a go at changing a lung and that? Um, Jim will fix it? No, I'm just saying the Comic way- Comic relief? But the way the world is- and the way that there's more and more people, more and more doctors are needed. I mean, it's already happening now that people are doing jobs that they're not really qualified for because they get, they get sort of, uh, what's the word? Sort of uppered. Too early. Uppered. <laughs> <laughs> uppered! Uppered! I love the fact- it's basic language. It's like, it, I, I, it's unbelievable. It's like there are only sort of like 50 words in the English language, so he has to like, you know, change them and customise them. Uppered. Do you know you what I mean? They, promoted. Yeah, promoted. Yeah. They get they get promoted. I prefer Uppard. Uppard's great. So Why so, was I not Uppard? Unbelievable. So do you know what I mean? I think because because more and more people are knocking about, we need more and more doctors. Yeah. You get a job in a doctor's, you're gonna be promoted sooner now, I think. Yeah. But uh, what I'd do is I'd 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 probably upper you and then um, what's the word? You go away them, you- I think it is, you go away them. You you, you leave the door, you. You leave the door, you- Fire them. That's it, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'd, I'd upper you and go away the doctor, if anything. Uh, but I've been to, uh, you know how I don't like going to the doctors and stuff? Yeah. Because right? um, you're always scared that they might investigate below the bridge. Yeah, but I checked on that before, I signed up to it, and then they said, right, before we can take you on as a patient, um, you've got to have a health check. Right, which I thought was odd, because it's almost like saying, if you're ill, you can't be having you coming here, right? But I said, right, okay, fair enough, what, what is this health check? And they said, oh, you know, we just check your body out and make sure you're fit and healthy. And I thought, that isn't enough information, you know, I want to know if it's the old finger trick, <laughs> or, and, and I said, what, what do you mean though, when you said health check, what do you do? And, uh, she said, oh, it's just, I think she knew what I was getting at. And right. she said, oh, it's just the blood pressure. Uh, your height, your height, your weight. Uh, okay. That's about it. So I went, went and had it and stuff. But you had to, before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor, they give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away? Right, like a donor. Mm. And it had like, um, uh, it's basically everything you've got in you. It was all your main bits, your liver, your heart, your kidney, uh, and what have you, and I thought, I, I was, I really thought about it for a 40 minutes or so, I didn't just rush into it, I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff, but I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, why, what do you mean, what, cause that, can they have your eyes after you die? It was, it was, I think it was fourth on the list. Right. So they just sort of crammed it in. I think they know everybody's a bit cautious about giving no, their eyes no, away. No, no one cares more about the eyes than the liver or the... Nah. the why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when you're just, dead? Just because of that thing of, you know, we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo-poo it, but the afterlife thing. Right, they're, 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 yeah, but yeah. You, don't, you don't know for sure if... Well, if wh- wh- why would there be, how would there be, how would it work? Why, why do you think there's an afterlife? Why do you think there's, why... Uh, uh, because we're here already, it, it blows my mind that we're wandering about this planet anyway. Do you know what I mean? The fact that we're here, just by... Gravity ma- blows your mind, Carl. No, but do you know what I mean? The, the fact of your mum and dad have it away and then you just pop out and it's like, how's that happened? And then it's <laughs> well, the What happens that- is the father <laughs> inserts his- No, but, but what I mean is, you know, not just that bit, the f- uh, how I've said before about me art, just 
sort of pumping away on its own. No one's keeping an eye on it. It's not plugged into anything. No. And yet, I want to move my hand like that, and it does it. Yeah. That blows me away, right? Yeah. I mean, you're still so, worried about whether you control your brain or the brain controls you. So what I'm saying is, how do you know what goes on after life? Because, do you know what I mean? If so what? So why? So why in an afterlife do do would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart? Because ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> Because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it's amazing! So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, you, this ghostly Carl, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why, do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body, no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, Say like how they've seen ghosts in, um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when I, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff. Mm, yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out, but Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. just happens it, to be carrying it around because it no, you know wants to keep it with it. The ghost it, is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in. Oh, what oh, makes these rolls? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever, even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghost that you see you never wear modern clothes. So they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they're stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about 1830, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. But you, uh, it, you might have both been suddenly. Um, Killed in a in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. A meteorite hit you, or the, well, that's, you know. that's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round bent forward. Going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You start going oh, and that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> they, they have to put you to to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going? Are you go so I so I get the vicar round. Um, Okay, right. Well, this See, I don't want to get caught with my with someone <laughs> with their finger up my ass when the vicar's come round. The last thing I want to get, do, catch me is the vicar coming oh, in when I've got a, a yeah. doctor's finger up my ass. I usually hide in the wardrobe yeah, when that happens. Whenever that happens. So listen, oh, so it. no, wait, 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 wait. So, so you're you're haunting, right? It's years later. It's a hundred years later. You're 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 around this doctor's surgery, and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's it's twenty seventy three, and they, they go, vicar. Vicar. They go, Vicar, there's a, there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right, and he's got his fingers up this sort of like little, it's like a chimpanzee but with a shaved head. No, no, but the doctor wouldn't be, are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? They as you both, yeah, you both yeah, they both die. Yeah, you die at the same time with his finger up your ass, and so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Here's, what here's a load of bollocks this, <laughs> this is. This is extraordinary. No, but listen, <laughs> listen, listen to this. Listen to this. This right. is a good one. Oh, this like will convince us this one. Yeah, this way, okay. Answer this. This would be proof. Go on. I watched the programme the other week about, um, mm. dead people. Of course you did. Right? And it was, it was people who had been found in their house, you know, they haven't got any family. Yeah. Um, they died, sat in their armchair. Nobody's knocking on the door, ringing them and checking if they're all right. Yeah. Right? So they die. Yeah. And they rot away in a chair. No. Oh. People, you know, the next door neighbour called up called up whoever you call up for dead people and go, there's a dead body next door, it's stinking, can you come and get rid of it? Right? Mm. They go in and- I forget what service that is. <laughs> I don't know where you find that in the yellow pages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a good business though, yeah. isn't it? 
Hello, corpse <laughs> removal. <laughs> Stinky dead people. So they go in, there's flies everywhere. Of course there is, yeah. yeah. The doors and the windows are shut. Where are them flies from? So what do you mean? Do you know that thing, reincarnation? Yeah. I think there it is, there's an example of it, how there was no flies in there, a body rots yeah. away, out of the body comes flies, so you live yes. on. Or, out of the body comes flies from the maggots that were in the body. Well, okay, maggot then. So we've, we've gone on, we've lived on. What, what do you mean? The, the, I'm just the saying fly no, isn't a on. reincarnation of the maggot, the maggot is the larval stage of the fly. No, but I'm, forget all the maggot fly. Right. Think about going from man to a fly. What are you talking about? I'm saying the windows and the doors on this house were shut. Shut yeah. tight. Now no, your no question flies is- No got in. They what? hadn't got in. They, they had got, got in. They hadn't. They'd, They'd already there. We're surrounded by them. We've probably got fly eggs on us now. Well, all, all I'm saying is, it's weird that them flies were in there when they weren't in there. I don't think this fella would have had loads of fly eggs on him. But I just think it's a bit odd. Why? What do you mean? I just <laughs> think it, uh, there was loads of them. You didn't see it. But it only takes one fly to lay loads of eggs. Yeah, but... So you think it's wiser to ignore Ricky's answer and go with your ghostly supernatural reincarnation one? You think that's the that's the wise, sensible way to go? I just this? think it's a bit odd how every time someone's got fly eggs on them. So, so, everybody... so that, to you, is uh, uh, less of a chance of happening than when you die, some of you turns into flies. Fly parts. Well, that happened when my dad chucked a turkey away in a bin, and it was only in there for about a day. I went to go and put like a crisp packet in the bin at the end of the garden, and yeah. you, picked the lid off, full of flies. Yeah. Now the the bid lid, the lid bin, the bin lid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a constant fight with his own brain. <laughs> was was fairly sealed and what have you. Yeah. Again, it's it's the turkey living on. No, it's not. We're it's the fact the that while it was out on the table... It hadn't been out on the table. We didn't eat it in the end because it had feathers on it. My mum said, I'm not doing that. Yeah, well, the <laughs> what? what do you mean it had feathers on it? My dad got it off a mate and said, yeah, I've got this for Christmas, but it was yeah. still it was still virtually alive. And my mum <laughs> said, oh, I'll just get one from the supermarket. So we put it in the bin. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm saying is... The I'm telling you, the, the eggs were already on it, mate. It's just an idea of that. It's a theory. Everyone's allowed one. But it's bollocks. Mm. Back to the Inside the Actors Studio questions. Question nine. What profession, Carl, would you not like to do? Um. You see, in a way, some bad jobs are good jobs in a way. Because, one, it means that when you have holiday, you really appreciate it. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, you see, I always thought, like, when, um, when I had a job where I, I used to have to do, like, four hours a night when I worked through the night, I only had four hours to do from two in the morning till six, right? But it meant that when I was on holiday, I never really appreciated it, because between two and six, I'd be asleep anyway. So, unless I got up at two in the morning and went, ah, I'm relaxing now, instead of working, you don't get the full- I don't know what you're talking about. I <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. The rules that you live by about uh, what you can enjoy no, and what you can't. What's good with a holiday, right? If you work, say if you work in a factory from eight in the morning till eight at night, yeah. packing socks into a, a rubber bag, right? Between eight and- what time did I say me? Eight. Shift <laughs> eight, eight. <laughs> It's a 12 hour, it's a 12 hour <laughs> sock packing job. <laughs> it is murder. <laughs> I am so like, it socks into a rubber bag. <laughs> yeah. I love to get my socks in a rubber bag. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and also he forgot, he forgot the timings immediately. He said the sentence, then it went out of his head. It's like, it's like, if you're packing, you from, uh, what time did I say it was? What are they packing? So, alright, so you're a sock stuffer, you do a 12 hour shift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. So, you go, oh, come on, Rita, no more socks for me. I don't want to see another sock for a week. Have you got the rubber bag? Don't bring the rubber bag. That's the last thing I want to see. So what I mean is, when you're on the beach, right, by the sea, mm. between eight and eight, you're thinking, oh, this time yesterday I was packing socks in a rubber bag. And you can really enjoy it. You can keep going, Oh, uh, an hour late you can go, oh, I was packing yeah. socks yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you can I'm keep glad you enjoyed love. Will you stop going about the fucking socks? <laughs> <laughs> right on, <dear. laughs> I don't think this marriage is gonna last. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, look, Rita, I was- I know, you were packing fucking socks yesterday. <laughs> Let's not fucking talk about it for a week, you boring bastard. <laughs> oh, Rita, <laughs> what? <laughs> this time is- I know, you were packing fucking socks in a rubber cunting bag. No, I was having lunch at this time, you fucking slut. <laughs> oh, Christ almighty. <sighs> so what I was saying is, I was- when I was working from two in the morning till six- Six. To really enjoy, enjoy being off, off from there, if I was on holiday, you'd have to get up in the middle of the night to go. Oh, this time yesterday this is the time I was it's playing. Late. Surely fun. the joy is not having to get up in the middle of the night. Then when you get up and thought, oh, God, thank God I don't have to get up in the middle of the night like I usually do. I slept through like a normal person. Surely that's no, the joy. I think the joy is going. Oh, I'm normally doing this at this time. But that's ridiculous because if you worked right till six a.m., you presumably went to bed and slept in till sort of three in the afternoon or something, yeah. Uh, so depends. you'd be up at ten a.m. going, "Wow, usually I'm asleep," so you get it then. So you're talking shit again. And the final question from the inside the actor studio questionnaire: If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh. No, what do you I'm, mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know, uh, you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates. I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> if he owns the place, what's he doing there? He could put well, anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. Okay, well let's say it's St. No, Peter. No, 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 you go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you're expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through the guard, you go through the guard, go through a few doors, go up, up, up the, the, the top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office, okay, that overlooks the universe. And yeah. God says, why have you got a doctor with his finger up your ass? <laughs> And you go, well, you should know, you <laughs> caused it. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like God to say to you at that point? He might offer you great wisdom, he might ask you a question, he might tell you something, what would you like him to say? Um, and is this just one, one visit, this is like, because it's my first day, yeah, it's the first a chat day, with yeah. him. You get a chat with him, yeah. But after that, I don't. Well, I've you might bump into him at the, 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 you know, the, the Christmas uh, the, party, the AGM. But I'm not yeah. going to be myself, am I? I'm going to be a, in shock a little bit because it's like, I mean, I, I'm not comfortable on the first day of holiday because you're in different surroundings, the hotel. You've got to get used to where everything is. Yeah. So he's okay. not going to get the best out of me. Well, to be no, honest. but you have eternal bliss. Yeah, you've got, you got, yeah, you got, got a long time to get to know, you, and he knows everything anyway. So don't worry about it. So what's, why does he see me? Then? What's the? F what would you want God to say to you? So you walk in there, you're you're happy with it because you understand now you're dead and well, it's a whole new world and everything's all right. You feel great. Like what am I saying? Well, anyway, I'm going along with this drivel. Yes. What would you like God to say to you? Um. All right. Probably just just say, oh, um, uh, you've done well in that in your life. Um, you never did anybody any harm. Um, so, welcome to the to heaven. Um, any problems? Give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of of like a you know like a little map. It's kind of like <laughs> I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So hang on, he's giving you a little map. So he's giving you a little map of the little area. Map, it's and sort of say this is where you go for this. This is where you go for that. Um, I'd I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then, or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit sort of shirts, you know, a little bit- Bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even want to! No, but oh, the, because the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all that in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, okay. what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. So who's the worst person that you go to heaven and it's all great and God goes, oh look, and here's so and so and you go, oh, I don't know, what's he doing here? Yeah, um, but why, why would he be introducing me to that one? Oh. No, I'm saying who's the worst person you'd like to see? And Who do go, you just not want to encounter in heaven? <sighs> um. What if, what if he said, right Carl, you're in heaven, 
But, uh, we've got to teach you a lesson. You're a bit cruel to freaks. Here's Pillow Man. Here's the three-legged juggler. Here's the elephant man. They've got a few questions. Yeah, that, that'd be alright. Elephant be Man enough. goes, Why did you talk about me like that? I'd say I never had a go at you. Why did you talk about me eating buns? But then, I'd, I'd get a bit annoyed with God. I'd, I'd turn Elephant Man onto God. I'd say, well, hang on a minute. At least when he put his head down on that pillar and he did himself in, he did that because he was sick of life. You've brought him up here, he's still got the head. Why didn't you give him a, a better head whilst he was up here in his next life? Well, he could say the same to you. Heaven's beginning to sound like one of the worst <laughs> drinks do's ever. It's awful. Everyone's sort of making kind of snipey comments and you're having to make conversations with people you don't really want to talk to. Yeah, it is. God, I'm not sure God's the best host. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like do this. Do you think I'm God just... would like this podcast? Um, uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that he's just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea God's bored. Yeah. Is it a lot to keep him going? <laughs> oh, God. Playing solitaire on the computer. <laughs> I know, yeah. But I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London does me head in. Up there, it's gonna be well busier than that. <laughs> and what are you- so you're all- you're- presumably you're all naked. Why has that happened? Well, because he didn't- he didn't want Adam and Eve to put clothes on, did he? He was annoyed at the snake and everything and he- so you're all back to nature, you're all naked, so you're all walking around naked, right? Yeah. But- So you- so you're up there, you- you know, you- 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 you're up there just naked talking to, um, Graham Norton and, and stuff like that. But I'd have to get used to that. If I go up there and he goes, right, you're welcome to heaven and that, and I go, alright, oh, I've made it to heaven, and he goes, yeah. yeah. Right, uh, put your clothes in the bin bag. No, no, you, you, you're up there, you're already naked. Right, you, you I'd just... go, well, I'd say, I'd say, this is a bit odd. Why? Uh, you wouldn't worry about it though, would you? Yeah, but it's just odd, innit? It's something different, and it, something different, you know. Well, no, you've been naked you? before, you've been naked before. Yeah, but I don't roam about with people around me. But they're naked. not people. You'd have to get used to that. They're, heaven, they're heavenly creatures. They're, no, but they're... I'd have to get, I'd say, look, can you just leave me for like four days just to get used to this idea? Four days, okay. Four days, just, just to get used to wandering about, and I'd be in my house, and I'd what house? look out. The house that I'm living in. Well, you don't live in a house in heaven, you just wander around on clouds, don't you? All naked and just... Oh, I, I, it's getting worse. I don't think it's that good. <laughs> it's not fair, though, because all them lot have been up there ages with, like, a chance to get a bit of sun on the body and that, so they'll look alright. I'll be wandering about with, like, underpant marks and stuff. <laughs> underpant marks! <laughs> Carl, we're often accused of bullying you. This is a, a recurring thing, isn't it, that we bully you? But both of us, and, Carl, and Ricky in particular, is always concerned about your well-being, um, particularly in Alaska, if you recall. You are not going to be eaten by a polar bear. But when you had your medical, I found out that you didn't let them test your prostate, did you? No. No. But that's, that's... Why not? In the UK alone, more people die every year from prostate cancer than being savaged by a polar bear. It's a bit of a weird time to bring it up when I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the biggest killers, right? And, and that's just a simple test. So a doctor pops his finger up your anus and he goes, yep, you're all clear. And that's you relaxed for another year. I, I, I don't understand why you're suddenly caring about this now. I've got little battery left on this phone. I'm wearing the battery out. If right. something happens, I'm dead. Right. He's my best mate, sue me, I'm worried about him. Yeah, yeah. No, but why isn't there ever anything about, how's your blood pressure? Or how oh. are your feet, you, you're in the cold, are you warm enough? Are you, no, because it was none of that, it was, yes, I know. why don't you get a finger up your arse? Because often there are no symptoms. Well, I don't want it done. I know you don't, but it's good for you, so, um, can we bring the doctor out, please? Right, well, this is a waste of time, then. This is Frank, um, it's Carl. Frank. How's it going? You alright? Good, Good to see you. Is the uh, consultant urologist at um, St Bart's? Yeah, St Bart's. Bart's. Yeah. yeah. The thing about uh, prostate cancer is you can be perfectly well and yet still have uh, prostate cancer. 
And one of the ways that we can detect if that may be a problem is a rectal examination. The thing with um, just uh, feeling... I don't want a finger up the arse, no, though. Wait, you keep wait. going on about this. Right. I've told you time and time again. I'm going to presume That's... there's a lot of ill people knocking around that Frank should be looking at. Instead, he's here debating with you two whether he's going to shove his finger up the arse. How long will it take if you did it now? If you went... No, wait, how long will it... 15 seconds. 15, 15 seconds. That's a long time. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, what are you looking for? <laughs> what we're looking for, OK, it's two things we're looking for. One is the size of the prostate gland. <laughs> Number two, it's the consistency of it. In other words, what it, what it feels like. It's a, it's a quick, simple thing to do. Carl, can I tell you what's going to happen? It's going to be about ten seconds. He's going to say, you're all clear. You're going to say, what was the fuss about? And you know you haven't got prostate cancer. But not, not today. There's no better time. Cause maybe, it can... maybe it's that you and I and the cameras and that are making it a bit intense. Oh, we've maybe got if a private went privately to we've another room. room. We've got a private room. You may as well check his testicles while you're there. <laughs> so what's, what's the... What's the rules there? What's... I mean, I know it's important things to have done. Yeah. But it's just the way they go about it. Mm. I've been travelling around the world in dangerous places. They've never cared about me before. Mm. Yet today, they keep going on about having this done. Men are embarrassed about these things, you know? We're not used to these things. But for the sake of something that really is very quick and, pa and painless, we're talking about potentially saving a life. And before you know it, it's done and it's over. I know, but it's just that. I do this day in, day out. That's what you do, seriously, every day? Yeah. Every day of my working life, that's what I do. And are you going to move up and do, get to do something better, or is this your future now? Just sticking your finger it's, up my phone and it's, it's part of my, it's just part of the job, you know. A lot of time I spend in, in operating. A lot of time I spend in clinics. So how many people are you doing a day? 10 to 20, maybe. And which finger is it? Is it a big one or a little one? It's the index finger. Why is that? Why not just a little? Because the, the prostate lies a little bit, a little bit in. If you get your hand, you couldn't, you, you just couldn't do that with your little finger. So you're going round a corner, you've got to go in and round. No, you've got to go in and then a slight, slight twist. It's, it's the thought is worse than actual delivery, let's, let's put it that way. It's the thought of it. All right. And okay. I, I, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's do it then. Let's do it. Do you wear gloves? Oh, sorry, yes. Do you know Richard Blackwood? Yes, the uh, comedian, yes. Yeah, he had, he had a, a colonic on telly, yeah. never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's far worse. So, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then, what you need to do is you need to bend your knees up. Yeah. I'm going to put that arm over there. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some lubricating gel. I'll just... <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is... I'm, if I may, I'm just going to pop, yeah. pop, pop your trousers down. Bend your knees up a bit more. Come towards me a bit more. So you yeah, just catch marvellous, OK? Take a deep breath. Deep breath. And out, OK? And relax, breathe normally. I'm just going to pop a finger in there, OK? Deep breath, well done. Jesus, well done. that's high up. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right, that's surely enough, isn't it? Right, you're touching well a lung. Well done. Oh. Well done. Well done. <laughs> the prostate's fine. Well Woo! Well done, oh God! Well done. Brilliant. I don't think it's the sort of thing people pay us guy a subscription for, to be honest. <laughs> In HD. Well done. Cheers for that, then, Frank. Now you are a doctor, are you? <laughs> He just said to me, because he was shaking, because he said to me, and the, I, I quote, he said, oh, he's just uh, whittering to himself, I must remember to eat next time <laughs> Suzanne's away. I know. I know. I, I like must to remember to eat next time Suzanne's away. No, but you did, I mean, I wonder if I lived on my own if I'd still be about. <laughs> <laughs> because I just neglect myself. Yeah. So, I mean, for all I've eaten A lot morning, of self-abuse, is that I what you're had, saying? I had lasagna last night that I messed up. Right? Why did you mess it up? I cooked it for too long. It was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and she called up and said, have you eaten? I went, yeah. She went, was it nice what you have? I said, lasagna. Was it nice? I thought, I don't want her to worry, cos she's probably been out and had a good meal with all the work people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, well, I'm, you know. And she went, okay, bye, bye. And I go, that car again. Yeah, I bet he cooked it like a brick. <laughs> yeah. I bet he yeah. threw it away. Anyway. Gin <laughs> and tonic. <laughs> yeah. And I had, uh, scotch pancakes for breakfast. That is all I've had.
So I'm starving, I'm shaky. Plus I've got that restless leg syndrome still going on. <laughs> which I can't get rid of. What's restless leg syndrome? I find, uh, if I go to bed, right, my body's tired but my legs aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like Michael Flatley? <laughs> you have to get up and do a bit of tap dancing. Do they, do they just keep going even just when keep, you're asleep? Keep moving about, so I have to get up and stretch them or something. Or I've worked out that if if I put a pillar on like the bedpost down at the other end, yeah. if I have my legs higher than my heart, it calms it down a bit. Is this why Suzanne works away so often? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> to get a decent night's sleep. I put it down to smarties and that. It's like a sugar thing, but yeah. um, stop eating them. Apparently, Bob Morton has got it as well. No, he's got arthritis. Was he? You told yeah. me the week that you've mastered uh, moonwalking. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Is that I'm one of the things you did, like, in the middle it, of the it night? Can, it's it's, it's uh, moon sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just did gets out, he finds himself walking backwards and yeah. wakes up and goes, oh god, <laughs> I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant at this. Um, medical problems then. I've got, I've got a couple of things under the banner of, uh, colon then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, this is interesting, right? Do you know if you have a, an operation on your brain, <laughs> right, what yeah. they do is, the, I mean this is why I'd never go to the doctors, I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out, right, they can operate on your brain and what they do is, they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> <laughs> your skull, yeah. Your yeah. brain case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you sat there, with your head open, yeah. messing with your brain, and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? <laughs> is it what, you think they do it for fun? No, they go, oh, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he looks freaked out. Go well, on, is, it, is, it, is it necessary that you're awake, do you think, or...? Well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep, you're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. Go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But, so your brain's still, your brain's <laughs> still- Where is this conversation? Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out, I go, no, Carl, I was there, that wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but, so, I mean, if I had an operation- On your brain, heaven forbid. Well, <laughs> operation anywhere, I'd like to sort of think, well, I'll have an injection, I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah, yeah. The fact that- your brain the case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? They say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you, and your yeah, brain- See, I don't think they do that. I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything but Carl wh says. Wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. Well, they, they give you a out. telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. No, but do you know, like, when you- when What are you- what are you telling me? What are I'm you asking me? I'm just saying how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? It's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be- a When bit you go for a haircut? It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's wet and I used to hate it and I think do you have to do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I similar. Mean, it's very similar to uh, open um, skull no, surgery. What I'm saying yeah. is, it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit. And there's women coming in and out and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that? Do you think they do it in a shop window? This brain operation? I'm just saying it's a bit. Weird. Do you think, why are we doing it in John Lewis's? Just so more people I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain Look case. at the twatty look for this brain <laughs> out of his head. Take a Polaroid. Red, take yeah, a take Polaroid. Take a look at him, look, 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 <laughs> at, look, at, look at his face. Right, do, look, right, clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl, this fake nose and glasses sorry, on. Sorry, is that- did you teach me something then? Was that well, educational? I taught you that your brain- your brain case can be open with you awake. And you just sat there sort of letting them get on with it. Brilliant, I've learned that. I'll never forget that. Right, go on, anything else? So, right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on. short story, so, right, uh, old woman, about seventy years old, yeah. uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff, nothing wrong with her, she's having a good life, and, uh, one day, she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out, cause she's yeah. getting on a bit, yeah. uh, she says, take your clothes off and that, so she does, and, uh, checks her out, says, yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good, uh, turn round, uh, he said, oh god. He says you've got a, a tumour on your buttock, right? 
So she goes, oh, what well, can you do anything to sort it out? So they go, yeah, 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 we could get book you in for an operation, it's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation, operation day comes, strip her down and that, they're all stood round, the doctors, start to operate, it only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to a buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I'm, I'm, you. I'm, I'm honest. Not, right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay. No, I'm serious. Me, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, You're talking. I, I, I've never had any such. But you are play record. Play record. <laughs> I can't believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record. Stop the record. Stop the record. Right. Okay. Right. What do you mean you couldn't believe it? No. When I read it, I said I've got to uh, tell Richard. This woman I had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. Not this other day. Yeah. Um. Oh, what was it now? <laughs> it's listen, I felt Play like. Listen, do you want this? All right. All right. No, oh, on, right. He's got it now. Go on. Go on. This fella goes yeah. to the doctors. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Right. If this isn't any way apocryphal, stupid, illogical, impossible, right? You are never ever speaking again on radio. So make sure this is at least possible. I I'll tell you what. I'll even give you improbable. But possible. So if there's anything that breaks the laws of the universe or logic, okay, that's all you have to avoid. On you go. Right. So this fella, right, he goes to the doctors because he's got earache. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. If a chimp's living in his brain, <laughs> that he go gives, on. Go on. So he's got earache. He's sat in the waiting room and it's all his ears all bunged up and it's hurting a lot and what have you. So the doctor comes out and he goes, <laughs> right, and because his ears all bunged up, he doesn't hear it that well, right. So he thinks it must have been me. Right, so he wanders in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to hate this. I can just feel it in my bones. Steve, I'm going <laughs> to let you take over. Okay, let's, so, go on, let's hear it. Come so okay. the doctor says, uh, sit yourself down there. Right, so he sits himself down. He goes, uh, right, uh, take your pa take your pants off. Right, <laughs> so he's saying that's a bit odd. Anyway, he uh, he heard that though. He <laughs> he, he uh, apparently he took his his tackle off. The doctor like did some operation. What, there in the waiting room? <laughs> no, in his office. In his office, yeah. What? Um, wait, wait, so, so he, so he removed what? His genitals? Yeah. In, in his office. Why, 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 Carl? Why, Carl? Because he hadn't called him in. Oh, he's calling the bloke who wanted his testicles <laughs> taken off, and he didn't do it. You, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, so the doctor went out and said, Mr. Uh, Jones, who's here to <laughs> me to whip off your cock and balls, just here and now, right? Bloke comes in, didn't it? It must have been me. So the bloke with the boy wanted his balls taken off didn't say, oh, I think he said me. So he, so he didn't interrupt <laughs> then. So the bloke goes in, he starts taking his testicles off and he doesn't say it on him. Alright. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, right, emergency and that. Had a, uh, tube put on my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in. To be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's it's like at Zoo Keep going, all oh, that sloth move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here, it's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs, I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true, because your girlfriend was carrying it, I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, oh, carry this. So. Mighty. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they you know, they would say they're unconscious. So, yeah. they don't whinge about it, they get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> So, you rush to hospital. So tell her, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain. I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage is being done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. did it got badder, did it? So then I thought, I, I, oh, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony. Looking on the internet, looking for a sort of Still solutions. looking at monkey news. Uh, <laughs> I was just, I just put in like belly ache and stuff and they were saying it, it can be loads of different things. 
Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing, the cold has got it. Well, what, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this is like... A witch doctor happens to work in a pub. It's like some sort of 5th century remedy yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. Yeah. Uh, Why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were they sort of old cold. <laughs> They're all cold. I don't know what this is. I, mean, it's I love this idea that he's, he, uh, he's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr. Pilkington's he's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. goes, oh, good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old it's, cold. Yeah, we understand, we understand every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh, <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly madness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Madness, it's, uh, uh the, the yeah. history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just, you know, it, if, So, if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass and that holds the cold. But we don't smoke in our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's madness. A plate's not going to work. Famously, a, pla a, pla a oh plate doesn't God, work. Oh, God, no! Oh, God. So you put, a, a, uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any no, work. That, that, that didn't work, so uh, I called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctors then. Good advice. So A lot of people have done that straight away, as opposed <laughs> to going through the plate. Ashtray. ashtray <laughs> <laughs> so he got into hospital and they went to hospital and he said, Have you got an ashtray? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went no, this, ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> so anyway, so then we get in a cab and whatever you go there, I have an x ray. His voice is even more boring than usual, it's isn't, it? isn't it? Yeah. Fuck me. And they put me on a drip and everything, give me some morphine and stuff, and found out that I had kidney stones. So, that's why I was in hospital. And they get them out by... I can't even... I don't know what's gone on, to be honest. Oh, I've on. got some tube inside me. From my kidney to my bladder. That's helping me stuff get about. That's and so, there's a little tube up the end of your knob, into your... Yeah, it's not there now, it's right... it's high up. Right. So it's high up between my kidney and my bladder. But why didn't you have the thing where they go in the side? You had the choice to... Because I said to the doctor, I said, I'm not a doctor. I said, what do you <laughs> he think... He went, stop putting yourself down, <laughs> Carl. He said, we need you in the operating <laughs> theatre now. He just said, you know, I said to him, what, what should I have done? Because he said, if you want, go home um, and we'll get you in again or something. I said, something like that. And I said, no, I might as well have it done properly. Have it done now whilst I'm here. Sorry, the choice was have it done properly or go home. It was it was something like that. He said he said there's there's something you can do, and I said oh flush it out. Um, no, because it's too big. It's something like seven millimeters. And it was it's basically because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I said, what do you think I should have done? And he said, tube up the knob. And I said, hmm, not my favourite one of the choice, but if you if that's what you think. So he said, yeah, have that. He did me little diagrams, which didn't help. <laughs> he was like showing. How big like, did he draw your knob? Uh, <laughs> sort of normal size. Yeah, was yeah, it? It was all right. You weren't offended by uh, them. Well, he wanted into detail. It's just you know more the tube and stuff and your yeah. bladder and your kidney. What was your ball bag like? Did he draw that? He didn't do that, but he left that bit out. Okay. Right. But, um, <laughs> but he said, oh, "We'll just pop that up there," and uh, and then that's when Ricky turned up to visit. They uh, came in laughing at me because we sat there in like me underpants and stockings. <laughs> in stockings? Yeah. Yeah. Why were you? He was there. Him? No, he wasn't in bed. He was sort of out of bed with his little drip, right? He had his little box of shorts on, just sat there, right, in his pants, right, and he had stockings on. Yeah, because they stop clots or something. They put them on your legs. It's like you know when people have got big veins and they go on a plane. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you said you're not a doctor. No, but I've, I've seen it, because Suzanne's mum did it, and it was, she put them on ridiculously early, like three days before we were going away, and that. <laughs> I've never been away before, and it, everything was, like, over the top, do you know what I mean? She's like, I best put them on. And, uh, so, so I put them on, and they, like, I don't know what it is, it's something when you're in, when you're under, your blood doesn't move about the same. Right. And it can clot up in your leg. So you wear these tight tights. And I came in to cheer them up, didn't I? Yeah. 
Was that a nice cheery experience, him coming in? Uh, I had a headache at the time. I think I was a bit stressed out. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just the man you want at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, he reassured you, I imagine. Well, it, it's weird how it suddenly all happened quick. It was like, as soon as he came in, it's like they got the finger out. And when I started Not literally. Having, having, <laughs> having, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I suddenly I was being rushed down to, you know, have me stuff done. And uh, I woke up and there was an Irish woman over me going, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, oh, it's stinging a bit. She said, I'll give you some more morphine. And I sort of put my head up to have a look at my tackle, because I wanted to see... If it was still there. ...what, what was attached to it. Do you know what I mean? Because they said something about they might leave some string hanging out of it, so they can pull the tube out. And it makes you talk. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had a, I had a look for that, couldn't, couldn't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, but as you put the morphine in, all the muscles in your body go funny. My head just collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Your head collapsed. You yeah, I sort of looked up to look at my stuff, but then she said, oh, you just need a little bit of morphine. And she put that in, and I just sort of went, Oof. And then uh, they sent me home about two hours after. Oh. But I'm in agony now, and, uh Are you in agony right now as we speak? Yeah, certainly. Now, are you a man who's had this kind of hospital experience before? Is this I your whole first go. time? I don't go, do it to hospitals and stuff, because I don't like them messing about. Uh, but it does make you think now, do you know what I mean? Like life and everything. From, I mean, it's weird how it's all happened in the last month from seeing that bee sort of die. No, no, well, not really. No, you, no, 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 no. This is not a near-death experience. It is you had a routine bit. operation to remove kidney stones because you don't drink enough water. No, I know, but... This is not a shark attack. Yeah, but it's all, it's all, uh, life-threatening, otherwise you wouldn't have to fill out forms, would you, saying, if everything goes wrong, Suzanne can have the house or whatever. And then you, you find out more about the body as well, which has been sort of doing me head in a bit. You're more aware of stuff in your body, which I don't like knowing about. Yeah. They keep taking your heartbeats and stuff, mm. and your blood pressure. I don't like knowing about that. I just like, leave it. It's happening. Don't be messing with it. Stop measuring it. <laughs> Stop measuring it! No, do you know what That's I mean? Same no, with it's, the it's, it's that thing of, <laughs> of like, they put that thing That's on. what the anaesthetist was doing when you were under, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was comparing the diagram to the actual thing. Oh, God. The fella across the way from me had had the same thing as me, but he'd had it a couple of days ago when he was in agony. So that doesn't help when he's saying, oh, I've been to Ellen back. Oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> sure. I don't want to know. Just say it was, it was all right and stuff. So, uh, it just, the, the whole thing of a hospital is stressful. Do you know what I mean? They wake you up, like, every half an hour in the night, saying, how do you feel? It's like, oh, what, you know, it's half past three. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I've got to have it done again in a couple of weeks. Because, um, what they've done now, they've popped pop that straw up, but the stone's still in there, because they didn't have the laser team in with them. Blast the stone, and then, that time, they're probably going to leave a little bit of string out the end. Then they have to go about three days later, and they pull it out. I was out the other day, right? A woman came up to me, she said, Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, you go to the gym much? So, uh, I was gonna lie, but they, they find out, don't they? They say, where do you go and all that, and how many star jumps can you do? She said, uh, she said, I know what's probably putting you off. She said, the fact that it's hard work, she said, it doesn't, doesn't need to be hard work. She said, come to my class, she said, what we do on Wednesday nights, breathing classes. Classes teaching you how to breathe. I said, I'm 32, I think I've got the hang of it. She said, no, it's not that, I said, forget it. See, I think the reason there's so many gyms in London is because of the amount of gay people who are here now. And I'm not, I'm not having a go, I'm not, I'm not complaining about it, I'm just saying gay people, they always sort of like to look after themselves, don't they? They're always sort of muscly and that, sort of tight t-shirts and stuff whenever you see them. Um, um, you know what I mean, I'm not looking out for them, I'm just saying, when I do see them, they're sort of muscly and that. So because there's, there's more of them, more gyms are needed. But then the problem is, the more gyms we have, the less other shops we have because the space they take up. The other weekend, I just wanted to do some painting and decorating in the flat, I thought, right, I need some, uh, need some brushes and some paint. You, you wouldn't think that'd be hard to find in London. Yet yeah, couldn't find anywhere. Couldn't find any sort of hardware shop, DIY shop. Yeah, if they had a nurse to do some sit-ups, you know what I mean? I'd be spoke for choice. I look in some of my uh, girlfriend's magazines. 
and it's all like you know eat this don't eat that drink water the amount of times people are telling me you know you don't drink enough water you your dad's like 60 odd right I've never seen him have a pint of water yet they're telling us we should have like seven pints a day or something and then they wonder why there's a water drought on there's a fella on the telly the other week who was saying um, we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime so we shouldn't be shouldn't be wasting them should we we shouldn't be running around lifting weights and all that now look at the tortoise never rushes about right yeah it lives to be about 250 years old you know what I mean when was the last time you heard about a tortoise having a heart attack doesn't happen and they keep coming up with daft ways of sort of keeping fit don't they paintball you know what I mean chucking paint at each other I don't know where they're getting the paint from no no it's something when I was looking on the web yeah. found something out go on um it's a story about yeah. a woman who had a baby <laughs> who had a baby <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> what a, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby <laughs> it was no, it was no clearer right. when you repeated it no I can't I don't know what to do I don't know what to do for the common good right pursue this line of inquiry right because I don't know where it's going or play a record I I am actually torn I don't know what to do no I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that it's brilliant what uh, should we, what should we do? Should we, should we go with it? It's, uh, I mean, it's like, it's entering into the abyss, it's opening Pandora's box, it's, <laughs> it's peeking by, it's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions though. Go on then. Well, come down there with me. <laughs> okay, come down right. in the cellar with me. Okay, right. Carl, what, 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 first of all, it was on the way, what, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another, was it, she didn't give birth, they didn't, the doctor didn't find one of those set of Chinese dolls up her. Rus Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're called. That's, that's what I pictured it like, those, those dolls where you take the, Ed off and there's another one in there that all look the same but no the story was there's a woman who's no don't just say it again that's a headline that's not a story there was a woman who had a baby who had a baby <laughs> that's <laughs> not a story that um, imagine handing that in as a, th as a thesis to loads of the BMA you know that? there you go I'll uh, yeah. read that that's a, said, that's a children's rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby what do you mean so the baby she had a baby yeah. right yeah and uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that's that. That's normal. That's normal. A, a totally woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more apart from don't. the fact that huh? the baby's like roaming about, <laughs> and then uh, twelve, like twelve months later, she's like, oh, interesting. So the gestation period of the that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. It's weird though, isn't it? So was the headline "My baby's twelve months pregnant"? <laughs> what are you talking about? Twelve months later, it had a. What are you talking about? Forget it. it no, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That you said, and twelve months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't. I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that didn't and I thought read it. That's, what? that's weird. And then I just was thinking, oh, like imagine the kid at school at parents' evening. <laughs> And it's like, well, your kid's pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't! Play record! We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we should have just left the cellar door closed. Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's diary. Can we have a jingle? <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Sure they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked and completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be very yeah. surprised if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, well, they no, have. But fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's gonna keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean, just to get the- if it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget. That's the saying. 
Not they always forget, so you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers. I love mate. a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, slidey on a cold, no. slidey on a on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor. You're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk, but well, it's, it's right opposite. I'm surely not going to go in my socks though. Am I? But I don't want to put on the shoes. It's mad. No, 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 no. Pop some slippers on. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But you shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Because they're inside shoes. You don't go rowing about on tarmac in slippers. That's basic. But you don't have any slippers, so no, you're just tiptoeing across the street, you know. I put my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, you can pop out and get the, uh, the, the paper and, you know, the, the bottle of milk, can't you, in the slippers without, without any harm done? No. Huh. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. <laughs> Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> I love it when he calls me and things go yeah. wrong with the flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a he tried to have a shower, but there's no water. How long did it take you <laughs> before you realised <laughs> yeah. he was there for twenty minutes? Yeah. After twenty minutes, he said, "Suzanne, should I be dry?" <laughs> yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right, there's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people, but no one was about. Looked outside, but couldn't see any work going on. Great, in it. In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> Hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brushed my teeth, just using the paste, and used the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. Uh she said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You had a wash using the water that's in the in bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much? There's only a little drop in there. No, it's a big kettle. So what, did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't, you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, were you couldn't, could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that shot of water aren't wasting it saying, oh, my feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the, uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that they found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. It's all rubbish. So, so it's also, pushed it it's it's also measured pushed against sea level. It's not measured about when you get. Otherwise, they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go right? It's down to here. It's the, the, the no, peak is at, measured at, at against the the day, sea though, level. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, <laughs> he's not going to go. Oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there, and someone got near the top, and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock, and it went like, ding. I'm like, what's that? It went, ding, ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding. Piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. <laughs> Someone's been tipping. Well, oh, <laughs> right. Up Everest. Okay. Is, the council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're I'm not, not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you what, yeah, yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days <laughs> and it may, you may die, but just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused, you've confused a few things there because I think the, the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there yeah. and everyone said, I don't understand, how's the piano doing up here? And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged, oh, had dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance, yeah. but thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, bloody tipping or aliens or anything. 
My dad used to bury things in the garden because the council used to charge for like washing machines and and mangles and and cookers uh, and pets so i'm just thinking of millions of years when they dig that up they think that dogs used to cook and <laughs> yeah, like do yeah. washing up and things yeah i love the idea of burying utensils i think of the hole big enough to to bury a washing machine or a mango so whoever kind of bought that house after your your yeah, dad I don't they got a little treating store yeah lovely little um themed rockery <laughs> yeah the weather is weird this morning. One minute it's sunny, then it's thundering, then hailstones, then it's sunny again. People will be saying it's global warming. I don't really know what that means. Everything's changing all the time, innit? I wonder if years ago when we first came out of the sea and we walked on land upright, did people blame the weather for that? Good point, uh, no, no. It's so stupid. Yeah, ridiculous. We didn't come out of the sea and instantly start walking around like humans and go, oh, can you believe it? We were swimming around, we were having a whale of a time. Do you know what? I blame the weather. No, but now they would if that happened it's the same way say like um evolution right we talk about it a lot mm. right now years ago i don't know how it happened but some whale had legs <laughs> right yeah this is how it started before it was a whale yeah whales started off with legs they that's were right about on on the beach front right anyway it worked out that you know they didn't like it or whatever get back in now say if that happened again now Right? Say if someone's born and they say, they always say don't they check for lumps and stuff. Right? Make sure you haven't got any lumps. Now say what, if I, Sorry, sorry, who says this and what, what, what's the what? Like magazines and doctors and that. What, always say what, what, when you're first born? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but Ar all, arbitrary decision, yeah, that answer. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> all, all I mean is, now, say if like our evolution thing is kind of like the next level is for us to have three legs because we're, we're that busy on the world now. But it doesn't work like that. Why would it work like that? Because that's nature, innit? It deals with it. If people are getting stressed out and getting achy legs a lot because they're going, well, what you're doing there is you're using two legs like you've got three. You need another one. But the problem is. No. Say Let if, it finish. Say if someone grew a leg now because it's like, well, we need three legs. Yeah, but. Let him finish. Okay. People would go, oh, I found a lump. Right, and the doctor will go oh, and whip that out. Now that could be a third leg that's growing. But Carl, evolution doesn't work like that. It does. Some work suddenly, like that. something isn't born with a perfectly formed third leg that can be passed on. I know it's a lump. It starts off like a lump, and and if you left it alone, yeah. it would eventually, over a bit of time. Uh, no, over many, many millions of years. Yeah, but but it grows as another leg. But we're not letting that happen anymore. It also wouldn't happen. It, 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 limbs don't work like that either. They do if you keep putting extra pressure on two legs. Carl, you're, you're, honestly, what you imagine the process of evolution and natural selection to be is, I, I, I it's beyond me, it's No, incredible. but it depends what surra- whatever your surroundings are, that's what you change to, isn't it? Like the- Well, the you don't, you, we don't change to it, you're either selected or you're not. So, uh, it, uh, what happens is there's a genetic throw up. So if something's born, uh, you know, a llama's born with a slightly longer neck. And if that gets, you know, the leaves that are slightly higher up and it survives, it lives longer, it passes on its genetic material. Um, uh, soon, if that works, now over millions and millions of years, uh, that they're the dominant species, a new species uh, uh, um, is thrown up with a slightly longer neck, uh, uh, and so on and so on. And it's mm. gradual. It's just a slight no, advantage. No, sometimes it happens quicker than that. There's been animals that have had eyes and then they go, oh, they don't need them, they go in the space of a fortnight. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what no, what are you talking about? There's a lizard somewhere where it's roaming about in the dark and it used to have eyes and they used to be like, what, why have we got eyes and that? What's the point in having these? Because we're keeping them open. And they were getting more tired. <laughs> because at the end of the day, if your eyes are open, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Blind people can stay up longer than a, someone with eyes. <laughs> Keep going, I want to follow this through to its natural right, conclusion. Keep right. going, keep going. There is no- there is nothing to do- Right, uh, Right, the first signs of you getting tired, you go, oh, my eyes, I can hardly keep them open. Yeah. So a blind person doesn't get that, because they can roam about with them short like so that. So they never sleep, do they, so, blind people? Well, they sleep, but not- they don't need as much, because their eyes aren't stinging. All guessing, all guesswork, and all nonsense. I mean, all nonsense. Well, hang on, fair enough, okay, let's ex even if we accept that to be true of blind people, what, what was happening with the lizards? The lizards were going, I can't believe this is mad, we don't need our eyes, we're down underground, what's the point? Over Jeff, Bill, let's just no longer use eyes. Well, they were just like, um, in a way, it's better if we keep our eyes shut to keep the soil out and stuff. Um, 
and then over time they were like, oh, my eyes are stuck. Like the time <laughs> when- For uh, a fortnight, you said? No, 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 no. Well, it's over hundreds of millions of years. And the other thing is, it's not the case that there's no will to evolution. What happened was that they- a, a, a blind one had no disadvantage, so he was selected, um, uh, uh, better than one with eyes that maybe would find it irritating or, or, or getting in the way. You know, just like, um, a, a snake, it's not a disadvantage for a snake to lose its legs because it, it, it's selected and, and then it's an advantage because they, they, they can get into places that, they, you know, where legs would get in the way. Mike, I've said before, right, you see like a little fella, like a, a midget or a dwarf or something. Right. Who's to say that that isn't the way we should be? Do you mean, how do we know that- Well, everybody looks at them and goes, oh, look, little fella. But really, it doesn't matter. If, it, if we were all like that, the world would be a better place because it's bigger, so there's more to see. Whereas for us, we're, we're getting bigger all, all the time. The world isn't growing, so there's less to see for us. So for a midget, the world is brilliant, so I'd say it'd be good if we do go backwards as opposed to forwards. Instead of us getting bigger all Steve, the time- Steve, you want a cup of tea? No, I'm not sure off, mate. I'll leave you to it. Um, do you know what I mean, though? Have we got- we haven't got any- have we, we've only got instant coffee as well. No, yeah, I'm but- Yeah, pop out for something. But what I mean is, they mm. always say well, like- I'll the, make it. The body's- No, no, thanks mate, but tell me when he's finished. I'm oh, just no, saying no, no. the body's getting bigger, and instead of going forward- No then, sugar for me, thanks. Uh, do you want milk, though? Yeah, yeah, milk. Forget it. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And they'll be what? Bigger. They'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they? Like, I'll tell you what though, right? That I'm getting worried now because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean though? Like a proper paranoid sort of, it, one of those people that assume I'm gonna live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and, uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the, you know, and yes, Suzanne's having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's gonna have to polish each bean. But that's what, that's <laughs> yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, uh, think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a lunchbox with a chocolate bar, within an hour it was gone. Right? And they say now these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. Did this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, is it Ted? <laughs> he went, what? <gasps> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ, I came it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future you're running around and germs are- Eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Went to bed and chatted about food to Suzanne. I said it would be best if our bodies could be run on something like coal. That way you wouldn't get fat people because you wouldn't be eating for enjoyment, you'd just be eating to give you energy. Suzanne said, why do you always take the nice things out of life? Because sometimes to think about the future, you, you, it's not going to be all good, is it? Look at the way we have to do things now that we sort of go, oh, I'm sick of this. But they do it for your own good. But you try and oh. change the laws of the universe. Based on arbitrary whims. No, but yeah. we're always eating stuff. That's one of the things we do now, isn't it? As soon as we find a new creature, like that frog, that's been hidden away for like millions of years, you get someone who go, I wonder if we can eat that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's it, everything that's walking on the world, they sort of see what powers it's got. Uh, what but, powers it's got? No, like, if it can jump far, um, you know, is it poisonous? Can you get anything out of it to save people? And yeah. then, can we eat it? They're the three things that they do with a new frog. 
Any creature? <laughs> you know what I mean? Can it jump fast? Yeah. Is it, is it poisonous? Poison in it that it's you can use to get rid of illnesses? Yeah. Can you eat it? Because That's the more first more three questions anyone asks, do it they? It seems to be the way, because you look at menus and that, how they're getting bigger and bigger now, and that's only because we're finding more and more species of stuff. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you look at some stuff on a menu, that, that octopus you eat, at some point that would have gone through the list of, right, what does it do? What's it got in it? What does that ink do? What's it taste like? Can it jump? Can it, whatever, well, they've done tests on it, haven't they, when we said about it being in a getting in a jam jar or something. Yeah. So it's all part of it. Everything's been tested. Everything. But I think, what the thrill is that the first you hear of a newfangled food, do you think that, uh, in ancient civilization they didn't, they didn't do this, they didn't try an oyster or, or spear a fish or Yeah, because they, there wasn't maggot. that much other stuff knocking about at that time. Right. But we've got loads of stuff, so why are we messing about with some new frog? It's all like, people just like showing off, don't they? Leave the frogs, let them get busy and have loads of them, eat the chickens, when we run out of them, move on to the frog or whatever. But why why have all this on the go? Do you know what I mean? It just makes it, I, I, I hate going out for a meal now because it's like, what, what are you having? Oh, I'm sick of it, look at it all. <laughs> and then you're forced into people going, oh, have you had the new frog? <laughs> no, I don't want it, I'm happy with chicken. <laughs> That's what I mean. I, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have you ever been out, Rick, and someone's been trying to force frog on you? Never. I've never been forced frog in my life. Although I did go for a meal once with Carl. We went there and, uh, he had the Orient hors d'oeuvres, uh, I recommended, right? Um, and, uh, he was trying to get this little oyster, right, off the shell, right? And he was going to get stuck to its house, right? And, uh, I looked round and his eyes were watering and he was choking and he was drinking water. I said, what? And he said, I hate that. And it was a big blob of wasabi. Oof. Right? And I said, why'd you put it all in the once? He went, he said, I thought it was a mushy pea. <laughs> why would they put one mushy pea? Was it hardcore, the wasabi? It felt like my head was caving in. <laughs> <laughs> that was just Ricky squeezing it, wasn't it? Between courses. So with that though is, uh, you know hot food? Yeah. Why you get addicted to really hot food is the pain is actually your it's killing taste buds and then endorphins are released in the brain like you know a morphine derivative to to uh, sort of go it's all right or oh, calm the pain so you actually get a addicted to that sort of you know what so happens. why why would you want to kill your taste buds but new ones come back well yeah I think you yeah you know, I think you straight away well I don't, I don't know how long it takes I don't, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. No, it's just, is that the chef sort of going, oh, I'm serving some right rubbish tonight. Give him some of that kusabi. Kusabi! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, and Tonto! <laughs> oh, God! Back to the diary. At lunchtime, I went to a local cafe and had an omelette. An old woman, who was about 70-ish, was in there eating pizza. It didn't look right. No. I know what you mean there, actually. Old people eating pizza seems a bit weird. What about an old Italian lady eating pizza? Would that be right? Uh no, I'd expect her to have lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried it could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. Uh, there's so many elements in this. There's a, there's a woman who can read so you sir read that, that again read that again okay we're gonna have an instant I'll, replay no, now any what, psychologist listening is. or psychiatrist or just well anyone listen to this what carl's put in his diary okay steve away you go i'd be worried that an alien could read my mind i had that problem once years ago when i worked in a studio making cassettes some mind reading woman was having some cassettes made she waited while i did them she had a small dog I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. <laughs> I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is, so, you know, if it's a band 
or whatever it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people yeah and she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff so right. you get a, a, recording, a recording of, the, of uh, it uh, yeah. and she was just there and she was staring at me like that just looking over and a dog was sort of looking worried and they pick up vibes don't they no they do. And why was it looking what worried? What do you mean pick up vibes? Depends what you mean by pick up vibes. Do dogs pick up loads of vibes and stuff. I read the other day how they can tell if someone's got cancer and Well that. they can- they, well yeah, that- so that, that's, the, it's, the, it's one There's a science body. behind that. They- they can smell the different- uh, yeah. the, uh, at a cellular level. Yeah, you so know, it's the same Cause it's like thing. seventy times dry. But no, 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 they can't go- the- the dog wouldn't even know you are an idiot. The dog- uh, The even dog was sort of looking weird and stuff. It and knew. She, she it was, knew. She but, was looking at me. But you, were they looking- I'm not being funny, were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you no, think? No, they were just- uh, just looking at me and I was sort of panicking a bit and the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's- she knows that I know that she's reading my mind, so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on a beach. <laughs> what you were thinking! No, just so she thought, oh hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh no, I'm getting it all tangled up, I've got a cross line here. <laughs> but why were you worried that she was reading your mind? Because you weren't thinking of anything on, you know, no, on but, saving oh, oh, don't, don't, oh please. No, 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 I'm just trying to get in his it, mind. It his doesn't rationale. work, Carl, no, 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 no one can his, read your mind. No, but wait, wait, what I mean is, even if, you know, let's assume that you thought she could read your mind, why did you think that there was anything wrong with finding out what you were thinking? Because she knew- she'd have known that you knew that she could read minds, so she, if she read your mind and all you were thinking was she can read my mind, she'd think what? Of you course, if she mind. really could read your mind, she's yeah, going, there's Carl there trying to make me uh, think that it's the dog, I know he's thinking of the dog. No, but when you sort of uh, try and think of normal things, you think of mental things, don't you? So I was like- Whoa, hold on this let Go on, go on. on. No, what I just mean, like, you're going, oh, God, I best not watch what I'm thinking then. What it were you thinking? Tell, what tell were you me thinking? some of the mental things No, there was loads of think. things that was in there. Like, Go there on. was an old woman who used to annoy me in there, who used to give me socks all the time. <laughs> and- Socks? Socks. She used oh, to always socks. make loads of socks and she'd be bringing them in. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I sort of said, look, I'm sick of your socks, she kept bringing them in all the time. And they had, like, pictures on and that. I didn't want socks with pictures on. So, um. So I used to- I might have been s sort of stood there going, oh, there she is with the socks, I'm sick of her. Now, if she can sense that, she'll go over to her and go, watch him, he stop bringing him socks, socks yeah. or whatever. No one can read minds, no one can contact the dead. Say like me, right, if I sometimes come in the- in the room and that and I'm fed up, you go, oh, Carl's fed up, I haven't even said anything. So it's because, just that, but that's because you because look like a miserable bastard. Yeah, yeah and we can we know what that means. We're we're, we're human, and we understand right. facial so movements. It's a bit like that. It's a bit like that. It's a level down from no, that. No, 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 no. She should be able to read your mind if you're locked in a safe and she doesn't know who you are and she doesn't know whether there's someone in there. No, that's what that, the double that, blind test that is. That would never work, would it? Because that means she'd never get a rest. That's like, uh, so you're making up the rules. You're making up the rules. Oh no, the thing is, that's what these people do go, oh no, I have to hold your hand. Oh, I have to, you have to write it down. Well, why? Why do you? It's the same as these mediums that contact the dead. They go, oh, I'm getting someone. Just ask him who he is. Just give us his full name and address. It's ridiculous. I love the fact that these, these dead people give him cryptic clues. Ask him about the, uh, toaster. What's your name? What's your name? Can't say my name. Might be an uncle. Just give me your fucking name. Back to Carl's diary, Friday the 31st. I read that some fella had been having an affair. His wife found out, so when he was asleep, she super glued his knob to his stomach, one of his bollocks to his leg, and glued his arse cheeks together, then chucked him out. If Suzanne did that, I would definitely not get back with her. Saying that, I would have woke up if someone was putting super glue on me arse. I'm quite a light sleeper. Is that what she did, is it? Yeah, uh, that's why I'm a bit cautious about wearing earbuds every night. The, uh, plunge things. <laughs> Earbuds, Earbuds. right? So that's a, no, so that's not a called right. Plunge things. He's like he wakes up words. They taught a chimp to talk, and the chimp had a better grasp of language after about a few years than Carl. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's why I won't wear buds and plunge things. <laughs> I phoned him up the other day. Uh, uh, he went. He went. Oh, I've just tried out those new earplugs that mould your ear. You can't hear a thing except your own voice. And I went. All oh, right, they're good, aren't they? He went. Yeah. He said it's weird hearing your own voice. And it, because you're hearing it as other people hear it. I went, no, you're not. He went, you are. He said, you don't usually hear your own voice, because usually when you talk, you're talking over it. <laughs>
Woke up at 9.55 a.m. Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about- <laughs> <laughs> I just think he opened his eyes and looked at oh, Okay, all right. Okay, so he's- he's- he- he opens his eyes, he looks at Suzanne, she looks at him. What question, Rick, do you think he immediately asks his girlfriend? Go on! What question do you oh, think? I Have can't. a quick guess. Um, uh, um, am I dreaming? I woke up, I said to my girlfriend, did I tell you about- <laughs> <laughs> I woke up, I looked at Suzanne, she looked at me, I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you about the immune system? Suzanne started laughing, I said, it's amazing, she said, not now. <laughs> Bringing into action, he zips up his eyes alone. <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up, Carl. Put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. Was talking to Suzanne about how it's odd that Sundays are meant to be the day of rest. I thought God was meant to be born on a Sunday. Or was it the seventh day that he finished making the world? <sighs> Imagine how good the world could have been if he'd given it an extra day. Sometimes <laughs> it's best to give yourself a deadline, though, so you don't faff about. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Suzanne. She was leaning back on the bench with her eyes shut with the sun on her face. I never got an answer to my question. Pretending to be, to be asleep. asleep. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> no! No! What do you mean? Well, ah! he had his he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk? W how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk? So you're basically walking forwards. I or, reckon I'd walk sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like. <laughs> He solved it again! He's <laughs> thought it through! <laughs> ah. Got home and read my magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Um, that made the news, that. That was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. The story used the description to describe it. There was a picture. I think it was a fairly decent description. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> The world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders. Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, Cockroach I mean, men, spider men, what are you talking about? I haven't Not had a normal conversation with you for a year. <laughs> no. It's getting worse, I think. I think, I think it's because you've left and you've got too much time on your hands and you live in your head for sort of like maybe eight hours a day, and then you offload when someone calls you or when you call me or, or Suzanne gets the, the brunt of it. But I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I really would like to, and a, a nice, I still think he's brilliant, right? But I would like to get a little psychiatrist in just mm. to, would you mind seeing no, a psychiatrist? No, it's just, there's nothing wrong. These are all ideas, aren't they? You look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff- Powers? Going about. So these powers- But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men. Or, or whatever that- No, you, you mean. said that if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could the, use where's them. Where's the- you've left a big bit out, but when that one inch cockroach becomes a six foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket. It's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. Y you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Cockroaches can live without a head. Uh -huh. Could they still sort out the rubbish if they've got no heads? They could, couldn't they? Uh, Except they, if they were, because you know you want to use them as builders and dustmen, they couldn't whistle at pretty girls, could no, they? No, but they wouldn't be doing that job, they're just doing the bins. Okay. It's Ant that's not doing the building. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And are they getting up early? Are they disturbing you? They don't you? sleep, do they? But then they get you up even earlier. You hate it when the builders get you up at seven, then go to the breakfast. Yeah, but it wouldn't go on as long, would it? Because the ants would be working hard. So it'd probably be one day of madness, but then it'd be finished. As opposed to builders just stood about whistling, doing nothing, going on for months. And is this ant six foot? Uh, no. No. Well, three. 
Three foot. So how many of them are there? About, uh, about 30 of them. And what do they look like? Are they just a giant ant with um, a- I'll that on. Um, just get on with it. I mean, it'd be weird for a bit, but with anything you get- you get used to seeing but things, Carl, don't you? again, this isn't an idea, it isn't a theory, you can't- you can't put this into practice because it doesn't exist. I it's, know, I'm just saying It's like, it's well, well, I mean, you wishing for ant builders is the same as you wishing that you didn't have to do any building and your house was just perfect, or you could just wish for it. What's the difference? Why go through this elaborate- <laughs> But th th what I'm saying Weird, is that your wish is- it, 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 you're taking- you're not taking shortcuts. You see, it's the same people who goes, oh, I wish I'd go back in time and put a thousand pounds on the Grand National. What you mean is you wish you had a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. don't worry about the time travel bit and put in a- do you wish you were rich? <laughs> yeah. It's like- so you wish you didn't have to have builders round. That's what you're wishing for. So this elaborate thing of getting a three foot ant with a hard hat- Today I got an innovations catalogue. I thought I'd keep it because I like the stuff they sell in it. Brackets, one big slipper. <laughs> What's that, one big slipper? It's just if you don't go out much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't like slippers. No, I know, but th th I think they're a good good idea because they're just there to keep your feet warm. But why one big? Why not two sim smaller ones? So you can walk around? Yeah, one big slipper's just making it painful It's more sort of roomy, isn't it? Why it's do you comfort. think that's a good invention, one big slipper? How is that better just than two smaller slippers? Because the problem is with slippers, right? You're, you've already said how you nip across the road in them, right? So you muck them up and you have to buy some more. There's no way you'll be nipping to the shops in that one big one. That will always stay where it should be, by the sofa next to the telly. And you go, right, I'm in for the night now, where's my slipper? <laughs> <laughs> but can I just put my feet inside a, a cushion cover or something? What? If you want. But it's, it's only cheap, why not get one? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they're, they're only cheap, why not get one? But then, Carl, why not get one big glove? If you're not going out, right, just get one big glove. You don't have to do anything, just one big glove. Pop your hands in one big glove. I'm not going out with gloves, you have to go out and touch stuff. Just one big glove. Why, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, why bother putting trousers on? You've got to put uh, legs in both. Why not just wear a skirt? Yeah, well, well, put, pop a skirt on, yeah. Just put on a lady's skirt or a lady's dress. It's one piece, isn't it, then? Yeah. Just pop around in a One big monocle, don't wear glasses, wear one big monocle. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid having two gloves, two gloves, two slippers, is mental. Anyway, um, I had a good sleep last night, so much so that I woke up before my legs did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means! This has happened before when I was younger. We used to have a phone in the bathroom so that if anyone called and we were on the toilet, you'd still be able to be available. My bedroom was next to the bathroom and the phone rang one morning. My mum and dad were at work and my brother and sister were out somewhere and the phone woke me up. So I jumped out of bed to answer it but the bottom half of my body was still asleep and I fell to the floor. <laughs> it's horrible. Has that ever happened to you? I, well, hang on. I oh. had to crawl for a bit and reached for the phone. It was a fella selling some bread to my dad for the shop. By the end of the call, my legs were working again. <laughs> it's a weird sensation. What shop? My mum and dad used to have a butty shop. So Do they? But the thing is, uh, just on the floor, top half, I had to sort of crawl, carrying my weight, and my legs were just like they weren't there. It's really, really weird. You mean you woke up with two dead legs, two pins and needles, mm. knee legs? Are you sure you, were, you weren't wearing just one big slipper? <laughs> <laughs> White van car. White van car, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some- uh, the son asked someone else and asked Carl. It's as simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot? Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's, sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cos, you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up. I reckon he'll still turn up. Uh, yeah. he'll be alright. And, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know yeah. I like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> <is> <laughs> <words>? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think, maybe th maybe Thursday, uh, The Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Do you any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gala route, aren't you? Sure. And uh, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of 
cheers everyone up. Hold on. <coughs> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and uh, licking toads. How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh... What do you make of that? It's a huge thing and you just, you, you live on it and it's, I mean, in theory... How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like a town, town in the centre. Do you know how, like, people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger and... Yeah. No, but actual liners are big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but do you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're yeah. seeing the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. Oh, God. Oh, that's <laughs> They steal your tires. A how? ship so big that was <laughs> rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're <laughs> talking about? Uh, well, I don't know. It doesn't <sighs> give me the spe specifications here, but they're, they're huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's, it's that thing with, um, uh, oh, it's obviously marketing, but, um, they're gonna, um, uh, solve, uh, the, uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, because, I mean, think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the- all the wasted space, like, with the Thames, all it's doing is, like, collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. Coke cans, and people have to clean it up, whereas if you think- if you got a load of boats on there- Yeah. Problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live on a boat? solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergeron? Right? Noah. Oh. <laughs> Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat. I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd but, like to see you, um, living in- in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it- it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and there's gonna prologue. be more water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Yeah, Cause Is that's that what that's, that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing is exactly. well? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that, like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they say, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube, and it's gonna freeze it up again. Do you, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube, yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that, it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no, uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will freeze up. The well, water's it won't, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice it's not. Melts. If you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels. It's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, I'm using my fables. Imagine the <laughs> world. <laughs> Use your brain instead. Imagine the world, <laughs> imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So he said, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's <laughs> worrying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> God. Thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Got another one there? Uh, well, it just, uh, another, your thoughts really on, uh, the Queen Mum's, uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a- I, I don't quite understand why there was so many people there, um, who were, like, getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset, crying and stuff, and, you know, you can lose someone who's, like, related to you, and you don't- you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff, and- and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was- wasn't it, like, miles long and stuff? Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this with Sue- Twelve Ryan, hours like, queuing. Yeah. He never got to and twelve hours. It did, but he that did. was the estimated time. No, how you know, long is a queue when they're just like 
you know, walking along. Think how far you can sort of like, st you know, stagger in twelve hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. Go yeah, on. but again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have. It's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know what I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done. Remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right. Um. And don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Yes, Remember? they- they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well they cut up Che in order to try and, um, what they- you- you- you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and various other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as- as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the- to people, like, one to- Yeah, uh, my- my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be- like, not, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to- Right. Well, to a little bit like that, a little bit like that, have like I six can vaguely see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think, I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But, they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <sighs> and it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand- Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to- to cut down the queues. So don't phone in, he's not suggesting we should have done this, he genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or- or, you know, he thinks this is a good idea, so- Can just I just throw a thought at you? Che Guevara, who was like a, a powerful man who did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you. Yeah, yeah. And- have you, Are you aware that I, li I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next mm, one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what though, I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues, each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Cos she's- she's had about nine of them, yeah. so it'd just be, uh, uh, if you want to see the whole body, it's 12 hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips- Here's another suggestion for you, I just <laughs> thought, right? <laughs> but Instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley? <laughs> And wheeler past everyone else running. So no, yeah, you could have you could have some students on rag week. They can combine <laughs> it like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along oh. the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That'd, that'd be disrespectful, <laughs> right? As opposed to the chopping up. So sure, right? No, but just just an idea. Just I apologise now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Anyone offended? I'm sorry. But yeah. Okay. Finally, um, this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low apparently at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press. Now that she's had a child, that's a good mm -hmm. place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elton John's house. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton John. Yeah, Every celebrity. Why did he pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort? But of... it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict. He went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and who's the other Elton fellow that went there as well? What someone to you know to recuperate and uh, cry, shoulder to cry on? Is, yeah. he, is he giving out false yeah. fa passports? But and, I don't like, know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of you know. I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but you know, uh, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you I think it's just genuine mates with him. I think he's just a friendly bloke. She's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part <laughs> of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> High that five, Carl. That was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was no, Mike Van Carl. You. Why? Why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John, where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. White Van Carl. Yeah, White Van Carl. I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We ask week. Carl the questions that The Sun asked someone else. That's right, The Sun every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Uh, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals, yep. and he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette, uh, a polo third, note, third right? in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone hey. smoking a cigarette who's third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is, he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not a concern for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing, with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal 
or not. Yeah. I just don't think you can impose things like that. Right? Yeah. Uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, right, yeah. so we can throw these questions your way as well <laughs> yeah, if you fancy. Sorry, to. yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't so, matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're no, very... I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. what's your concern? What's your worry? Just like, like you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. And I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your- It depends, your doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if- I don't know, something- I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you Well, most people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic has happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and- and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but- yeah. Just anyway. say no, I suppose it's the, uh, the, the action no. in the Listen end. to the uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this ca Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according to yeah. the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that's- is that- is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth. A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh, if we'd have, if we'd have uh, never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah, you know, I've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head and his head was in the basket, and he went count how many times I blink. Is it? I. Is Carl, uh, Carl, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah. Do, should we well, speak when we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do we good to bring back, back prehistoric animals? These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be like offence, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be offence. No, but, I'm sa but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, but, but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong, they thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it, but <laughs> with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna- Not a concern for you. Would oh, you go along to see him? Would you be interested in it? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love- I'd love a queue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sit in, like, Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um... Yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I want clues around and I'm looking at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second, what, what, as, as the words man-moth, came into your head. Well, how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth. I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? What did it look like? Just- he just was like a bit like- A, a bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been- he'd been- he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth without yeah. his, his consent. And when he was asleep. Little yeah, he'd woken up. He just- he just went in for to have a goiter removed yeah. and they said, we've he replaced your goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that alright, Mr Jenkins? So he had the head of a, a little- was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you- Carl, if you- if you uh, went into hospital, a and they'd done something. Uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, 
the horn coming out of my head. <laughs> Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff? And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play Well, I the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> what confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, what do you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember, um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish. <laughs> Which confused yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Oh, well, anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just to uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's- Let's do it. Let's do it. I think direction. we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know- Yeah, they want his to know his opinions on the world, what, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper, um, asks a typical white van driver questions, uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and, uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. God. And then what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the, uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. No, he's having a bit of good luck. Quite right. Right. Next one. Are Next you concerned one. that now he's got all that money, he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's oh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, well we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, have you been in jail for four months? <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an point. angel of gold now. Or yeah. Whatever, yeah. So um, yeah. one in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you despair. despair. You, yeah. you despair. <laughs> yeah. Know, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate. And they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and he got onto the topic of one of the mates and he said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the top, that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having fun. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't, you don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like they get up to now. I mean, if- My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, just walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N. Uh, you are No, she said, oh, you are, cause she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She thought, so she was being nice, and I remember, like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, just doing it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, you, I went round- Do you think that's what? Yeah. Alright. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, it's, not, not, it's weird it. though, because no, hang on, some it? people look from Cornwall use that like saying twit. So, if people well, are listening to Cornwall- you know, I think, a twit I think is a pregnant goldfish. Well. Well, uh, I, I learned the, uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah. Um, Sorry. twat. <laughs> 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 For those that aren't sure. <laughs> I, I learned this at school when I was like 10 or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly, yeah. apparently. So, you know, <laughs> Carl would be a twit. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home, oh, you twit, you're a twit, and saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you're, you know, yeah. but not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. 
That's great. I, I can believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car. He'd be saying to my mum, "You stupid, do it." Yeah. Uh, and that. And he'd say to my mum, "You, you don't pull over, pull over. You're going to bother you." He was saying this. Then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it. Obviously, finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't. I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, "Dad, you know that word we've been saying. Yeah. You know what it means." So now, to this day, I've never brought it up with him. So we'll be driving. You know, he'll be, I'll go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible word? <laughs> but he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> right, well it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where we ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. Exactly. It's um, an article in there where they ask them, you know, typical man on the street, the, uh, the big questions of the day, uh, gives them their platform to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out, because we, we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the came man, and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your thoughts, please, on Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No, She, no. uh, she got booed at her, uh, premiere of her new film. Britney because she uh she left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts 3, of the country. Three thousand of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just w went straight into the theatre an hour late, just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even and bother to shake their hands, signing the autographs. Off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was actually outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um So she did wave. Like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? <laughs> no, I don't think it was. Uh He's like a defence lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I'm just, he's just winging it. <laughs> Judge's first joke, was it raining? No? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, I was, I was relying on that. Uh, <laughs> <it raining>? Um <laughs> Was she running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside, they're not gonna start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise, he's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but he's, uh, he's a smaller like, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, an autograph, point. things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there okay. another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, isn't there? <laughs> Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of, uh, a New York's, a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City, he's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here, mm. you need more bobbies on the beat, more policemen, more, a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about, um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench, yeah. uh, and he was asleep or something. Oh, yeah. And people were like, outraged because like, he, he should be looking after, you know, England's people not nodding off on a on a park bench, which is a bit daft. Because <laughs> they were shouting, he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, no, he should be it? looking so after England's was this people. The, was this the sixteenth century you went back to? <laughs> what do you mean? He should, should be looking after England's people. You know, wherever he was, if he was in like, a park somewhere, yeah. they, were, like, they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure, do he'd I probably be undercover. If it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah, if there was any sort of if someone needed help. Mm. And he screamed. He would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah, and, and he know. might not. He might not have been there at all. So you know, it was. You know, so yeah. he probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crimes going I think up. There's enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, you're yeah. happy then. Yeah, as long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. yeah. What about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? Little bit when I when I go on holiday, like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah, it's a good one called the Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, no. Can't do see I. it happening. No. You been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, any... a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling generally? You, you, ga gambling's not a vice you're concerned about. Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. 
So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay, it's really good. Uh, what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. Um, about about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that... Were they all there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, c- I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> um, the in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. <laughs> he had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Two of them had etc, yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on. Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, So Solid Poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. That's a great dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing I love that. That's, we've all had, 30 year old. We've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> oh my goodness. What oh if no. I meet the So Solid crew and I'm oh wearing no. a t-shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the It dream? was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Oh yeah. yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know I'm not a real psychiatrist, so you should, you <laughs> know what I mean? You do know a lot about a lot. Yeah, I do. Thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. But you know that, th- I think you might mention before that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well that's it if you don't. But apparently uh, if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably work a lot, a lot of people have been doing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. Uh, okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it is good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit. And, you know, I've I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Placing an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got, um, it, what they used to do at school is, uh, <laughs> okay. if you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. <laughs> okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. I sure. went up, and I didn't. I didn't do it. Make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play record, mate. Well done, then. Great Were you the done. first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> you. They mounted an entire <laughs> ceremony <laughs> just to encourage you. <laughs> We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, yes. Those, those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh-huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now is like... What was that? Is that a trombone? <laughs> I just sneaked in. That was me moving this microphone. Right. That was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. What an amazing right. noise. The only thing is... <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like, in all the papers now, in, in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week, they've been like traipsing models over a bit of granite. Do you know, like how those things are made out of granite, the, um, the things they throw? Oh, yeah. And it just, that, that bit annoys me. Okay. The what, way that, the Daily Star? <laughs> no, the way that, you know, this sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We win a gold ma- medal. Yeah. And now in the papers, it's like they've gone crazy. They've gone curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game now. Yeah. Good. Okay. Next. All right. Good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neeston? Uh, it's all right, Nick. Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week. Is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone. <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um. Uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is. It's called it's, tall. It's something about. You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something. Just behind this part of your head. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. <laughs> get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is, um, just projecting <laughs> into the future. Get it sorted. Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um. You don't, you wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes with spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah? yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got like deadly snakes. Yes. Which are death. 
Did you know snakes are death? Snakes are death? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so, you're alright walking about behind them. Yep. But if they know, see you ahead of you, you're, you're, you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and... They keep the spiders... Lizards yeah, and stuff. Quite. So I think we've got a bit of the, both the best worlds. So you're worried, though, about in the future, there are vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes. You yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well, there's a load... I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start of it. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that from Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> there's a load of sparrows somewhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Load of sparrows somewhere. <laughs> sparrows somewhere. <laughs> there you go, anyway. Excellent, that's Thank great. Thank you very that's, much, that's, Carl. Uh, that's, uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure, you did brilliantly. Yeah. Carl, any more? Oh, tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> ask for them to be referred to. A like. mini bus with <laughs> exactly. that, uh, Life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. com. Well, oh, Forrest Gump types. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people. These it was, pe a, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> 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 so he got five of them in the uh, in the cab, yeah. and he had to go to Blackpool. And four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff. But there was one who was just causing loads of trouble, and he couldn't control him. Oh, and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's it's not good for them. It stresses them out, and and you could end up with a bit. Thanks, Doctor Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now, and. He pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool, and um, he took the one out that was causing problems, and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Oh, he did what? God. Oh, he God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. It was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Can you stop saying it? <laughs> Him? Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, was and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked <laughs> him up, and he was fine. He had a good. What day. he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. <laughs> one of those one. What he tied him up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, and like he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so it was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> right? <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about. It. He just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did, do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. Because <laughs> well, because he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away. And, um, he took him there, there was no problem, about, about ten old women in a, in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulled over it. <laughs> no, right, so he took him there, uh, everything's fine, he dropped him off, they had a lovely night. Yeah. Right, they had a lovely night, won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night, and they all started moaning at him, going, I wanna be dropped off here, take me there, I wanna be dropped off first, I've gotta get up early, blah blah, you know, my husband's expecting me, I'm already late, take me here first, take me there. And he just pulled up. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, said, get out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis. <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking a moment in the minibus, and he got the sack. Jeez. Well, a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and, like, solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I wanna be dropped off first, take me here first, take me here. Yeah, so he oh, acts yeah. like a madman. <laughs> 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 Good. Oh, that was all right, great. We've got, uh, we've got to crack on, haven't we, really? We've got Says to, uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later, at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. Me, me mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right, and, um, they had loads of furniture that they've collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had too much furniture, right? Mm. 
and uh, they had this double bed and that was for like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped but, around because, the bed, yeah. yeah. but because the, s the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And well, he just sliced some off. Like a big uh, sandwich, just c cut just, a bit off the Just cut, cut the crust how, off. How much is that, would you say? About eight inches, six About inches. eight inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. Because it'll all fall out the side, and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He it just collapse. It, it, didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed, <laughs> but, but the weird thing is, he did it, and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is, this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he, why did he build the wardrobes first without <laughs> measuring, putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric, one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just, presumably there was just kind of what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh, with the legs? Did he have to move the legs in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the, the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was sure. like, yeah, that's alright, you've done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about forty-five minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. You goes, really you are mean? your father's son, aren't you? I said, <laughs> I said, not I right said it's not that. right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said, that, and there was a big kerfuffle. My mum was saying, look, you have our bed then, and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know. <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep, and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you, like, every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six can months. I'm not being funny, but next time you go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, do you know what I mean, Channel 4 or something? Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pennington's. Uh, uh, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? <laughs> oh, 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 that's brilliant. Is there anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or it's Bravo. <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? Or do you want to play? Do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing something of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you maybe? Oh yeah, no, I'll tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this. Yeah, Bronze Age Fox, uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the tune, Carl, the always working, he's always working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. Anne Robinson, um, put in the Welsh into room 101. What, cos she didn't like him or that? Yeah, she just said, well, they're, you know, they're going in the net, you know. Can on, she can said it slightly more eloquently than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can under- the people or the place? I don't know. I think, I think it was the place and therefore the people. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? No, well, you know me mum and dad have sort of, uh, moved from Manchester, they reside now in Wales. Oh, yeah. And it is, uh... <coughs> Look at his face! Turning his nose up! No, but it- it is pretty depressing. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them places that- uh, It's like you go back in time and that when you go there. I mean, maybe the major cities there, maybe Cardiff is alright. What, even coming from Manchester it's like going back in time? It's just, uh, it's like one of them places, that w it feels like every day is Sunday. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just depressing and grey and slate Lots everywhere. Lots of walking around going, I'm late. <laughs> well, yeah, here's, here's the sort of attitude they have, right? This, and this is true, because my mum and dad live there and that, right? And they love it, it's alright, it's an healthy place to go when you get older and that. But, this, this is why they don't move on in Wales. Well, I just start to <laughs> make another no, no. sorry to any Welsh people listening. We're not saying you don't move on. Carl is. No, but sorry about the little Chinese shoes. The thing as well. is, it's good that in a way that they do do that, and they don't want to be like you know rushing about everywhere because the way London is isn't that great either, is it? Because sure. it's totally opposite here, right? Yeah. So I'm not I'm not having a go. It is a bit dull. I think even people who live there will agree with me, okay. right? But like one of the shops that my mum and dad use, right? It's only a little sort of villagey type shop. Uh, they can't be bothered staying open for hours and hours, right? Because there's not enough people to use the shop. Yeah. So what you do is, uh, they get used to what you buy. And they leave it out. They put it in a phone box outside. They put it in a phone box? Yeah. So it doesn't get wet. 
So my dad's loving that. Well, Once yeah. he found that out, it was like, brilliant. But that, how is that a bad thing? That's brilliant. Well, it's not. For other people, it is for me dad. Cause he's picking up all sorts of stuff. Oh chickens. no, he's not! Oh, yeah. He's not nicking other people's shopping. Well, it's not like nicking, is it? Cause it's not theirs yet. Oh! And you've stitched him up on radio. Well, of course, because yeah. they're gonna think, who's that wh who is there in town with a mank accent? Who, who, keeps, ma who yeah. keeps making phone calls? <laughs> and is getting fatter? Yeah. That's the- You've stitched him I right love up that, there, I love that, that your dad was excited when he found out- Oh. I can't believe, I can't believe that he's moved there, he's retired to this little village <laughs> where it's based on trust and community and he is abusing it, he's using his scally mank ways. Bloody hell, Lakers, like, there's no bread again. <laughs> there's old women going empty. hungry, yeah. their cats aren't getting fed, and your whore father is just, I can't, oh, that's obscene. That's obscene. Oh, I think it's a uh, die thief. That oh. fella from <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> I don't even think they've got Sky there yet, have they? They can't listen, they won't, they won't know what's... I think you've stitched him right up. I hope you have, actually, I hope he goes down for it. I hope he's hounded out of the community like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. They should get burning torches, go up to the set mansion- his, Set fire to his cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, well, He's uh, out of the choir. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the- you know, our, our living We are there. broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't as sort of like- Yeah, but you- you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. The kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do- What is that again? The, the, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and uh, webbed hands and that. They went to the school. <laughs> and uh, I got, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm, I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh yeah. So I said, oh, I, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the uh, big headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos because they were in it so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> so I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales would, you know, because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that and he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so... I would uh, love them! Yeah! That's why I'd buy them! Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If and that's not the piece. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well. Mm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know... When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but- No, well, well, loads of weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who, uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And, uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call it? Son, <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. What do you call it? Like a big tricycle, tricycle but for, a, for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though, it was a- No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to, uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his, like, legs dangling over and they'd be going to, like, the, like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some little sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then just people just throw Grandad just in the back and go, yeah. like, we're getting four quid for Grandad. But, but, but she's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're very low, but they're extremely. Bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but she'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now I've heard, <laughs> it's still been here, right? yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that, she That's was alright. And how was the husband? Did, 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 was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the basket? No, he just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's like good. That. Just you can't, you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? 
Uh, I think impersonating a police officer. Well, you is probably did. There, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop. But I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was. Uh, you know, but let's, let's face it. He's, you know, he's he's not going to be caught because why well, we would anyone know? But it's not like his son's going to say it on a on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did this, is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of light vigilante work? <laughs> just whatever, and his mate just, you know, if they saw something going on, they go, what can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! But, that uh, is brilliant! Right, okay, um, uh, coming up, Nob News. Smashing Pumpkins, Cherub Rock. That, of course, Rick is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want to. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I, I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, right? indeed, indeed. Naked with a yeah. couple of and a rosy big arse and a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here. Um, Monkey news. Yeah. From a listener. Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a chimp. <laughs> a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are. So well, uh, we do that, Carl. That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She remembered Accurate. exactly who was there and everything, sitting yeah. in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, isn't it? <laughs> it I mean, is just listen. I, listen I got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> yeah. I'll be I'm happy. That'll keep you going for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'll be reading that later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Oh, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, little castle monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought, I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure that's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. Uh, my dad says, where is it? I look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me luck. It's gonna be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then, uh, start looking at the leaflet, right? And, uh, noticed. Didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, it, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey Town. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what it had what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things, uh, Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Loads of them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not your, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. I just said, abort. We're <laughs> <laughs> on the way back. <laughs> so how far have uh, you got before you bothered to read the leaf there? Uh, uh, probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. <laughs> yeah, dun, yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. No, we went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Right, I'd, I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes it them. It was one of them. Really? But I I'd spent years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My mum and dad had been there before. And yeah. They said you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got like uh, a war bit in it. A war bit, right? Yeah, like because they, they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to whether all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was like a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> 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 My dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, <laughs> trying to scoop off the cash. <laughs> no, I like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want to ride one? No, but they, they we're were- not, We're not a ride. They were <laughs> massive and he's just like, look at that, look at the state of that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, no, but he does, he does, he does, because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? <laughs> and he, he was really like, oh god. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they'd look like. But my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her luck. It was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was going to be really expensive. Sure, so she's, she's bought one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, "Come on, we go in. It's rubbish. This." <laughs> what well, the fat family wouldn't let him play with them. So uh, he just said on the way home, he said, "I can safely say." That I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home. Why would he ever give you that information? In case it was like a, a secret birthday present. Yeah. Go, oh god, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll Dad. try to bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat couple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. By his bedside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am. After yeah. spending like a week with them. Well, they, said, they, told, they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid or? No, just, just like, you know, the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, I think- they were saying things like, Suzanne, so, uh, why is the moon out at night in the seven <laughs> of the day? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces again? <laughs> <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, don't waste money on a coffin for him, just put him in a bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> Your father said that. About himself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that, cos- That is great. That gives me an idea. Look at Carl! I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of, uh, uh, you go t- t- to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people? That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when like a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing, um, Ash, just the, our producers, uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing he's through the midget. We should make no, he's not a little midget, he's not tall. But, um, we were pushing him through the BC and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. Yeah, do you go up to people, do you go up to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. What, what's this story? Well, um... Your father dad, was a taxi driver? My dad used to, he had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then, and they don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't. <laughs> They don't have a of jobs? stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, uh, at one point, he had a black cab and I, I used to, uh, used to go with him, used to get a, like a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. And sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um, anyway, we got this call and, uh, like the guy on the end of the radio said, oh, you've, you've got, uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. He so it's just like, you know, we've got a pickup at, uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, all right. And it was this woman, it was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah, it looked like- <laughs> it, it, looked, it, looked like, it was really oh. strange, cos I was in the front of the cab, and um, when you're a kid, you, if you- if something looks odd, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, be alright. And we're, we're driving towards just, her. Look, oh, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I just throw one down the street if it's right you're after You're it. being mean, right? How old, you, bit, yeah. how old are you, 18? No, I was, I was about 12 or sure. something like that, 11, 12. Mm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like sh- she she was holding, like, a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> right. <laughs> and her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you're turning to stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had, like, the mirror, the... Dri- the driver's mirror thing, yeah. sort of I'm a, having a look trying to work out, and I really, I mean he said, don't stare at her face, I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that, it was that weird. <laughs> oh god. So I'm not sure you're from Manchester, I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. You got or, frog or boys walking yeah, around the Lord of the Rings. That, that got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah. And you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this is sort not what is this? This is not place. the place you grew up. This yeah. is mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go, look, symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a thing to do with upbringing, now, mustn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before? Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good-looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the it? fact that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if if she like... must have been really stressed to have a head <laughs> yeah, like yeah, she what, was really, yeah, was she an accountant or something? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going? In? By the she, way, she couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. <laughs> I, I think you know, <laughs> she was. She was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Seriously, honest to God. On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals. They don't judge you, do they? <laughs> She's not she an animal. animal. She's a human She's being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she you know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No, that was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> That's, so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? <laughs> Come on, is to find true? a husband. Is, it <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey, because it must be so, really bad for you. Of course it is. Carl, 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 I need to ask. I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. What's going on about that? To think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think but, but you're saying you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I the think you're right. Like, there's, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr father where to drive it? Did she have a little note? Did she right point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right. This has got silly. <laughs> Pick your song. But and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village, a little small village. Right. Um, just and hidden <laughs> out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. So and, uh, and now the <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter at your peril. Should it give me a shiny shilling? Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of teenage fan club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late, which we've been just uh, you know rapping with uh, Carl P here, and this is I need direction. I mm. mean, my dad, right? He can like put windows in his house. Yeah, do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? <laughs> he's done that first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs? Yeah, he can do all sorts, do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say like- Is that an oh, brain surgeon? He'll yeah. say, will fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters Inc? What yeah. do you make of it? Um, it's so, alright. It, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoys- Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having like- <laughs> <laughs> what, what gave that away? <laughs> Could I just say also that I do not advocate the use of vices on friends' heads. It's dangerous. Do not, do not, um, squeeze your mate's head in a vice. That's just between me and Carl and, you know, and he's Because he's an experienced annoyer. And he probably wouldn't let me do it, to be honest. I have to offer him an awful lot of money. Also, do not smoke. There's no point. And mm. floss. I wish I'd flossed when I was a kid. Also, if you've got a bicycle or anything like that for Christmas, please wear the correct whoa, safety whoa. gear. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Well, I got a bike as a kid. Yeah. Right. And my dad, uh, you know, it, I think I think the helmets used to come come with them and what have you. I popped it on, went out on my bike, coming back into the garden. Dad sees me. He said, "Come here." To what? He said, "I never want to see you wearing that helmet again. You look ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> Carl, have we still got monkey news? We got monkey news coming up. Now you must be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah. That's so I found some of that. We've got. How, uh, how do you how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents. You've just been away with your parents. That's a couple of weeks, ten days. So that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that. You went to Manchester. You were you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've you know I, mean, I suppose because you've, you've only got one job, and you know I've got a lot more. This is just one of my jobs. But I mean. Don't you ever count your blessings? Go, God, thank God, I just I can have time off. I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard. You know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no, no. It's uh, just all to do with when you do work, do a lot. So <laughs> I've I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though when I was in Cornwall, right? 
I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Um, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Oh, yeah, just yeah, you're you're I know, yeah, well, you know. Me, me dad and Susanna playing crib, right? I'd sort of fallen out with him at that <laughs> Your dad that and point. Susanna playing crib. Where'd you fall- it's fallen out you with him? Because you do live in the 1940s. Yeah, where'd you fallen out? Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. Well, you've got to make your cards add up to fifteen and all. Well, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What, what, algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just, just adding up. Adding up to fifteen. Uh, Brilliant. I mean, you I mean, almost do it on your fingers. <laughs> 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 you could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> But my dad's uh, really good at maths, and like he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like fifteen, two, fifteen, four, fifteen, six, three, three for your hat, one, t- and all that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And he adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right. So I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, what do you mean, hang on? I don't. What, what have you got? He goes, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun. If you're going to start getting all arty with me, sure. So, forget it. Yeah. I love it. But he's only. I'm sure he's. I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, like his his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it. I'm not playing. Throughout my life so far, I've always just, I've never planned for anything, mm. right? It's just always happened. Yeah, yeah. The time, you know what I mean? Being in plays at school, never planned it, but when I did it, I went down a storm. It was that's a yeah, we all remember that. So, we, I, as I remember, you did Little Donkey. Did Little Donkey, yeah. And um, then later, someone was filming at the back. Was it your dad's mate? My dad's mate, well, yeah, yeah. And on the camcorder, he listened to it back, watched him playing it. His dad says, just off camera, what does he say? I don't want to say it because I'm in charge of the show and I'd be irresponsible. He looks like a right twat. <laughs> so, and so I, he gets I, I, home, I, I, watching no. that, and then here's his dad just off camera go, he looks like a right twat. <laughs> yeah, alright, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you worried about? Your no, dad's saying sorry, that on no, the can word. Can I just interject? Because I'm really worried about this idea of Carl being on MTV because the problem is that, you know, let's be honest, Rick, I mean, we're we're getting by the skin of our teeth, aren't we, really? It's yeah. only Carl that's keeping this afloat. Yeah. And if he gets on MTV and the world sort of gets a sense of him and they understand him and, and he he won't be ours anymore, we won't be able to control him, it'll be out there, it'll be in the public Well, that's, that's no, no, the thing. No, no, no. no that's the thing. It, it, that's the terrible thing, though, isn't it? It's like, Carl is my pet. But mm. I realise I've got to release him into, into the wild, the wild. and you know because I love him, I know he's got to go free. <laughs> sure, but I yeah. want to. I it's want like Kez. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's someone like... beat him to death, and we won't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll uh, have you on though. I'll have you on as a guest, <laughs> yeah. which, gets, which gets me on to something we've got coming up today. Oh right. yeah, he's got a new idea. Yeah, right. Um, do you know? Like I've talked about ghosts, and we had that good discussion the other week walking to. Yeah. Piccadilly Circus Station, yeah, yeah, and I was telling you about ghosts and you were saying, Carl, don't be an idiot and all that. Uh, spoke to a woman in the week, done mm-hmm. a little interview with <laughs> You've her. You've done a little interview? Done Brilliant. a little interview, two minutes or so, with okay. uh, with a woman who's who's got ghosts in her house. <coughs> so, uh, I look forward to uh, hearing that later, that sounds brilliant. That coming up later. Well, I'm gonna play a classic tune now. I've, I've just gone straight for it, I've gone for the jugular. This is Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. <laughs> Ziggy Stardust. By David Bow on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton. Carl was also nervous. We had a bit of shock last week, didn't you? Just a little bit. His uh, his dad tuned in to the show. Yeah, um, and Carl's never told him that he actually speaks on the show. He just says, "I just press the buttons." Right. He's kept him from it. You used to do radio before, and you never told him, did you? Mm. It's because of the little donkey incident. Yeah. When he went along, so it was that the, the twat incident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's never told him since, but. But they've promised not to listen, haven't they? Well, my dad uh, uh, my mum said to me, don't worry, don't be put off this week, because, um, <laughs> you know, I've, no. I've, I've, I've told him he can't listen, but I hear my dad in the background kind of going, oh, Alex. <laughs> so, he might be listening. <laughs> so that's extra pressure. Yeah. Plus a camera crew in. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You well, don't like it, do you? This is good training for MTV, because then he can watch you on TV, I mean, what's he gonna make of that? Oh. Yeah. Does he know you're bald? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't keep you out on when you're with him and say, oh no, I'll just press the buttons. No, it's no. just, it's just, you know, it's like when when I was in any plays, I didn't tell him. No. Um, any sort of parents evening, I never gave him the note. Uh-huh. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. So what did the teachers think? You were just an orphan? No, just on an off chance, um, my mate's dad spoke to me dad once, I think, and sort of said, oh, you got a school to see how, you know, your kid's doing. Is that what you're talking about? So there's a parents' evening, so he went <laughs> said to- what kid? He went to one, and that's when Mrs. Matthew said I'd never be a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong was she? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think we should call Mrs. Matthews and make her eat her words. Well. <laughs> ah, she'll turn on to MTV when, uh, I don't know, like their, their slamming session. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're going to go, that's young Pilkington. <laughs> He's bald, but it's definitely him. I, I, I recognise that Willie hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nelly, ride with me. Uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you 
aware of that. But uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Excellent. Carl, tell uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet. Then, right? You know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that. Mm. And uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Right, because he got up to loads of stuff, and every time I see him, he tells me something. And I thought it's like, why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Right. So, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, to me he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone, he's just the most extraordinary kind of character. Well this, this character. happened, right? character. I, I can't remember, there was a delay yesterday, there was problems on the Paddington line, yeah. and he was saying, oh, trains aren't what they used to be. Sure. Um, he said, you know, he said I was looking- They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet, and it was saying, oh, you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver. Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said, that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to like getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said, when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right? And one day he's in, uh, he's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right? And that was like the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fellow who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right, he said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. Oh, For a quick get away. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the fellow goes in, in the pub and my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on. He, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know he'd say, oh, what's he doing in the pub? He should be working, right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, people who don't know about trains, something that I learnt is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he doesn't realise this though, because he's uh, he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal. Of course, and yeah. Like. So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, so yeah. he's pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, I'll, put the I'll put the brakes on now. Yeah. Right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> Right, uh, loads the of damage. The pulling the singles under what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loads of loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it if it was today's money, yeah, it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It it shut the station off God. for four weeks, um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job. The one who was in the in the pub. Yeah. Um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, uh, his uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it's brilliant. <laughs> so I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. Like, you'd have to get the family involved. No, the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. They'd never put it on telly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time. Well, go on. That time, isn't it? Yeah. Play go the on. jingle. Yeah. White van man, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Brilliant. Recorded at great expense, that <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this is where we just uh, hijack an idea from The Sun, which is um, White Van Man, where The Sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different because The Sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the, yeah, <laughs> the upper hand. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, your, just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sissons Not asked and probing what questions? It, uh, no, I thought it was- wore a burgundy tie. I thought, that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See that? That's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving it a, a, a bit of coverage, 
and showing, you know, what, a a, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like, funeral cards and that, and and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think, you know, when you send what, what, a card- What would you- what would you suggest? Well, you know, uh um, Whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair, what- what- how would you like it? Just, just little- little things in the card, I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive, or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy- So, oh, that'd be good. So when- so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> 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 well, maybe, like, if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why have, why has everyone got to be so sad about I someone agree. dying? No, what annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102. And, um, what, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of, uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the, uh, the funeral. Uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday, and there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's she just tired that, and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just people what are we cry doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tell <Tully> Tuppies, no. <laughs> the Queen Mum. <laughs> Oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh yeah. dear. I mean, I, I know, I'm sure, you know, I don't know much about her, I don't know if she was a great woman, and obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies, but it's like, it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. dying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting, if you're over from Sweden, and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, I mean, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh, <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about this? Do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, ju choosing the you know eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so it means that you know where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be, we be like? How will we be considered in that's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. And that's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember, when, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? Who's a bit rough. <laughs> all right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right. But she had a <laughs> Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. So like a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, no, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have Is you seen a horse in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of <laughs> Right? Um, oh, that's great. I Big, Big Jake, <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> for it. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. Alright then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door! I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, Bobby! <laughs> Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think- That's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so, wise to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's They could not, be in the room next door. It's not door. buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming! What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? Well, wait, 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 let's play a record, let's play a record and come back to this, because it's always gonna just unravel and unravel, it's gonna go for hours, let's play a track, Carl. It deeper and deeper, it's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. I mean, I come from the West Country, I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big, sort of, like, orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really- I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that line down. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and somehow then Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was. Because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you, but well, well, what I'm on. trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, <laughs> bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be poorly. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a- I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they- they kept the horse in the house with them? They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, no, what happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? for some local charity, and they said you can do anything to- to raise money, and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget- well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's just a, a good money making over So- <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups, and, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the- the- the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about twenty five plants on it, selling yeah. them for twenty five pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did they? Did you just cut? You didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil. Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah, because it's a bit rough. So as I went, the horse went. Thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've, been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> so I got up to the door and they opened the door and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central you know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that! Because, no, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Can't we 64? Yeah. Rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. I said, They've got. That dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that. <laughs> no, it does eat, though. They're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know? Daddy, well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's that's. Wh that's wh by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, 
who's a bit- what we were talking about, it was about cloning- Genetically modified kids and yeah, all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right. Now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So, then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out to, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch th sticks? It's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you're brought up. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. <sighs> oh, God. Ooh. But am I right? Oh, you're always right, Carl. Finally. White van man, what do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> 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 is, is that, that true? A concern for you? Is that true? Apparently so. Why? Don't know. Like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sign has said. That should be interesting. For <laughs> 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 that should be. <laughs> His comment on Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins <laughs> is no. Is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. See that in Heat this week? What was it? About the campaign to stop Carl going back to Manchester. You know, because he's a miserable sort of northerner who goes, London's crap, and I want to go back up north. Yeah. And I, I, I only need 40 quid a week to live up there like King and all that sort of <laughs> yes. rubbish. Right? Well, uh, um, uh, Boyd from Heat. Um, look, well, we met him at the, um, that award ceremony. Oh, yeah. And, uh, we were saying about, oh, yeah, he really enjoys Carl. He's getting a lot of, lot oh, of people, people love like Carl. And I was going, oh, yeah, but he's thinking of leaving. He's going, oh, st start a campaign. And he did, and he put it in there. So the campaign, so write in if you like Carl. If, if, if you think he's really annoying, then we'll stop talking to him. Yeah. But, I mean, I like him. I love him. Yeah. Have you ever read the, uh, White Man the White Van Man column in The Sun, Carl. Seen it, Are you yeah. familiar with this? This is where every day in The Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just, you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper. Mm -hmm. And he has to answer, uh, or just give his opinions, really, on, uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl. Because we know, you to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So, um, just the first thing that comes to your mind, the sort of, what your initial reaction to it's each of these- It's top of all things, but you don't need to know about them, it's just your philosophy on it, yeah, so- Yeah, just your views. You know, yeah. I um, had a few days off this week, remember, so I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, you stayed in London though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't bury right? yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I normally see the news, but I didn't- Okay. Right. Um, so, what are your view, what was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. No. You know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat hanger in his gob. <laughs> that sort of. Well, I get his radio, Carl. It's radio. It's a great it's face. A funny face you're pulling, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you know, but, you know, a radio. And it's, that's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, uh, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I mm -hmm. opened up the paper on the, on the Monday or something and it had like how he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit. Key. <sighs> okay. you know. Wait, no, what's the second all question? Right. Um. There have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? 
More youth clubs are needed, aren't we? <laughs> you think more youth clubs? I like that. No, I okay. can't. No, I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort cool. of like you want to bobby on the beat that clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they come Is out of it, national service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And, it, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did you did you used to go to uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? Uh, you used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so I more more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. If you're at home, t just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view, an act. Um, what is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> yeah. He appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, Is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah, yeah. He's what do you make of uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh, problem for you? The whole soap thing. What's it's back in Coronation Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Beth Lynn's. But she yeah. thought she'd go off and be yeah. a bigger star. Yeah. All went wrong, and now she's coming back. Yeah. yeah. Always happens, doesn't Deppie it? will be back. Yeah. No one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah. What, what was, the, what was the van reply? What was the guy? The white <laughs> van man says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but yeah. I think he's a pretty good actor and I can't understand why. So, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there mm. who's also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like the narrative through line of soap opera. The, the, the twelve week narrative, the, the arc really shows it's itself up. The two, two last ones I want your opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find out what? If what, they can clone, clone cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? <laughs> I no, think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> <laughs> that cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I when they are cloning for organs, I you know, they, they just grow them for the, you know. Do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you like make something else that's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> great. and finally- We're doing the World Council. Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or- I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. It was their own- it's all right. It's their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. <laughs> it only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. You think fair enough if, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting? You think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. There's little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for White Van Carl. Uh, <laughs> we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles. I think yeah. noises, yeah. funny sound effects. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises, Carl. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week- Not um, like us to rip off another idea and just use no, it for no, our- no, 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 but this time, The yeah. white van man in the Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow and Middlesex. Um, Herbie. And he's been as he's asked, a, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. Come um, on, Carl. It's. I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is. is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right? And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now. And her kids. You're not gonna tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's, you know. A, a leather, yeah, right. Mm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure, I liked her. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah, Will Young, he's a good voice. He's gay. You know, 
lot of gay people in the world. Georgia boy was gay, I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing of Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well the police have, uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy to... helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted, they get a lot of bad press, they're not being paid, well, they're, they're under resourced. Exactly. They, they actually, um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside I think somewhere. they may have done, yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at- they That's were looking I'm for your brother and his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Did this German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> you what, concerned? What, what are the signs? <coughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe? She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it, I don't even think about her now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over Zoe Harris? How long did it take to you? To be honest, years? right, it was like one of my first girlfriends and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember <laughs> I I that. I love that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her. And then the <laughs> bit that really got me, I thought I half liked her. And then I remember, right, we were at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, <laughs> it's on the cusp. Yeah. Right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying. You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, what, she, had you she stolen been, her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so, she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him he's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald. <laughs> Going for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it, because all the mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset, and I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> <I'm sorry again. laughs> Hold on, though, no. wait a minute, what do you mean all the mates were saying, look, like, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying, help her out. And, like, and you did nothing? I don't know. She got injured. <laughs> got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Oh, well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in the dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Current, his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't. So, as far as you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. She just felt like, well, you know, if she's gonna make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I would. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> In the corner. I was giving oh, another question. Okay, very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities. Oh, this is- Providing it's proven true. Oh, th this is something about, isn't it a Division 1 football or something? It's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it's unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy, and the judge said, well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true. Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but- No. People are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, it's a good footballer. Doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 
So but what if you were I a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I wouldn't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? <laughs> Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it was actually. with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, and your mates. Right. So oh, you okay. were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> Okay, we just do White Van Carl then. This is this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. All right. But so this is where we ask Carl his views on the uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've we've stolen an idea from the Sun newspaper, and um, so this isn't cruel. This program is it? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me? It's not, is it? Uh, it's weird because a few people have said, "Oh, you're picking on me." It's, it depends how you look at things. Isn't sure. It? Yeah, but you do do you like it. We, I mean, we could look at it like it's a laugh, <laughs> so yeah. it's not but a problem for us. You know, we like you. You know, you're, you're our favourite. Yeah. I, I'm going to say thing in the world, but I don't mean that. You know, in a derogatory way. No, no it's, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, your views, please, on the fact that uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the, the roars at the moment, because the recent tragedies are, uh, apparently, uh, high in the polls, and people are coming around to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever, really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that <laughs> comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good-looking person either. But she isn't a stunner, and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen, because it cheers you up. Do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, if, if they're happy. If any, anyone's happy, it's a good story, innit? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone else in his life, so. I'm just, while well, he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, okay. Problem. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of, well, now listen, this may be a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goren Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you not? Know right, I mean? right, well done. Doesn't, doesn't affect me whatsoever, as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting dog eat dog, I think. Right, you know. As long as she does her job well. <laughs> as long as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just because he's an England boss, as long as, you know, we win the, win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's, you know, gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. He was, okay. It's not worth yeah. it, Karen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> it's a dog winning a prize. I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. It about? It's all right. It's all right. No, so, go on. so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay what about this then? Uh, are you uh, disappointed by the nation that uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's. Are, you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patriot of England who uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, so you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many of these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because you know people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People. There'll be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in fifty years' time. It's just weird. Yeah. I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops would be shut mm. because it was like, you know, the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, well, we can make some more money, we'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that a good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. Because <laughs> the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that. Shops are. And you couldn't get aspirin and stuff, exactly. certain things. Yeah, nightmare yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's right, yeah. And pubs didn't open oh, for 12. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah, shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? 
Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of, like, those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? Evil. Yeah. What do you think of, um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey? We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy, a bit of Radiohead? Yeah. <laughs> You don't mind though if people think we're gay, for instance, when we go to the Baptist tomorrow. No, that's no. terrible. I don't want that happening. Why? Hey? Why? Because I'm not. That'd be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like lying. If I was, I'd say I was gay. Yeah. But I'm not. We'll say you were. Just pretend. We won't get in otherwise. No. Just a little kiss and a cuddle. Sam, so I'm, I'm a bit gay. No. I'm not gay.